Tune in to nostalgia. Tune in to now. Golden Radio Hour. From out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. <laughs> That pony, little beaver. They've held up the Millersville trade, and we've got to get on their trail. You bet your red rider. Get along. Get him up. Get. Get going, Thunder. Ride on, cowboy. The Adventures of Red Rider. with Jane Bruce has grown for Red Rider into a strange problem. Who's trying by robbery and murder to put the Bruce Freighting Company of Millersville out of business? Involved are Jane and her father, John Bruce, Ace Hanlon, and Bert Parks, a young man fresh from the east whom Red extricated from Hanlon's card sharps just as they were about to take his money. Now, in Millersville, just as the sheriff inquired into the latest killing of a Bruce Company driver... Red finds himself accused of that very murder. A mob has appeared to get him outside the Bruce breaking office. Where's that redhead? Hey, you coming peaceable, redhead? We'll give you a fair trial. <laughs> Looks that way, doesn't it? Red, don't walk out there. Don't, please. They'll kill you. I'll growl with you, Red. They won't hurt you. Thanks, Clinton Jane. But you all better stay in this room and duck in just about 30 seconds. Because I'm going to try to talk my way out of this. And if it doesn't work, things won't be peaceable. Red! Where's little Beaver? Well, I, I don't know. He, he was here a minute ago. All right, never mind. All right, hombre. You're stepping out on that porch with me. Just don't reach for your guns, because it won't be healthy. Come on, down them steps. Hasn't the man anything to say in his own defense? Then you'll listen anyway. I'm going to have my say, and then you can get me. If I don't get you first, you say that I killed Dave Small. If any of you had an ounce of sense, you'd see that you've been egged on by somebody to turn attention from himself. A rifle bullet killed Dave Small as he drove the Bruce Freighton wagon from here to Devil's Hole. And I haven't carried a rifle for weeks. Oh, what are you let him argue? Uh, I'm not arguing. I'm telling you something to your faces. You're a pack of fools. I've seen mobs before, and so have you. They don't just grow, they're started. Can anybody out there tell me who put the idea into your head that I killed Dave Small? Nobody, huh? Well, I'll tell you. He's across the street leaning against that hitching rail. Oh, Ace there? Hanlon. Ace, Ace Hanlon. Proprietor of the Silver Dollar Cafe and the store and everything else at Devil's Hole. Oh, yeah. uh, Ace Hanlon. Somebody ask him what he's doing in Millersville. Somebody ask him who paid Jeff Pearsall to pretend like there was a holdup of a Bruce wagon outside of Devil's Hole day before yesterday. Uh -huh. Ask him why he's so worried about me being mixed up in this. Then ask him what he's got against the Bruce Freighton Company, founded and kept going for years by John Bruce when he didn't, when it didn't pay a dime. And hopes that someday it would amount to something. Well, hey, come on, hey. Hey. Now. I'll answer those questions, people of Millersville. And gladly. I'm here because I'm a businessman. Because the only way I could get freight and mail to Devil's Hole is through the Bruce Company. And I'm sick of having shipments delayed and my stuff stolen. I never paid a man to fake a hold up in my life. 
That's a lie he can't prove. Well, I haven't anything against Bruce. But I see that if he can't protect his shipments, he hasn't any right to be in business. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. right. But as for this Red Rider, it's about time folks around here realize that for the past year, there hasn't been one bit of trouble around here he wasn't mixed up in. And I see that where there's smoke, there's a fire. Red, get out of here. Furthermore, I'm here. I'll cover your retreat. I told you to get back there with Jen and her father. I won't do it. That coward sheriff disappeared out the back window. Ain't nobody but you got nerve in this country? I can't prove it. What's that? Now, what's the little beaver up to? Hey, hey, that Indian kid pal of yours going crazy, redhead. Here he comes with your horse and his pony. Galloping to beat the cards toward us down the street. Little Beaver, Little Beaver, don't come near here. Look at the crowd. All tangled up in the mud. Did you see that bird? For Pete's sake, Little Beaver tied a rope between the two horses, failed it on the ground, and tipped the whole bunch. <laughs> oh, mother, this is rich. Here he comes back. Little Beaver. That's enough. Huh? Crowd cool him up and mud. Me bring him good help this time. Oh, you sure did, little beaver. You brought good help this time. Now cut that rope out from the crowd before somebody really gets hurt. You, Bert, keep him covered. I will. All right, now just calm down. Get up out of that mud and reach for the sky. You'll pay for this someday, Red Rider. I'll be glad to pay. It's been worth it. Just reach for the sky. Stand it. Yeah, that's better. I've got a hunch your feelings about me have kind of cooled down. So I reckon you can all go. Even you, Hanlon. And I'd suggest a shower bath in your case. All right, come on, Bert. Little beaver. Back into the office. By jings, I wish one of them had started something. And they feel I'm cooler now. No danger. That's right. There'll be no trouble now. Red! Oh, I can't believe you're walking in here alive. Not only alive, but kicking, thanks to Little Beaver. Me knock a mace hammer in mud. You betcha. him. Little Beaver, you sure did. Red, I think my hair turned two shades gray than it is, seeing you out there standing off that mob and hearing that dirty lion skunk of an ace Hammond saying what he did. Jane can tell you I had my rifle up, ready to start shooting if that mob so much as moved toward you. And you'd have gotten into the same kind of trouble if you had. Well, now listen, everybody. It's plain as daylight that Ace Hanlon's at the bottom of this. Well, sure he is. But can we prove it? That's the question. Well, we know what Ace has tried to do, don't we? We know and that all he... that's not proof, daughter. Red's right. For one thing, where's his motive? You're sure you can't think of any reason why he'd want you out of business, Mr. Bruce? Yeah, he shouldn't want to crowd me the law for the money and freighting. But so far, there ain't been hardly any. I wonder what it could be. Yeah, it beats me. Oh, by the way, Ryder, what about that job you talked about? That's right. I almost forgot. I met Bert here under rather peculiar circumstances in Devil's Hole. Now, he needs a job. I'll tell you the circumstances. I had $3,000, and he saved my life before I lost it. And the money, too. He says he's driven a stage. Want a trustworthy man? <laughs> Do I? You're hired, son. Gee, thanks, Mr. Bruce. I don't know as I'll be able to pay as regular as I'd like, but uh, I'll sure try. Count me in, Mr. Bruce. Oh, Mr. Parks. You can't know what that means to us. Gee, can't everybody just call me Bert, sort of? You don't have to be so polite. <laughs> well, Bert, my boy, someday I'll make this up to you. Just when, I don't know, but I will. When'd you like me to start, Mr. Bruce? Well, Bert, I've got a wagon scheduled to go for Templeville tomorrow morning at daybreak. You want to try taking that wagon in? A couple of sacks of mail and some merchandise for the general store? I'd sure like to try. Well, then you're hired, son. Gee, thanks. And thanks to you, too, Red, for putting in a good word. Well, now we got everything fixed. Guess little Beef and I'd better mosey on back to paint a Valley Ranch. Oh, oh, Red. So soon? Reckon the Duchess will be needing me about tomorrow, Jane. Gee, why do you have to go, Red? Oh, Red, I thought... Yes, Jane? What did you think? Well... All these strange things happening to us, I thought... Well, I thought you were interested in solving them. Sorry, Jane. I'll try to be back in Millersville maybe about the middle of next week. Oh, Ray! Oh, no, Janie, maybe Red's got business elsewhere. He can't be expected to solve all our problems for us. So, uh, so long, Bert. Glad to have met you. Red, thanks for all you've done for me. Thanks for... Well, we 
go home now, Red Rider. Well, we're camping here for the night. Up here on Mountain Cold. We're up here on the cold mountain because down below us is the highway leading to Templeville. Me catch them. You watch them, Bert Parks, driving the team. You got the idea. You follow what might happen to Bert when he starts out driving that wagon bright and early tomorrow morning. Now maybe Red Rider find a mark what ha- matter. Maybe. So let's get what sleep we can. We'll be cold and hungry enough before dawn. Time you came in and reported to me. Now listen, Mr. Hanley, you see how you ought to throw away money on. Sit down. Don't talk too loud. This hotel's walls wasn't built to deaden sound. Gosh, Mr. Hanley, we had that redhead when that engine kid come along with them two horses and that rope. Yeah, and and there we all were in the mud like pigs. Now listen, I don't intend to have this matter drag out to the point where my part in it comes out. Understand? I've just heard that Bert Parks is going to work for the Bruce's and is taking the Templeville wagon tomorrow morning, leaving at 4 a.m. That's bad. It means another driver we're not sure of. Well, uh, could we get the way sleeping and, uh, you know... Uh... Yeah, and have the whole business really rouse the country? No, thanks. This has got to be method number three. And I don't want it to fail. Oh, I, I tell you that this time... Never I'll... mind the promises. Do it. Y- yes, Mr. Hanlon. Wagon come now. I'm up world. See him? It's about time. This air up here is making me starve. And look him. Oh. oh Two men with rifles. They wait. Stay right here. But they hold him up. You know, stop him. If only I could be sure he wouldn't be killed. Come on, Red Rider. Save him. I told you to stay here. Now, this time I want to see what they do with that stuff they steal. Now they step him out. Say, um, hands up. Bert, Bert, don't be foolish and start shooting. Oh, good. He put his hands up. Now they bring another wagon. It's the same thing they've always done. They'll take that stuff out of the Bruce wagon and put it into theirs. Get your horse. We've got to be ready to follow them. Now that's funny. Red, we crazy. If you see the same thing I see, we're not crazy. We follow men who steal them from Bruce Wagon. We see them now what they do. I thought that by following them, I'd be led to where they hide the stuff that they steal from the Bruce Freighting Wagon or the man who receives it. But I never expected this. Throw the stuff away and into the river. I haven't cleared up a bit of this mystery, Little Beaver. In fact, I've made it worse. Return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. Bruce Freighting Company, and Red Rider thought that he would follow the men he and Little Beaver saw hold Bert up and force his load, and so solve the mystery of what has been happening, as well as Ace Hanlon's part in the series of recent attempts to put the Bruce Company out of business. Instead, the mystery deepened. The hold-up men took the stolen goods and dumped them into a nearby river. 
Back in Millersville, Bert Parks now stands in the Bruce offices waving his arms. There I was, driving the wagon pretty as you please on the road to Templeville when, I guess it was about 5.30, it happened. Made a grab for my gun, but what was the use? They had me. Took everything. Oh, Bert. Lucky you weren't killed like poor Dave Small, son. Lucky you weren't killed. Lucky who wasn't killed? Red. You were right, Jane. I should be looking into this. I wasn't needed at Painted Valley after all. Do you need another man, Mr. Bruce? Another man? Oh, that's right kind of you, Red. What's the use? They're licking me. I can't stand this. Red, just this morning, Bert was held up. I heard about it, Jane. It's all over town. But I've got an idea. A guard. Bert, you drive. I'll guard. We might get a shipment through that way. Why, Jings, there's an idea. No, no, boys. I don't see much use in staying in business the way things are. Even if you and Bert do work for me, what can I pay you with? I'm almost broke. This morning's work just means another shipment I've got to make good. Listen. Now, don't ask any questions, any of you. Here's what I want you to do. Dispatch a wagon at the regular time tomorrow morning to Devil's Hole. Advertise it. Let everybody know about it. But don't ship anything valuable on that trip. I just want two or three packing cases that will look regular, but which will be filled with rocks. Rocks? Yes, just plain, ordinary rocks. Do it now and don't ask any questions. Have you gone crazy, Red? For Pete's sake, Red. Now, wait. I've watched Red a long time at Painted Valley. He's got an idea. I know it. Do what he tells you. But, guys... All right, Red. I have a hunch you're up to something. Thanks, everybody. All right, Bert. You'll drive and I'll convoy. You're the doctor, Red. I'll drive and you convoy. Oh, and uh, just one more thing. When we're set to start tomorrow morning, Mr. Bruce, give us orders in a loud voice, just as if we were green hands and needed advice. Mm. <laughs> The horse is all set, Shorty. All set. The team's ready. Well, goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. Isn't little Beaver going? Well, he'll be along in a minute. Here he comes now. Yippee! Me going too with wagon. Bring him bow and arrow. Help him guard wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Beaver. What's the matter? Need him guard. <laughs> That's right, son. We need all the guards we can get to help Red, even those with the bows and arrows. Well, boys. Remember I told you about that road ahead. The only trouble you might have is the narrow stretch down the face of Breakneck Canyon. It's well named. Been raining through there lately, and the soil's kind of wet. I know the stretch. We'll watch it. We'll be careful. Well, luck be with you, boys. So long. So long. So long. Come on, team. Get going. Get going. Get going. Thunder. Getting tired pounding a wagon seat? I wouldn't mind taking a spell around. This wagon seat's riding mighty rough. Where's little Beaver? He's been circling the mesa up above to see what he can find. And he acts like he's seen something. Here he comes. Just keep on going. Oh, Red Rider, you come see him. You spotted something? Two men. Guns. What kind of guns? Rifles. They get him off horse. Wait him high up in Mason. Stay here a minute. Take it, Thunder. Come on, Thunder. Go it, boy. Bert. Bert, can you hear me? Yeah. Well, just keep on rolling as if you hadn't heard anything. Little Beaver reports men on foot up on the mesa up above. What do I do? Now, go this side of Brickneck Canyon. Now, don't arouse suspicion. Keep going. If you hear shots, though, stop there. We'll go up above and reconnoiter. When do we come to Breakneck Canyon? Oh, about a half mile ahead. It's steep but safe. Just keep your brake shoes tight on the way down. All right. Come on, you neighbor. Get going. Along thunder. Back to Little Beaver.
Well, that crazy shorty not tell me till an hour ago that Red Ryder went with the wagon, too. Yeah, but I got it fixed. It'll happen in Breakneck Canyon. You know what it means if there's a slip-up. Oh, I, I know. But there's too many men getting in on this. See, when's that shipment you expect coming in, Ace? This can't go on much longer. Yeah, just hold your horses. It ought to be in tomorrow. And after that, we'll both be on Easy Street. Did you hide the horses in those bushes? Uh, you betcha. All right. Now, where's that cliff you said we could look down from? There. Take them easy. Uh oh. We're right on the edge. See him. They're men with guns down below. How do you know he's not a hunter? Hunt? This country? What'd he kill him here? Coyotes? All right. So he's up to no good and he isn't a hunter. But you said there were two men up here. Where's the other? No see him. Lost. Well, there comes Bert and the team down the road. They look like toys way down there. Yeah. Start going down Breakneck Canyon. There's the other man. Yeah. Now, what'd he do? He just seemed to spring out of the ground. And both of them are watching Bert drive down into the canyon. I'm looking into this. Me come, too. No, you stay behind. Watch the horses. Yeah. Me no one and stay. Now, do it, little beaver. We can't take any chances with those horses if we need them. I'm sliding down this cliff and talking to that man. Mm. All right. Me do them. That's better. All right, here goes. Yes, stay where you are, Redhead. Seems to me I've heard your voice somewhere before, mister. I ain't interested in voices. Hey, Jack. Redhead walked into the trap. Give him the works. Listen, if you two are hunters, there's something mighty peculiar. Well, I ain't interested in conversation. You stay right there. Ah, what hit me? That's all I need to get this chance. Come on down, little beaver. Good shot with that arrow. You take his gun. Uh, got him gun. Thanks. You were right to keep watching. Now do the same. Keep out of sight. I'm going to see what that other man's up to. What's that? Blaston powder. Look him. Smoke. Coming up from Breakneck Canyon. Come on. You come. Slide and face the loose rock. Can you stop? Can you stop him? Pour him fast. Never mind that now. Down the canyon. No use. Look him. Little beaver. Road blow him right off. That's what they're doing, the skunks. Planting a charge of powder to go up in the wagon past. Oh, you fool, Red Rider, you fool. Little beaver. Get down there and try to find Bert. I'm going back after that other man. Me go. If I can get back up this slide of loose rocks. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, no place for little beaver. No place for either of us. Where's he shooting from? Up in bushes. Ouch. Hot lead in the face. Let yourself slide. Me slide. Don't let it get out of control. Maybe it can no stop. Try to stop it. Try it, or it'll take you down into the canyon. I'll be careful. Little beaver, grab that bush. Me go on. Me go on fast. The Red Rider, warn you. Right, right here, little beaver. Red Rider, what's the matter? I, I don't know. Broken leg feels like. Oh. Welcome slide too fast. Help me. Help me get some of that loose rock off my legs. Hurry now. Uh, oh, work them fast. No, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Never mind that. At least I'm alive and we know it. Go. Go see what's happened to Bert. Confound it. Why did this have to happen now? Those men will get away. Uh, no good here. Now do as I tell you. Go, go see about Bert. No, me stay. They kill Red Rider here. I'll do what I tell you. Come find that you're always getting me into... into trouble when you don't... when you don't do as I say. Do it. 
Look after Bert. No. Get him out. Little people work. Get Red Rider out. Red Rider. Red Rider. Oh. Ri- right. Red Rider. What matter? Face white. You face. No face him now. Please. Hurt bad. Red Rider. Red Rider. Red Rider. They, they shoot him at me, too. Little people, go get help. Fast. going to happen to Red Rider now? Well, you can count on one thing. It will be exciting and entertaining. So be sure to tune in again Saturday night at 7.30. And don't forget, tell your friends that they can hear the thrilling adventures of Red Rider three times weekly on their Blue Network station. Make a date right now to listen in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night at this same time for a half hour of spine-tingling action with Red Rider. America's favorite cowboy hero. Rider and the others. Listen to the next thrilling half hour with Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy, on this station next Saturday night at 7.30. comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. What oh, that told me, little people? There's been a shooting over at Paradise Plateau, and we've got to see that justice is done. You betcha, Red Rider. Get along. Get him up. Get it. <laughs> On thunder, right on cowboy. The Adventures of Red Rider. In just a minute, we'll join Red Rider in another thrilling adventure of the plains. But first, Red Rider says that if you've ever missed a few meals, you know how downright delicious food can taste. Well, that's how good a creamy, rich slice of Langendorf bread tastes, even when you think you haven't much of an appetite. Yes, sir. Langendorf bread is so wonderfully fresh, so smooth and tasty, that baking experts judged it America's finest. It adds zest to every meal, and zest to living, too, because Langendorf bread helps give you pep and energy. It contains dextrose, the world's greatest quick energy food, plus essential vitamins, carbohydrates, proteins, and minerals. So for downright good eating that helps you to extra energy, for superb golden brown toast, For appetite-tempting sandwiches, get a loaf of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread at your grocer's tomorrow.
Paradise Plateau has been anything but heavenly for Red Rider and the settlers whose land he's trying to save from Phil Wainwright, unscrupulous president of the water company. Wainwright has stopped at nothing, even going so far as to shut off the water supply. Red contrived to get onto the dam and reopen the sluice gate, but then found himself trapped and could only escape by plunging into the unleashed torrent. Wainwright thinks that he has been drowned, but Red's friends have found him clinging to the bank, weak and exhausted. You're plumb tuckered out, Red. Sure you can manage to stick in Thunder Saddle? Oh, I'm... I'm much better now, Williams. But, Mr. Ryder, if you were to rest just a short while longer... You're staying here. Bad men find him. Little Beaver's right. Don't hanker much to have Wainwright find me now the way I'm feeling. Say, it turned mighty cold all of a sudden, didn't it? Cold? Son, him bathed. Shucks, yes, Red. The sun's really sizzling. You must be sick. Well, you've got the chills. A fever must be coming on. Nothing to be worrying about, though. I'll be all right as We'd soon as... We'd better not take any chances. Let's hit it out from my ranch no, house. No, take Mr. Ryder to my place. We'll be able to hide him better there. All right, but let's get going. Red's beginning to shake like a willow in a windstorm. Worked out right slick, didn't it? Here, Wainwright. But you know, as much as I hated that hombre, spoils my appetite just to think of a death like that. <laughs> the on-rushing water swallowed Red Rider up like it would an apple and shot him out through the sluice gates. Yeah, but an apple bobs back up to the surface. And Red Rider didn't. Nah, we've seen the last of that side, Winder. And I'm here to tell you I was never happier about anything in all my born years. <laughs> Ace Handlin will say I've done a good job. <laughs> here, I'll pour us a toast. You name it, Wainwright. Yeah, with pleasure. <laughs> to us. And success getting those settlers out of Paradise Plateau. <laughs> Here's how? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Right, good stuff you got there, Wainwright. Uh, the best is not too good for Phil Wainwright, and now that all of Paradise Plateau is as good as ours, yeah, but there'll be plenty of time to celebrate later. Sheriff, I can't wait to start dispossessing those ranches. Let's get at it. Oh, it'll be as easy as stealing eggs out of birds' nests now. Uh, wait, what's that? Uh, wasn't expecting any callers. Come in. I beg your pardon. Uh, don't beg our pardon, ma'am. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be interrupted by as pretty a woman as you. Welcome to Paradise Plateau. Thank you. My name's Jane Bruce. Glad like... to make your acquaintance, Miss Bruce. I'm the sheriff here. Uh, Wainwright's my name, Miss Bruce. Phil Wainwright. Uh, here. Just let me dust off this chair. Oh, but you shouldn't bother. You see, I, I no only... Don't bother at all, Miss Bruce. Sit down. Well, thank you. It's very sweet of you to put yourself out like that. Might I be really... as bold as to ask where you're from, Miss Bruce? Oh, I'm the school teacher at Painted Valley. Painted Valley? Hey, Wainwright. Ain't that where he's from? Yeah. So, uh, you're a school teacher, eh? Well, uh, I have been figuring some on starting a school here at Paradise Plateau. Here, nothing like uh, educating the young'uns, I always say. I'm sure you got the proper qualifications for the job, Miss Bruce. And since it's in my But power, I don't want a job teaching school at Paradise Plateau. You don't? Hmm. Then why are you here? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I'm hoping to find out about Red Rider. Huh? Well, what about Red Rider? Well, he and Little Beaver, that's the little Indian boy. Oh, I know him. Oh, then they did come here to Paradise Plateau? Well, I don't know. Why do you ask, me? Well, we'd heard that Red Rider and Little Beaver came here. They're always disappearing like that, so the Duchess, she's Red Rider's aunt, didn't worry about it particularly. But when several days passed and... Well, the Duchess decided I'd better come and find out what happened. But you're only doing this on her account. You don't care none what happens to him now, do you? Oh, but I do. That is a... But why are you looking at me like that? Red Rider did come to Paradise Plateau, didn't he? Now, young lady... Tell me the truth, what happened? Well, now, I'm downright surprised that this pretty woman like you should ever bother a head about a maverick like Red Rider. Tell me the truth. Hey, you got it bad, ain't you? I hardly see it's any business of yours. I'll tell you something that's your business. Something that'll make you plumb change your mind about this cowboy. He's been flirting with another woman. You're not telling me the truth. Ask anybody here at Paradise Plateau about him and this young Mrs. Eddie. 
whose husband happened to have an accident. Here, Red Ryder's mighty sweet on her. But it ain't no sense in a young woman like you pining her heart away for a mangy he Don't you nothing. dare say another word against him. Red Ryder's the finest square... Hold on, Crook. That's what he is. You're lying and I won't listen. I'm going to find Red Ryder and he'll be mighty interested to hear what you've just said. I don't think Red Ryder will care much, man. You see, he's dead. Dead? Yeah. He's dead in a rat, ma'am. We saw him drown. If he did, you did it to him, didn't you? Huh? I can tell by the look on your face. Now, now see him. You did it. You killed him. Where is he? I'll scratch your eyes. Get away from me, Sheriff. Shoot him in the ribbons. Get this wild cat away from me. Is he? Worse. Much worse. You never see him Red Rider sick like this. Here, let me feel his forehead. Uh, he's burning up. Uh, you, Williams? Uh, yes, Red. Me and Luke have been scouting around. Never saw so many sad people in my life as them settlers. But we can't tell them that you're alive for fear to get back to Wainwright. Yeah. Mustn't take that chance. I don't think we should let him talk anymore, Mr. Williams. Maybe later Just on. one more thing. Some young woman, awful good looker, organized a bunch of folks to search for your body. Keeps crying and saying as how a Red Rider should at least get a decent burial. Who, who is she? Well, her tell that she's from Painted Valley. They say Wainwright's face is a sight after she got through clawing him. It seems they had yeah. quite. A... What's her name? Uh, let me see now, Jeanette Jean. No, uh, it starts with J. Some not Jane Bruce. Hey, that's it, Jane Bruce. Uh, recollect now that sort of word. Me here, Red Rider. Go tell Jane. Bring her here quick. You betcha. But be gosh darn careful nobody finds out what it's all about. Because if they do, we'll be in more trouble. And I was so worried, Mr. Williams, and I thought, oh, Red, to find you still alive. You don't know how I... Oh, but somehow I couldn't quite make myself believe that you were... You will get well again, won't you? Of course you will, ma'am. Good to see you, Jane. Now that you know, you'd, you'd better go back to Painted Valley. Go back? No, Red, I wouldn't think of it. I'm going to stay here and nurse you until you're well enough to go back with me. I declare, Wainwright, you look like a spavined horse with all that court plaster on you. Uh, and to try to smoke that cigar. Uh, bless your high sheriff, it ain't funny. Uh, if you hadn't just stood there like a wooden Indian while that she tiger was mauling me. Hey, Wainwright, sheriff, now listen. You listen, Walter. How many times do I have to tell you never to come busting in my office like a tornado? Well, you'll go busting out of here like a tornado, Wainwright, if you hear what I heard. What's up? Red Rider, he's still alive. Huh? You're crazy. We ourselves seen him drown. Yeah, that's what you guys think. Oh, you're just saying that, Baldy. Ryder couldn't be alive. You yeah, try to yeah, tell us different. Don't come in. You're going from Let go of him. Let go of him. All right. <coughs> we'll talk quick, Baldy. And if what you say don't pan out to be the gospel truth, I'll... Well, I was down watching them search for Ryder's body, and when the ancient kid come up and called that gal aside, you know, the one from Painted Valley? <laughs> Wainwright won't soon forget her. Go on, go on. Call her aside, and then what? Well, uh, something he whispered just about Florida, and off she scurries with him in the direction of the Eddie place. Yeah. Well, I figured maybe they'd found Ryder's body, so I sneaked off after him to take a look-see. Yeah, yeah, well. well, the windows was all covered, but I got a peek inside, and Red Ryder's there. I saw him, and I heard him. He appears to be a gosh-awful sick man, but he's alive. Well, of all the dead, ratted luck. Oh. He's real sick. I know what you're thinking, Wayne, right? If he's so sick, we can walk right in on him and finish the job. He'll be as helpless as a newborn babe. we just like him to get the drop on us, even if he's half dead. No. I got a better idea. <laughs> a much better idea. <laughs> any better? He's past the crisis. He'll win through. I know he will. Red Ryder's a fighter. Sure he is, sure. He'll lick that fever. Look at him. 
Weak as he is, he can't lie still. Gee, he's trying to talk. Got to open that gate. Start the water. Save cattle. Got to. Even in his delirium. All he can think about is other people and their troubles. Jane. Yes, Red. He's opening his eyes. Howdy. Oh, Mr. Ryder, you do feel better, don't you? Why, yes, I... I think so. Reckon he passed the crisis, all right. Now, if nothing happens... If... Oh, Red. Now, there, there, Jane. <laughs> Didn't think I'd let a little thing like a fever get me, did you? Shucks, I'd... I'd be ashamed to go to heaven if I... If I gave in as easy as that. Now, you mustn't talk. You'll need every ounce of strength. Fire! Fire! Was that little beaver shouting? Well, I couldn't tell. But you hear that funny noise? Fire! Oh, look, the house is all ablaze. It's burning like tinder. Oh, the field's burning, too. Run for it before it's too oh, late. Oh, but Red, what about you? Forget about me. Save yourself. Oh, the door's blocked now. Our only chance is through the window. Oh, Open it, little oh, beaver. Be dead and pronto. Wait. I'll break it open. <laughs> Forget about me. No. I can get ready to the window. The rest of you be ready to help me get him through. Save yourselves. Hurry. Uh, oh, careful. None of them fallen brands hit any of your fire. Just uh, a few more steps. Uh, oh. uh, uh, we made it. Oh. 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 oh, we're safe. Look out! The whole place is crashing in! And uh, though he's been burned out of the Eddie place, Red Rider's not only safe but feeling better. I actually seen him taking food. And more alive than a family of cats, said Umbre. You say he's at the Williams place now? They got it guarded, any bully? Well, when I left, they was posting sentries. I guess it's just no use, Wainwright. Better give up. No, I won't give up. I'll find some way. I got it. Got what? A perfect way. Yeah, what a fool I've been. Well, what do you mean by that? We're in our legal rights and dispossess no settlers. I'm through trying to handle Ryder myself when the law will do it for me. The law will do nothing. I'm sheriff. Ain't I try? Ah, you. What do you mind the United States Marshal, I reckon? Yeah. Baldy, you're riding to Union City to fetch Marshal Wiggins. You'll not only clear the settlers off the land, but throw Red Ryder into prison. <laughs> Return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. What's the thing that both youngsters and grown ups must have to be leaders? That's right, energy. And these days you need more energy than ever. So, how can you get extra energy food to help keep you full of pep? Just eat plenty of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread with every meal. You see, delicious Langendorf bread contains a special ingredient to give you extra energy for work and play. It's made with dextrose the world's greatest quick-energy food. And in addition, it supplies carbohydrates, vitamins, proteins, and minerals used by the body for energy to build muscle and tissue. Langendorf bread is just as delicious as it is healthful. Its superb flavor and wonderful freshness cause baking experts to judge it America's finest. So, boys and girls and mothers and dads, help yourselves to extra energy this extra good way. Enjoy fresh and tasty Langendorf bread toasted, plain with butter or jelly, in appetizing sandwiches. For goodness sake and for energy's sake, get a loaf of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread at your grocer's tomorrow. Several days have passed since the fire at the Eddie Ranch. It is mid-afternoon now as we see a rider galloping up to the home of Frank Williams. Oh, Thunder. I know. You're hankering for some more exercise after all the time you've been tied up. But I can't oblige you right now. 
Don't forget, you've barely gotten up from your sick bed, and if you overdo it... Yes, Mr. Ryder, you've got to be careful. Oh, shucks, nothing wrong with me anymore. I'm as fit as ever again. By cracky red, I believe you. Never in my whole life heard of anyone recovering so fast. Jane, you wanted to know where I'd been. Went over to look at the fire ruin. I'm afraid Jim will have another setback when he learned that our place was burned down. Now, don't you fret, Mrs. Eddy. Us settlers have been talking it over, and we're all going to pitch in and build you a new house, finer even than the one you had. Oh, you've all been so kind, so wonderfully kind. That's what neighbors are for, ma'am. But, Red, you haven't told us yet. Were you able to find out how the fire got started? Well, I say, look at little Beaver come riding lickety-split. Wonder what's up. Red Ryder! Red Ryder! Now, quit blowing like a steam engine, little Beaver. What's all the commotion about? Me, see him, Sheriff and Posse. They come here, you fetch them. Wouldn't surprise me a bit. I've been waiting for Wainwright's next move. Let them come. I tell you, Marshal, the way Red Ryder's been going on a rampage around here, Billy the Kid was a church singer by comparison. Well, now, Wainwright, I find that mighty hard to believe. Mighty hard, you see. I've made up with Red Ryder before. Why, it was through him we got Ace Hanlon behind bars. It was. Uh, By the way, wasn't Ace Hanlon quite a crony of yours, Wainwright? Well, 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 Marshal, it's this way. You you, you see, you... uh, uh, wait a minute, I'll be right with you. Got to ask the sheriff something. Say, hey, sheriff. Well, it was your idea. You then marshal you in right first. You act like I was a renegade instead of Red Rider. Queer, ain't it, how some folks always get certain hunches? Shut up and listen to me. Marshal Wiggins wants to see for you, believe. So we'll show him. Yeah? Show him what? Well, when we get to the Williams place... The rest of us will hang back while you ride up and do the talking. Here, what'll I talk about? Your Lord of Williams off the lane. You know he won't go. Sure, I know, you blockhead. Red Ryder will start interfering, and then you get Ryder to pull a gun on you. But, hey, you ain't hearing any buzzing sounds in your head lately, have you, Wainwright? I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and I know what I'm not doing. And that's to rile up Red Ryder so oh, that he... he has to do is pull a gun. I didn't say he had to shoot. Pulling the gun and shooting it is one motion with that hombre. I ain't taking no chances. You'll do what I say, or I'll tell the marshal enough on you so that he takes you back with him to prison. Why, you wouldn't dare. All that I have done has been alongside you or with your orders. Now, you'd be hooked same as me. I'm a careful man, Sheriff, when it comes to incriminating myself. Afraid you'd have quite a time trying to make your story stick. Well, all right, I'll do it. Red, the others have stopped. The sheriff's riding up by himself. Well, what can that mean? We'll soon find out. Jane, you, Mrs. Eddie, and Little Beaver go back into the house. Me stay him. You do and me spank him. Now, things might start popping around here, so get. Me sit him. Come on, Little Beaver. Let me do the talking, Williams. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Oh, that Oh! Frank Williams, by the authority vested in me as sheriff... I order you to surrender this land to the Paradise Plateau Mutual Water Company. Is that all you've got to say, Sheriff? I'm uh, I'm not talking to you, Red Rider. I'm talking to Williams. Well, I'm talking for Williams. And the answer is, no savvy. Now, see here. If you know what's good for you... No, you don't. Wait a minute. Marshal Wiggins, help! Marshal Wiggins. So that's it. Yes, Red. Here comes the Marshal. Oh, hold there. Oh. I hate to do this, Red Rider, but you're under arrest. But, Marshal, I only shot at him because he started to draw his gun. I did not. I was only fixing to get me some makings for a cigarette. It's my duty, Red. You better come quietly. All right, Marshal. I'll come. Try to fly the coop this time. No call for you to act up, Wainwright. I'm in charge. The trial will be in the morning, Reed. You better get yourself a lawyer. Huh. There's none here, Marshal. Besides, what good would it do me with Wainwright stacking the cards against me? It's facts that I'll stack against you, Ryder. Facts, not cards. You'd go to prison even if you had all the lawyers in America to defend you. 
You know why? Because the law's all on my side. Marshal, do you mind getting that coyote out of here? Come along, Wainwright. Sure, I'll come. But first, here's a little reading matter for your rider. Huh? Oh. One of those tricky contracts that you use to cheat the settlers. Careful. Huh? Or I'll have you for slander along with everything else. That's an ironclad contract. And the settlers wouldn't have dared disobey it if it wasn't for you. I'm giving you that contract paper right up for a souvenir. And when the judge wraps for order in court tomorrow morning, it'll be the beginning of the end for you. Courtroom is sure packed. Oh, Mr. Williams, do you think Red has a chance? Don't you worry, Miss Bruce. The settlers all know if Red is finished, so are they. Maybe something will happen. Shooting happened. You betcha. Judge, uh, before you start my trial, there's something that I'd like to say to my friends here. Red Rider, this is a court of law, not a town meeting. You'll have talking to plenty to do without making speeches now. Hey, just a minute, Your Honor. Hey, Judge, this is an ugly crowd. You better let Red Rider talk to him. Hey, whatever you say, Marshal. Uh, maybe the court could spare you a minute or two, Mr. Rider. Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Order. Now, folks... I know how you all feel, and I got a pretty good hunch what you're aiming to do. But even though it may mean the difference between me being stuck away in prison and breathing the air of the great open spaces, I'm asking you not to take the law into your own hands. Uh, uh, they'll kick us off our land! No, they won't. They won't kick you off your land. And if you'll just quiet down, I'll tell you why. Order, order. What the devil's he got up his sleeve now? Quiet, Wainwright. Now, folks... Bill Wainwright was obliging enough to give me a copy of that contract that you all signed. And having nothing better to do in jail, I read it over carefully. Every word of it. What kind of bluff you're trying to pull, Ryder? I don't care if you read it over a million times. Wainwright, the only reason you say that is because maybe you never read the contract clear through yourself. Or else you've got even less memory than backbone. <laughs> Judge! What kind of court is this allowing a skunk like Red Rider to... What did you call me, Wainwright? Order! 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 Court can't be responsible for what might happen to you, Wainwright, if you don't watch your language. Go on, Mr. Ryder. Well, I just want to ask Wainwright one question. Did you or didn't you shut the sluice gate and cut off the water supply? Sure, I did. What up? Hear that, everybody? He admits it in open court. He admits that he turned off the water. Now, let me read you this paragraph in the contract. The Paradise Plateau Mutual Water Company guarantees to furnish an adequate, continuous, and steady supply of water. And should the supply of water be cut off, ownership of the water system shall be transferred outright to the settlers of Paradise Plateau and operated by them in such manner as they shall see fit. <laughs> Wainwright, you broke your own contract. The printer made a mistake and copied the wrong contract form. He wasn't supposed to put that in. But he did. And now you're held to it, Wainwright. Order! 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 Stop yelling or I'll hold you all for contempt of court. Oh, Red, it's wonderful. Wainwright's going to bust a blood vessel if he ain't careful. Slip me your six-shooter, Williams. They took my guns and I may need one. Well, order now. Well, now that we can hear ourselves think once more. Please, Judge. I'm not finished yet. Got a word to say about the burning of the Eddy place. This is all highly irregular, Mr. Ryder. Uh, but highly interesting, Judge. Uh, Go on, Red. I want you all to take a look at this cigar. What's a cigar got to do with it? Only one codger around here smokes his particular brand of cigar, and he has to send clear back to Virginia for it. Phil Wainwright. What you driving at, Red? The reason the Eddy place burns so fiercely is because somebody sprinkled coal oil around. And there's somebody who sprinkled the coal oil and struck a match to it it's the same hombre who dropped this cigar and making his getaway. Name of Wainwright. I'll shoot the first man that makes a move. Stand in your tracks if you don't want these guns to blaze. If you try to follow me... Yeah, that'll put you on a commission for a bit, Wainwright. And now, Marshal, quick. We've got to get Wainwright's confederates, Boldy and the Sheriff, before they can get away. Marshal Wiggins, now that we've got all three hombres behind bars, I'm ready to go back to court again and stand trial. Trial? Nothing. Why, you deserve a monument for what you've done for these settlers here. I'm proud to shake your hand, Red Rider. Thanks, Marshal. Well, I reckon that means my job's finished here at Paradise Plateau. So we'll be riding. All right, Thunder. 
Come on, Thunder. The adventure of Paradise Plateau ended. Red Rider is free to return to the Painted Valley Ranch of his aunt, the Duchess, for a well-deserved rest. But he's not destined to be idle long, for already fate has begun to spin another web of intrigue on the range. Already trouble is brewing in Millersville. And when we join him, Red will again be riding the trail. Listen for the next exciting episode of Red Rider. <laughs> Rider is presented for your enjoyment each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7.30 by Langendorf, makers of the bread judged America's finest. Get a loaf of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread at your grocer's tomorrow. America's will to win depends upon the physical and mental fitness of all of us. Good health helps build the high morale so necessary in these days of strain. So keep physically fit and do your bit. Invest in freedom and build up real savings for the future by buying defense bonds and stamps. Help national defense activities by volunteering for Red Cross, civilian defense, USO, and other important work. Langendorf bread, rich in bodybuilding carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and dextrose for extra energy, will help you maintain the physical and mental fitness which builds courage and optimism so needed during these trying days. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the Blue Network. From out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Right bet for me, little beaver. Ride fast and keep low. There's hot lead whistling and scorpion goats tonight. You bet some red rider. Get along. Get him up. Get! Come on, Thunder. Ride on, cowboy. The Adventures of Red Rider. Before we join Red Rider, here's another adventure. It's really a taste adventure because I'm talking about the first time you taste rich, super fresh Langendorf bread. The bread baking experts judged America's finest. Yes, folks, that's a taste thrill for anyone. Langendorf bread is so wonderfully fresh, so smooth, fine, and appetizing. One bite just naturally leads to another. And that's all right, too, because energizing Langendorf bread is mighty good for you. You see, Langendorf bread is made with dextrose, the world's greatest quick energy food. And it supplies essential vitamins, carbohydrates, proteins, and minerals used by the body for energy to help build muscle and tissue. So the more fresh and tasty Langendorf bread you eat, the more energy you get for work and play. For goodness sake and for energy's sake, make America's finest bread your daily bread. Get fresh and tasty Langendorf bread at your grocer's tomorrow. It's late afternoon in Painted Valley, and Ching Hao is out in back of the ranch house taking in clothes that have been drying on the line. He looks up in alarm as two horses approach at breakneck speed. Slightly in the lead and dodging like a jackrabbit is Little Beaver on his wiry pinto papoose. 
Close behind him is Red Rider on Thunder, whirling his lasso and shot. Hit him, old Jingo. Stop him. Look out, old Wash Cub. Oh, you kick it over, wash it, Tub. Grab little beaver, grab him. No, no, Red Rider. Oh, young women, don't get go last. You knock it down, clean the sheep. Make it tell them. Look out, Ching Ow. I'm going to rope little beaver. <sighs> Got him. Turn them loose, Red Rider. Let him go. Oh, oh, terrible. Oh. What, what make a bad smell? All the same like a skunk pole cut. <laughs> it's little beaver. He shot at a skunk with his bow and arrow. Ah, skunk shoot at me first. I'll say he did, and he didn't miss. Oh, what's the matter, you little beaver? You smell it all the time. It's too bad now. Oh. Go away. Go away. Long way. Now, never mind that, Ching. What we've got to do is give him a good bath and bury his clothes. No. No bathe them. Ching Ho make them water too hot. Make them soap and knife. Oh, me washy. Washy sock can do. Washy shirt can do. Washy plants can do, see? But no washy skunk. Ching Ho, go back to China. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, Ching, come back here. Me no skunk em. You only say me skunk now, see? Goodbye. Get a tub of water, Ching. Oh, more better. We take a closey pin. Hang little beaver up on the closey line. Let the wind blow on him for two, three weeks. No, more better. We'd put clothespins on our noses and go to work with plenty of strong soap and hot water. No, please, Red Rider. No wash him too much. Pretty soon come him rain. Me swell him, me smell him good. You betcha him. I'm sorry, little partner, but... Say, whoever that is coming to see us is in a powerful hurry. And Mr. Bruce. There's some Jane Papa. I believe you're right at that. You got mighty good eyes, little beaver. Oh, the young William of all in singy. Oh, looky, looky. Come, horse. More dirt kick on a clean laundry. Howdy, oh, Mr. Bruce. Something wrong? Yes, Red. I'm glad I found you. I've got to go back to Millersville in time to catch the midnight stage. Well, what's the trouble, sir? You look pale as a ghost. Listen, Ryder. Not much time. I've got to get to the state capitol tomorrow morning. I want you to look after Jane. That is, when she comes back. When she comes back? Yes. Where is she? What's happened? It was this afternoon. I was in my office in Millersville, alone, when the door opened and a man walked in. You, Bruce? Yes. What can I do for you? Plenty. I'm a friend of Ace Hanlon's. Then you're not welcome here. Get out. Take it easy, Pop, and you'll live longer. Why, you... Keep away from that rifle. Shame to spoil your rifle, Pop. Now sit down and be a good little boy or the next shot will spoil you. I... I said sit down. Guess I haven't any choice. All right. What money there is is in the safe there. This ain't no stick-up, Pop. This is just a friendly little visit. What do you want? I just been talking to Ace Hanlon. Ace Hanlon's in jail? Yeah. That's where I saw him. Maybe you'll get the idea better if I tell you just what happened. You see, I went into the visitor's room and we were... You the one to see Hanlon? Yeah. Here's my pass. Okay, sit over there. You got five minutes. You can talk to him through that wire grill. Ah, oh, let's handle in. Hello, Scarface. I knew I could depend on you. Yeah, you can always depend on me, Ace. Yeah. Well, we haven't much time. Listen, I'm getting out of this place, and you're getting $10,000 for getting me out. You got a plan? Certainly I got a plan. It's surefire, and it's foolproof. Okay, let's have it. When you leave here, catch the first stage to Devil's Hole. Yeah. Go to the Silver Dollar Cafe. That's my joint. Yeah. Go to Smokey Link, the bartender. I've written him, and he expects you. He'll introduce you to my gang and show you the hideout. Okay, but what's the plan? Well, I'm getting to that. There's a school teacher named Jane Bruce, daughter of the guy that had me put in here, and also the guy who's going to get me out. Yeah, but how? He's going to the governor and confess. Confess? Yeah. Confess that he framed me, that he's the one that committed all the crimes he accused me of. Then he comes in this dirty hole and I go out. That's simple enough, isn't it? Yeah. Only what's going to make this guy confess? Didn't I tell you he has a daughter? I ain't hurting no women. I don't want her hurt. All you do is wait on the road and meet her on the way home. Tell her that her father's fallen off his horse and hurt himself. She'll go with you all right. Yeah, I get it. Then I call on this bruised guy and persuade him to confess. Exactly. Only remember, no matter what happens, 
The girl's not to be harmed. Ah, you're as good as free right now, Ace. All right, Anything else? Time's up. Uh, there's a troublesome cowboy that's a friend of the Bruce's. Look out for him. Any objections to harming him? Hardly. <laughs> if you fix him for good, there's an extra 2,000 in it. Did you say your time's up? All right, all right. I'm going. You don't have to holler at me. I can hear you. Yeah, so you know now why I'm here, Bruce. And don't try any funny business. I still got you covered. You... Where's my daughter? I wouldn't care to say. But she'll be back home the same day Ace Hammond comes back in the pen. You dirty, rotten cowards. All of you. Never mind that. Are you going to tell the governor you framed Ace and get him pardoned, or ain't you? That's the story, Ryder. I've got to go now. Catch the stage. I just wanted to know that you and the Duchess would be looking after Jane until I come back. I'll do more than that, sir. Now, wait a minute, son. Keep away from Scarface Davis. He's a cold-blooded killer, and he means to get you. I've thought the whole thing out, and my way is the best. Well, I'm writing now for Millersville. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Maybe his way is the best, but I got other ideas. Here, Thunder. Here, boy. Oh, uh, Ching Hao, tell the Duchess I'm eating supper at Devil's Hole tonight. Wait, Red Rider. Me go on too. No, no, little beaver. I'm sorry, but I'm riding alone tonight. Come on, Thunder. Out, Thunder. We've got a long way to ride, boy. What's the matter, Thunder? Oh, boy. Stone in your hoof? Oh, so that's it. Yeah, I hear him, too. It's Little Beaver and Papoose, all right. Uh, are you waiting for me, Red Rider? It was Thunder's idea to wait, not mine, Little Beaver. Now, I thought I told you to stay at the ranch. Red Rider got him heap trouble. Little Beaver come, too. Help him, Red Rider. I'm sorry, Little Beaver, but you'll have to go back. You can't come with me tonight. No one, because smell him like skunk. No, it's not that, little partner. It's because I don't know where I'm going or how long I'll be gone. I'm riding far, and I've got things to do that, well, anything can happen. Oh, come, don't come. Me help make it happen, huh, Red Rider? Will you promise to obey orders? You betcha, Red Rider. Honest engine. Then prod up that canoe and get going. Come on, Thunder. Get him up. Get him. Well, here we are, little people. Devil's Hole. You betcha. Behind Silver Dollar Cafe. That's right. And here's where we part company for a while. Now, you wait here with the horses. You do them, Red Rider. Don't tie them. You stay on Papoose and hold Thunder's bridle. I might come out of there in a hurry and want to leave quick. Got it? You betcha. Him. Hush him. Shh. Easy, boy. Hush him. Howdy, Smokey. Huh? Oh, uh, look here, Red Rider. What do you want? Two roast beef sandwiches. And make them right here in front of me so I can see what goes into them. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, yes, nice and tender, too, my roast beef. <laughs> and mustard? No, just salt and pepper. Ketchup? No, just salt and pepper. Coffee? No. That milk fresh? Oh, it's this morning's. Give me some in a quart can. Oh, you taking your victuals with you? Yep. Now wrap the sandwiches and... Uh, Oh, and put in that box of cookies. Huh? Oh, <laughs> if anybody would ask me, I'd say you look like a picnic lunch here for one of the fair sex, maybe, well, huh? Nobody's asking you. Oh. Yeah, take it out of this. There you are. Fifteen cents change. A yeah, little drink? Of what? Oh, this here. Oh, it's good stuff. On the house. I don't use it. Well, I heard you didn't, but... You I... heard right. Well, all right, if you feel that way about it, then... You got what you come after, so... What uh, makes you so sure? Well, uh, what else you want? Information. Yes, yeah, such as what? Such as uh, who the long, dark-complected stranger is. The one with the scar on his face. I don't know who you're talking about. You want me to come over behind that counter and refresh your memory? Now, no, no, wait a minute. You wouldn't mean Davis, would you? Yes. Scarface Davis. 
Well, I don't know. I've just seen him in here a couple of times. Where is he now? Well, I don't know. How do I know? This place is pretty deserted tonight. The rest of the boys have business somewhere else? How do I know? Business ain't so good since Ace got sent away. Speaking of business, you ever try minding your own business? Yes. Often. And keep your hand away from that butcher knife, Smokey. I said keep away from that knife. Now get up. Without the knife. I'm getting up with the knife, Ryder. Well, you asked for it. And now I'll toss the knife out of the window before you get hurt. It's mighty easy to hurt yourself playing with knives that way. Now get up. Let me alone now, will you? I didn't do nothing to you. Let me alone. Then I'll lift you up. Now listen, Smokey, and listen hard. I'm going to keep picking you up and knocking you down until you tell me what I want to know. Oh, no, Ryder, don't hit me again. I'll talk. I'll tell you. Now, don't hit me. I can't stand it. i got a weak heart. You've got weak knees. Now, where's Jane Bruce? Oh, I don't know. Honest, I don't. Are you going to talk? Oh, yeah, no, no, don't hit me. I'll tell you. She's with Scarface. Where? Up. Hey, if I tell you, you won't hit me, will you? I, I didn't have nothing to do with it, honest. Tell me the truth and I won't touch you. Now, where is she? In your palmas? I've never broken my word yet. Now, start talking. Well, she's in a cave with the head of Scorpion Gulch. And Davis and Scarface and the rest of the boys took her up there. They, they didn't hurt her none. And they're going to turn her loose just as soon as... As Ace Handler gets out of prison? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Hey, where are you going? You can't go up there. Why not? Well, the boys got the entrance to the ghost guarded. That's why. You get yourself killed and mess things up for everybody. That's what you'll do. And you keep out of this. They'll send you back in a couple of days. I'm bringing her back tonight. And you stay here and don't try warning them. I'm telling you, Ryder. Scarface Stevens is a killer. You won't come out of Scorpion Gulch alive. We'll see about that. It's all right, little beaver. Here. Stick this food in your saddlebags. We ride, little beaver. We return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. Boys and girls, I know you all want to be strong and active, like little beaver and Red Rider. So be sure to eat all of the good, nourishing food your mother prepares for you. And ask your mother to try fresh and tasty Langendorf bread the next time she goes to the store. You see, mothers, extra delicious Langendorf bread is a grand source of extra energy that everyone needs for pep these days. Every tempting slice of this finer bread may be used by the body for energy. Yes, and to help build muscle and tissue. Then, for extra energy, Langendorf bread is made with dextrose, the world's greatest quick energy food. So take the tasty trail to added energy for the whole family. Serve plenty of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread with every meal. Enjoy it plain, toasted, and in sandwiches. It's the bread that baking experts judged America's finest. And with every energizing fresh and tasty slice, you'll be glad you made America's finest bread your daily bread. For goodness sake, get a delicious loaf of Langendorf bread tomorrow. Things have been happening fast and furious at Painted Valley today. First, Little Beaver had a losing argument with a skunk. And before he could be scrubbed clean, John Bruce, Jane's father, arrived on the scene with startling news. Jane was being held prisoner by Ace Hanlon's gang. Her release had been promised only if Bruce would falsely claim that he had framed Ace and that he actually was responsible for the crimes that had put Ace behind bars. As we join them again, Mr. Bruce is on his way to see the governor. Red Rider and Little Beaver are on their way to Scorpion Gulch, where Jane is held prisoner. Why are we slowing down, Red Rider? At Scorpion Gulch, just ahead. See those two big rocks at the entrance of the gulch? We see them. 
You think them bad men's hiding behind rocks. Just what I figured, too, little people. A perfect place for an ambush. But they won't be expecting us. Oh, we ambushing them, huh? No, not exactly. We're going to use an old Indian trick. It's just about dark enough for us to get away with it. Me no. Horse hide and man trick? We'll ride low. Just hanging on the sides of our horses. In the dark, they'll think it's a couple of wild horses making a break up the gulch. But by the time they find out who we are, we'll be out of range. When we start. Now, stick right behind me and keep low. Come on, Thunder. Get him up. What we do them now, Red Rider? Well, we're going to leave Thunder and Papoose here in this ravine and go the rest of the way on foot. We're close to the head of the gulch now. Then can bad men try follow up here? Not in this rough country. They'd be afraid we'd hide behind a rock and ambush them. Oh, bad men's big and coward, huh? That's right, little beaver. Wherever you find a bad man or a thief, you're sure to find a coward. Wait, Red Rider. Smell them smoke. Campfire. How you can smell anything is beyond me. We used to skunk and smell now. Well, I'm not. And you still get that bath when we get back to the ranch. Uh oh. You're right, little partner. There is a campfire up ahead. Uh, three mans. Sit him by fire. Yeah. And that's the cave about 20 yards behind him. Cave where keep Missy Bruce? Must be. I don't see any others. How we got him close so bad men's not see us. Well, I've got a plan for that, little beaver. You see that ledge just above the campfire? We see him. Well, there's some bushes growing along there. But they're not very big. Me not very big, too. Well, this is one time that's going to come in mighty handy. Now, you think you can slip up there and get past that campfire without them seeing you? You betcha. him. I'll be covering you from here. When you get there, see if you can hear what they're saying. And if this is where they've got Jane, you signal me with your coyote call. Me do them. Oh, wait a minute. Then get behind that big boulder up there and roll down a small stone. That'll attract their attention long enough for me to get in close to them. You betcha. him. And you stay behind that boulder till I call, understand? Sure. Me go him now. <laughs> wasn't shooting we hear a while back, Scarface. Yeah, I'm sure. It's quiet enough now, ain't it? Yeah, that's just it. It's too quiet. Yeah, all them bugs and crickets real close to us has stopped making a noise. Ah, oh, you country hicks give me a pain. Getting scared just cause you can't hear a bug yelp. You get to noticing things like that out here in the hills. We might not know much, but we know some things. Ah, you didn't know enough to spring your boss out of the pen, did you? No. He had the right to Frisco and get somebody down here what had a little nerve. It ain't that we ain't got no scar faces. Well, you ain't never come up against that red rider yet. Yeah, I'll see. That guy's poison. He ain't human. Yeah, he sure won't be human long if he comes messing into my business. But that gal's a friend of his we got tied up in the cave. Yeah, and he's got a habit of finding things out. I mean... Ah, oh, shut up to both of you. Whining like a couple of babies. I left word for this red rider to stay away. Told her old man to tell him there'd be trouble if he or anybody else tried to butt into my business. And I meant it. That's why you got that shotgun tied up there in the cave with a string going to the trigger? That's the idea. Yeah. But if anybody goes into the cave and hits the string, the gun will shoot the gal, not them. Yeah. What good's that going to do? Plenty. It'll teach these yokels around here that when Scarface Davis says lay off, he means it. I told him not to try and get that girl back till Hanlon was out of jail. And I meant just that. Hey, listen. I don't hear nothing. Yeah, up on that ledge there. I saw one of those bushes move. Whoever it is is going to get blowed wide open. Wait, wait. Don't shoot. I smell it. Here. Suffering cats don't shoot. I smell it, too. Smell what? Have you guys gone crazy? No, I ain't crazy. It's a skunk. Sure. Don't you smell it? Yeah. Yeah, I smell it now. Sure. Yeah. It's a good thing you didn't shoot it. Yeah, it would have fallen right down here on our bedrolls. When it comes to skunks, don't mess with them. Mighty near as powerful dead as they are alive. Yeah, it must have gone now. The bushes have stopped moving. Yeah. Hope it don't go into the cave. Yeah. 
What's that? <laughs> ain't nothing but an old coyote. Hey, what's that? That ain't nothing but some little old rocks rolled down on the side of the gully. Hey, get your guns. I'm going up there and investigate. You go messing around in them bushes, and you're going to meet up with that skunk. Sure, there's nobody up there. Only the skunk digging up bugs. And dislodge some rocks. You better look this way and keep your hands off those guns. Huh? It's Red Ryder. Yeah, the famous fighting cowboy, huh? You'll be Davis, I reckon. And you'll be a fool, I reckon. You have the chance, Ryder. There's three of us. And there's 12 bullets in my two guns. 12 goes into three four times in this kind of arithmetic. Oh, yeah? You ain't talking to one of these local hicks now, Ryder. I see you agent around behind me, Monk. Stand still I'm or... I'm standing. I'm dropping my guns. I'm not telling you again, Jeff. Okay, Ryder. I don't want no trouble. Come on, Jeff, drop him. I'll drop you. Fight. you. Try to pick up those guns, Davis, and my next two bullets are going to hit your shoulders instead of your guns. Now, Monk, pick up all those guns and throw them into the bushes, down the hill. All right. Pick them up by the barrels. Go on, throw them. Well, that's as far as I can throw them. All right, Davis. Where's Miss Bruce? Well, you'll never see her unless you turn around and get out of here and fast. A fish usually convinces your kind better than a gun. Now, where is she? Why, you dirty... All right, come on, Davis. Get up. We're just starting. Get him, Monk. Oh, you did manage to get behind me, huh? Oh, come on, Jeff. Get him. I'm a... no. Kind of soft, aren't you, Jeff? Yeah, this rock ain't soft right Neither now. Neither is my fist. Uh... Come on, Davis. Get up. Both of your friends are taking a long nap, but you're still awake. Yeah, it'll take more than you to put me to... Uh... All right, little beaver. They're all asleep. Come on down. Little beaver, where are you? Little Beefy, are, are you there in the cave? Jane? It's as dark as a coal mine in here. Red Raider, stop me. I'm coming, Little Beaver. What? Red Raider, Red Raider, you hear them string. Make them shoot gun. A gun trap. Jane, where is she? Jane? No can talk. Got them gag tied on face. Where? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on you, Jane. Here, let me get that thing off you. There. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I think so. You're not. You're hurt. No, I'm not hurt. You just knocked the wind out when you stumbled over me. Little Beaver crawled in and untied my hands and was trying to drag me out. Sure. We drag them low on ground so gunshots no hit him. Here, take my arm, Jim. All right. It's rough going in here. You step up here. Mm-hmm. There's a boulder. Now, around this side, there. Oh, I can see the entrance ahead. Me lead him way. Outside them cave now. Oh, look at those stars. I don't think I ever really appreciated them before. Look, Red Rider. That man's get him up. Run away. I see him, little beaver. Let him go for now. I'll settle with them later. Can you walk all right, Jane? Oh, I'm all right. Just a little nervous. You <laughs> wouldn't be in that dark cave and all. Well... I know it sounds funny, but I wasn't really frightened until the skunk came in the cave. Skunk? Yes, just a few seconds before Little Beaver. I uh, couldn't see it, but I didn't have to. And tied there in the dark, knowing that awful animal was coming closer and closer. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny. I can still remember. That no skunk um, That me. That's huh? right, Jane. Little Beaver had a fight with a skunk today. <laughs> oh, good gracious. No more fight him with more skunk. Skunk him too strong medicine. That's a fine idea, little partner. Well, here we are at the horses. Thunder, you'll have to carry a double load tonight. Me ride him with you, Red Rider. Let him her ride him pony. Nope. You ride Papoose. Why me not ride him with you? Two reasons. The first one is that when we get out on the main road, I'm taking Miss Jane to the ranch for hot food and some rest. And I want you to ride into Millersville and tell her father he won't have to take that midnight stage. That Jane is safe at Painted Valley with the Duchess. Me do, um. What other reason? Yes, what's the other reason, Red? Well, you didn't have a fight with a skunk today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thunder. Hit that trail. Come on, Thunder!
back again toward Painted Valley goes Red Rider. But his stay with the Duchess is not destined to last. For only a day ahead lies another adventure. What will it be? Listen for the next exciting episode of Red Rider. Rider comes to you each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday over these same stations. Tune in again on Thursday at 7.30. Red Rider is presented for your enjoyment by Langendorf, makers of the bread judged America's finest. For goodness sake, get a loaf of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread at your grocer's tomorrow. Health defense is an important part of our national defense program. Physical and mental fitness enables us to do our bit and helps keep morale high. Every one of us can help our fighting forces fight harder by enlisting for civilian defense, Red Cross, USO, and other important activities. We can help equip our Army, Navy, and Air Force and save for our own future needs by investing in defense bonds and stamps. Yes, keep physically fit and do your bit. Langendorf bread containing dextrose for extra energy plus vitamins, minerals, proteins, and carbohydrates will help keep your energy up during the trying days ahead. Red Rider came to you from Hollywood. This is the Blue Network. From out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Draw that pony, little beaver. The Indians are on the warpath up around the Bonanza Mines. There's no time to lose. Hit the trail. You fix him, Red Rider. Get along. Get him up. Get Come on, Thunder. Ride on, cowboy. The Adventures of Red Rider. Returning victorious from his recent encounter with the warring factions of the range country, rides in a light-hearted mood today, accompanied by his faithful and solemn-faced companion, Little Beaver. We find them astride Thunder and Papoose, winding their way through the desert buttes and mesas, headed for the little trading post at Shoshone. As they are entering the settlement... Where we come trading post, Red Rider? Looking for man? No, Little Beaver, this time I'm looking for a woman. Ah, squad trouble waste time. What you mean, woman? I mean a nice, pretty gal to take to a dance. Don't you remember when we stopped up at the Elk Ranch, the cowboys were telling us about the shindig here at the trading post? Uh, me member. Say, there's a poster for the dance over there now. See? Pioneer Bull, bring your best gal. Fun for all tonight at the trading post. Hmm. You know God, I'm best gal. Hey. What you see, a red rider? Look who just got off his horse at the Wagon Wheel Cafe. Hmm. Here, Mace Hanley. Always him make him trouble. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, that broadcloth gent he's going inside with is old Mortimer Grant, the boss of this territory. That old robber's always out to steal something big. Now you know catch him best gal, huh, Red Rider? Maybe you catch a Mace Hanley and big boss man, huh? Maybe. Whenever those two get together, there's pretty apt to be trouble. I can't let this chance slip. Uh-huh. Good. Listen, little beaver. You're going to the reservation for me and invite Mary Morrison to the dance. We better stay trading post with you. Now, you wouldn't let a pal down, would you? Tell Mary I was too busy to ride up myself. Go on now, and uh, don't forget to tell her how anxious I am to see her. You understand? Uh, maybe understand. Look, uh, how would you talk to a little Indian girl you liked? Huh. Me talk squad this way. You gather wood, you cook food, you build teepee, you know dance, me dance. Oh, 
gosh, no, little Beaver. Don't put it that way or you'll spoil everything. Just ask her if she'll go to the dance with me tonight and bring me the answer. All right, get along now. I've business to attend to with Ace Hanlon and old man Grant. He go. Too bad. Miss Fight. Giddy up, Papoose. We can talk better in there. Okay. Well, Grant, you got the stuff for us? You'll find the boxes waiting for you at the freighting office. They're labeled tools and groceries. What do I get for selling the rifles to the engines? You get all the cash from the sale. It ought to be a pretty tidy sum, Ace. I mean cash on the line, Grant. Now, look here, Ace. Use your head. You think I'd associate you with my enterprises if I didn't mean to reward you in a more uh, substantial form than mere money? Yeah. Money talks loudest with me. You forget my influence, what I can do for you. I don't forget that I'm running all the risks. You'll have to raise the ante if you want me to do the job. Well, the truth is, Ace, I want those rich gold claims at the Bonanza. If you can stir up the Indians so they'll run the miners off those claims, I'll count you in on the new ownership. Cut it a little finer, Grant. You mean jump claims? You put it very crudely, Helen. If the miners abandon their claims, they will, of course, be open to new filings. Hmm. All right. That suits me. We'll do the filing and take you in as a partner. <laughs> You're stretching it a little. I'm still the boss around here. I'll get going. Get those redskins started. All right, all right. But if... I hold it. Can't you hear that door move? It does seem to be open a crack. It ain't going to be healthy for anybody that's been eavesdropping. <laughs> well... So it's my old friend, Red Ryder. What do you mean, Ryder, snooping on me like this? Talk fast. You sort of act as though you had a guilty conscience, eh? Why, you... Oh. You're mighty good on the draw, Ace, but not fast enough. Now, consider yourself lucky I nipped your gun instead of you. What's the idea, anyway? Mean I got a right to come into town for supplies without you gunning for me? Sure. Get your supplies and get out. On general principles, I figure honest folks aren't safe when you're roaming around. Why? Now do what I say. Get your supplies and get out. Oh, oh, Papoose. Well, hello there, little beaver. What brings you to the reservation today? Oh, Miss Mary. Got a message from Red Rider. Oh, you have? Well, how is your pal Red Rider these days? Him busy. You bet him you like him come see you, huh? Why, well, of course, I'm always glad to see Mr. Ryder. Him no come. No time for girls. So me bring a message. For, for me? Yeah. Uh, him want you come dance in my trading post tonight. Oh. Well, if Mr. Ryder has no time to come and ask me himself, the answer is no. Ah, uh, that good. Me tell him. No, no, wait a minute, little beaver. Uh, what else did he say? Him say him too busy to come right now. Say you pretty girl. Want see you very much. You bet him. He, he really said that? Uh, well, that's different. Uh, wait here, little beaver. I'll write my answer in a note. He might get the message all mixed up. Mm, squat trouble. No good. <laughs> Say, that fire water we sold them engines sure did the work, Ace. <laughs> Nothing like firearms and fire water to make them hit the war path. Uh, how much did we clean up on them rifles we sold the Paiutes, Ace? Plenty. But that's only a starter. We'll rake in a wagon load of gold if the engines do what we told them and drive the miners out of Bonanza camp. We'd better get going so we can file on them claims as soon as the Redskins clear the way. Yeah, Buzzard. Nothing more we can... Hey, what's, what's the matter, Ace? Who's this riding up? Why... Well, that's Morrison, the Indian agent. Yeah, that's what I thought. He's yeah. looking for us, I reckon. Some of those engines must have told him. We that... better let him have it, please. No, no, wait a minute. He can't prove anything on us. We've just been trailing horses that strayed on the reservation. Have we? All right. Keep your hands off your guns, all of you. I've got you covered. Well, so it's you, Ace Hanlon. It's you that sold guns and whiskey to the Indians. After all I've done, 
You create trouble, tell them lies, and start them on the warpath. Why, you're barking up the wrong tree, Mr. Agent. Sure. We were just looking for some stray stock when we almost ran smack into them red devils. No need to lie about it, Ace. One of the Indians told me. And I saw you selling the stuff from up on the ridge there. You're under arrest, all three of you. Drop your guns. Wait, wait. Ah, hey. uh, one eye, you're too handy with your trigger. He's got him, though. He's still hanging on his horse. Look. He won't for long. Come on, boys. Can't worry about Morrison now. We're heading for the Bonanza pronto. This note to Red Ryder. Uh, take him. And don't tell him I said no when I mean yes. Uh, me tell him. <laughs> That's good. Listen. Do you hear war drums? Me hear them. No good. There, there are shots, too. Oh, I wish Dad would come back. Where he go? He's trailing some men. We're trying to start trouble. Listen. The, the drums are getting louder. She went a muck no let bridge go and war path. She, he friend to white man. But Winnemucca isn't here. He's up at the hot springs. When he come back, he fits. You betcha him. Look him. Why, why it's dead. He almost he fell on my horse. Oh, little beaver. Oh, oh, Dad, Dad, what happened? What? Uh, Ace Hanlon selling guns on the reservation. Oh. Shot me. Indians on warpath. Can't stop them. Uh, uh, little Beaver, hitch up the wagon quick. The nearest doctor's at Bonanza, and I'll take Dad there. No, get him through to Bonanza. Bad Indian crazy. They kill you. Wait in here. I get him, Red Rider. I can't wait, Little Beaver. Dad may die. I've got to get him to a doctor at once. Willow Bark, Red Cloud. Here, help me lift Dad. Hurry. You go get him, Red Rider, quick. You wait. He come. I'd find Red Rider here at the trading post. Hey, back there, pitching horseshoes, partner. Oh, oh, yeah. Thanks. You're a good shot, Red. I'm pretty good at it, boys, I have to admit. Hey, Red! Why, hello, Weezy. Where'd you come from? Nah, Red. You know darn well I come from Painted Valley Ranch. It's on the country ranch. Duchess has uh, done a powerful lot of worrying about you, Red. Think it's about time you was coming home. I can't come right now, Weezy. I just had a run-in with Ace Hanlon. Whenever he's around, I always expect trouble. Well, shucks. You can always find trouble without looking for it. Besides, you've got to help with the roundup. And besides that again, remember, now, the Duchess ain't as young as she was. She needs you, Red. Maybe you're right, Weezer. But I sure would like to find out what Ace Hanlon's up to before I go. A top straw boss like you can run the roundup. i got to keep my eye on Hanlon. But gosh, Red, Still I... Still and all, I, uh, I might go back to Painted Valley after the dance tonight. Oh, well, shucks. You ain't gonna go to new dance, are you, are you, Red? You ain't got no gal. Well, I will have if Little Beaver brings me the right answer. Well, speak of angels, here he comes now. He sure looks excited, too. Red Rider! What's the matter, Little Beaver? Red Rider, come quick. Ace Hanlon sell them guns to bad Indians and shoot Mr. Morrison. Miss Mary tried to take him to Dr. Bonanza. Graves on warpath. Maybe you're Jumping hurt him. crickets. I should have guessed these supplies of Ace Hanlon's were firearms. That means, Little Beaver, that the three Indian villages between here and Bonanza will cut loose. Cut them loose already. We've got to warn the Bonanza miners and save Mary and her dad on the way. We'll have a tough time getting through. Chief Winnemucca, give him much medicine stick. Then can go through. Miss Mary say Winnemucca at Hot Springs. Then let's get going. We'll find the chief and get his medicine stick pronto. Well, hey, hey, wait a minute, Red. The Duchess will skin me if you don't come back. Weezer, you stay right here and pitch horseshoes. I'll be back before you make a hundred ringers. All right, let's go, little beaver. All right, Thunder, hit that trail. Come on, Thunder. <laughs> Return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. Red Rider, having a 
appeal to his old friend Chief Winnemucker, Chief of the Paiutes, has received from him the magic password used by Indians at wartime. It is called a medicine stick and consists of a ceremonial willow twig on which are three colored beads. In order to pass safely through the three hostile villages of the Warpath Indians, Red must show the medicine stick to them. The first white bead will pass him through the warriors of the Antelope Clan. The second red bead will get him past the Bear Clan. And the final black bead will give him safe passage through the Wolf Clan. Now Red on Thunder and Little Beaver on his pinto papoose are racing across country to try and head off Mary and her father. Come on, Thunder. Get the papoose. We've passed the reservation, Little Beaver. Now by taking a shortcut, we can overtake Mary with a wagon. Right up fast. Indian catch a wagon, maybe. We hope to get there first. If... Hey. You see him too, huh? Indians ahead. Yes, we'll have to deal with them before we can go any farther. Him by youths. Antelope plan. Yes, and they seen us coming. Easy, Thunder. They're not going to be friendly. Looks like we're in for a fight. But right if good a medicine stick, you give a might be for antelope plant. Little Beaver, you're right. For a minute, I forgot all about Winnemucca's medicine stick. Let's see if it works. You signal to them in sign language that we're friendly before they riddle us. Huh. They do them. Well, at least they've stopped those whoops. Say, what's that buck saying with his hands, Little Beaver? Wait him. He say... We got medicine stick, we live. No got medicine stick, we die. Well, we've got the medicine stick, all right. Give him the signal to step up and collect our ticket. Uh, we do. How, oh, Chief? We friend of Indian. You got a medicine stick? Yes, here it is. And there's the white bead for your antelope clan. Good. Me get him white bead. You keep them scalp. Hmm. You know, how's it up? Well, little beaver, the medicine stick worked like a charm that time, seeing our scalps are on straight. We've got no time to waste. Come on, Thunder. Time he used to worry about a lame horse. Yeah, Mayor's lame, all right. Wait a minute. I'll hammer the shoe back with a rock. Yeah, but it won't help much. Hey, wait. What's that wagon down the road there? Whoever's yeah. driving that wagon's in a heap of a hurry. That's the agency wagon. I'm curious to know who the driver is and why he's in such a hurry. We can't afford to have no warning reach Bunnings ahead of us, can we? You're doggone right, we can't. Buzzard, you and one eye, get down there and find out where he's going. Yeah. Sorry. And remember, dead men tell no tales. Shut up! Hey, woman driving one eye. Hey, it don't look like there's no man with it. Yeah, I see you. Pull up there! Hey, pull up! Where are you going? Where are you going, this? There's engines on the warpath. We'll get you. Oh! Oh, I'm so glad to see white men. On account of the Indians, I, I'm hurrying to friends at Pine Valley. Do you think I'll get through? Well, it's kind of risky, but if you got grit, you might do it. Say, you ain't got a man in the wagon with you, have you? Oh, no, of course not. I only wish I had. I'm all alone. Uh, but uh, if you don't mind, I, I'd better hurry or I'll, I'll get caught by the Indians for sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, miss. You get going. Uh, yes, yeah, Molly. Yes, yeah. Come on, Buzzer. You just drop the Paiutes a tip about that wagon. Come on, Thunder. Giddy up, Papoose. When we get to the top of the ridge, little beaver, we can see where the wagon road crosses the desert. Papoose, he tired. Ride him long way. Very fast. You're tired, too, aren't you, Thunder? It was that steep grade. They'll be all right when they get their second wind. Well, here we are. Now, use your eyes and look for signs of the wagon, little beaver. Me see a dust cloud over there. Look. Yes, you're right. It's Mary's wagon. And say, what's that other dust cloud on the slope of the mesa? Engines. I'll say so. A flock of them. They're shooting at the wagon. Come on, little beaver. We've got a hard ride if we're going to save them. Come on, Thunder. Dad, 
It's that way. Look. Here. It is. What's the matter? in between the Indians and the wagon. Look at Red Rider. One inch in the head. He heard of his theory. If you don't shoot quick. I'll have to wing him. You ride toward the main band and whip that medicine stick if you can. Oh, you wing him. Good. Hit your hit ground hard. Make him cheat run. Get going and whip that medicine stick. I'm heading for the wagon. Be welcome. Red Rider. Are you all right? Fred, I was praying you'd come and you didn't. I wasn't much too soon, I reckon. How'd your father stand it? He had a pretty wild ride for a wounded man. Uh, well, Mr. Morrison, how you feeling? Never better. I guess I'll sit up. Dad, please, you're oh. wrong. Oh. You fix a bear clan, Red Rider. Good, little people. Now, Mary, don't be alarmed. Your father's pulse and heart are good. But you've got to hurry to the doctor at Bonanza. Oh, you've got to come with us, Red Rider. I couldn't face it again alone. There's no need for that. Here's greater protection than I can give you, Mary. What is it? Just a stick with a black bead on it. That's a mighty powerful stick, Mary. That insignificant little black bead stands for the difference between life and death. Him medicine stick. Me just give red bead to bear clan. This black bead, he for wolf clan. Him next. Oh, it seems unbelievable. But I notice the Indians have completely vanished. Well, I guess that's proof enough. Mary, you must hurry with your father. The medicine stick will see you through safely to Bonanza. I've got to ride the shortcut to warn the miners. But, Red Rider, this medicine stick is your protection. I couldn't accept it and know you might be killed on my account. Your father's life is in your hands. He's helpless. Now, don't worry about me. So long, Mary. Keep your chin up. See you in Bonanza. If you must go, I've got to warn you of another danger. What is it, Mary? I saw East Hammond and one of his men who shot my father. You did? Where? They stopped our wagon a ways back. If they'd known father was under a, wa- under a blanket in the wagon, something terrible would have happened to him. East Hammond started this uprising. Which way did he ride? On the trail that crosses the North Ridge. His horse was limping. You might catch him, but you will be careful, won't you, Red Rider? Yes, of course I'll be careful. But I'll get Hanlon. Wait a minute, little bit. Drums or no drums? I've hit Ace Hanlon's trail, and I'm sticking to it. Water hole down in Gulch. Me see him horses... White men hiding behind rocks. There's one of them standing up. It's Ace Hanlon. Engine's close, Red Rider. We see him now. Look, Paiutes. And what's more, they see us. I'm not going to give up Ace Hanlon if there's a whole tribe of Paiutes. Little Beaver, you've got to get through to Bonanza and warn the miners. You know fighting minions alone, Red Rider. They kill him, you. I'm not going to fight him alone. I'm going to make Ace Hanlon help me fight him. Now, little beaver, you get as fast as you can and don't stop till you get to Bonanza. Me get. Get your hands up, Ace. Uh, Higher. And you two reach. Red Rider, you're just the sort of hombre who would pick on white men at a time like this. Do a thing, Rider. Here we're getting set to fight our own lives against the Indians. And you throw down on us with your gun. That's exactly what I wouldn't be sure of. That you're going to fight Indians. I don't like the way you said that, Ryder. He's right, Ace. Old old quarrels aside. Me and him be in the same boat. No time to argue, boys. Here they come. No, you don't, Ace. The place of honor in front belongs to you. What's the matter? Don't you trust us? Seeing as how you sold the guns to these Indians, I don't trust you, no. Well, they laugh sure on us. And to be shot at with their own rifles. Shut up, you fool. Huh. I'm fighting because it uh, seems I ain't got much choice. But if we get out of here alive, I'll make you pay for this, Red Rider. That is, if you don't shoot me in the back first. I won't shoot you in the back, Ace, as long as you do your shooting in front at the Indians. All right, get ready. Here they come. Remember what good rifles you sold them to us, and you'll fight harder. Let them have it. Bullet count, boys. Roger, you're shooting too low. Here, well, I got that one. Oh, oh, fuck. Being shot by your own rifles. It only creases your thick skull. Now get busy and keep your gun going. Whoopee! I got the red devil to hit me. It's your turn better shoot than I thought you would. It's your hard luck, Ryder. I'm saving one bullet for you. Give him another volley, boys. Make him think there's a hundred of us. Hold, hold it, 
all of you. They're riding off. We've turned them away. They've had enough. Doggone, we licked them. All right, relax, boys. The Redskins have given up the fight. Oh, gosh, I've still got my scalp, even if that bullet did take away a few hairs. Well, congratulations, boys. That's the first honest fight you ever won. Well, a red rider, that ought to make us quit. Oh, no, it don't. I'm going to take the three of you to the commissioner to stand trial for this whole uprising. But uh, when I jump him now, then follow me. Hey, uh, hey rider, don't hit me again. I'm, I'm hitting the... Well, your ornery partner Ace got away, but I'll land him yet. Now, you two are going to the commissioner with me. Come on. I'm so happy we got to Bonanza in time to save your life, Dad. The doctor said a few more minutes and you wouldn't have a chance. We can thank Red Ryder for that. Well, I'm glad you're safe. I'm sure happy to see you looking a heap better, Mr. Morrison. The miners have herded the Redskins back to the reservation to sleep it off. Now, if you'll be so kind, Mr. Morrison, as to identify these two men, I'm uh, most regretful to say that Ace Hanlon got away. Yes, I caught Ace Hanlon and these two men selling guns and firewater to the Indians. The one called Buzzard shot me. That's fine, Mr. Morrison. You can bet these two will get what's coming to them. All right, Sheriff, lock them up. How can I ever thank you for saving our lives, Red Rider? Oh, that's all right, Mary. What's worrying me is how we're going to get to that dance. <laughs> and doggone, I just remember little Beaver never did give me your answer. <laughs> was it yes? The answer was yes, but next time don't send little Beaver as your messenger. I don't think he likes girls. <laughs> Do you, little Beaver? Red Rider got him no time girls. He got him big job. Catch a mace handling. No, little Beaver. First I've got to pick up Weezer and go home to see the Duchess. I'll be seeing you again, Mary. And the next dance, we'll try to make it on time. has completed this adventure with Ace Hanlon and the Paiutes, he is destined to discover that new trouble has broken out in the gold mining valley of Bullion Bend. Will he again put himself in peril of a gang of crooks and robbers? For the answer, listen to the next exciting episode of Red Rider. <laughs> This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the Blue Network.
out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Oh, that pony, little bee, but there's trouble ahead at Bullion Bend, and we've got to be there to stop it. You bet you, Red Rider. Get along. Get him up. Get Come on, Thunder. Ride on, cowboy. The Adventures of Red Rider. Red Rider and Little Beaver completing their exciting adventure with Ace Hanlon and the Paiute Indian. Now we find the cowboy and his little Indian companion riding leisurely into what is a new country for them, the rich gold mining valley of Bullion Bend. In the West, wherever there are shipments of gold, there are usually to be found lurking bands of outlaws. At any moment, these bandits may be expected to spring from the shadows of the mesquite brush and shout that frightening cry, Hands up! Throw down the express box! Red Rider and Little Beaver approach Bullion Bend by the High Ridge Trail. From here, they can look down into the valley through which runs the stage road. Cheer up, Little Beaver. We're almost there. That must be Bullion Bend. See that clump of shacks down at the foot of the valley? Uh, see them. I think I'm going to like Bullion Bend, Little Beaver. Me like them better when we eat. Me hungry. Hey, there comes the stagecoach. I reckon she's loaded with gold dust. Sure is pretty, that Concord coach rolling behind our six horses. Me see him stagecoach. See him white men riding behind trees, too. Look, Red Rider. Gosh, but your eyes are sharp. Yes, I see them now. Say, what's going on down there? Those hombres have dismounted and they're getting out their rifles. Little Beaver looks to me as if they're aiming to hold up that stage. You're too far away to stop hold up. Too bad. We've got to try to help him. We no got him wings. No can fly cross canyon. It is a holdup, sure enough. They've just shot the driver, but one of the bandits is down, too. Look, the horses are running wild. Our only chance to head off that runaway is to ride straight down the barranca. Come on, little beaver, over the bank we go. Come on, Thunder. Get him up, you fool. Don't you first. Got wings. Where are you, little beaver? Are you hurt? Me, all right. First stumble. Me skin him, no. Come on, then, hurry. There's a girl hanging onto the reins. I'll ride alongside till I can swing aboard. Catch them as I jump. Here we go. Watch out for the wheels. Come on, Thunder. Hang on, Miss. Jam on your brakes. Wait. There, I'm up with you, Miss. All right, give me the rain. Oh, hold oh, there. Steady, boys. Not easy now. All right, steady there. Oh. Yeah, that's better. Are you hurt, Miss? Oh, all right. As soon as I get my breath, I'll thank you for saving my life, sister. Red Rider's the name, ma'am. I'm Rita Bassett, and I do thank you a thousand times. No thanks necessary, ma'am. Let's take a look at your driver here. You hurt much, partner? I uh, got into the shoulder. That's how I happened to drop the reins. But uh, I hit one of them bandits first. You sure did. I saw him slump in the saddle as they rode off. Here, let me help you inside the coach. I'll drive the stage in. Thanks. Uh, I'll be all right in there. You catch him, Thunder. Miss Bassett, this is my pal, Little Beaver. I'm glad to know you, Little Beaver. Well, come, come, Little Beaver. Where's your manners? What do you say to the lady? Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> little Beaver, you lead Thunder. I'll drive the stage to Bullion Bend and you tag along behind. Hi there. Get in. Boys, 
Help Miss Bassett down, please. And tell me if you get the driver out of the coach. He's hurt. You better get him to a doctor. Well, what happened? Where were you? Well, Mr. Ryder, I want you to meet my brother. We were held up, John, and he saved us. Well, I'm deeply indebted to you, Mr. Ryder. The pleasure's all mine, Mr. Bassett. Sorry we weren't in time to save your driver from being shot. But the outlaws didn't get the express box. Uh, if you could spare the time, Mr. Ryder, I'd like to have you step in the stage office here. Be glad to. A little beaver, you tie up the horses at the hitching rack and wait for me. Ah, me watch him, horses. Uh, this way, Mr. Ryder. <laughs> I can speak more freely inside here, Mr. Ryder. I have my suspicions that the road agents have spotters in town to keep them posted about the gold shipment. Suspect anybody in particular? Well, uh... we both have the feeling that every day we're rubbing shoulders with the unknown person who's doing so much to ruin our stage line. Uh-huh. Sounds like there's more to it than just ordinary holdups. Well, that's what we've been thinking. You see, someone has much to gain from our failure. We've suffered so many losses that we've been warned that one more such loss and we'll forfeit the franchise to haul the gold for Bullion Bend. And to make matters more critical, the next shipment is the big spring cleanup from the mines. It'll amount to $150,000 in bullion and gold dust at least. Quite a nest egg. When does this big shipment leave? Tomorrow night's stage, at 12 o'clock sharp. I'd sure hate to see you lose that franchise, not to speak of the gold. Maybe I could help you. Uh, what's your suggestion? Well, for one thing, I might ride shotgun guard on the stage that carries that shipment. Oh, excuse me a minute, please. Now, what's the trouble, little beaver? I told you to watch the horses. Me see a mace hand and go in store across way. He talk a man with one iron hand. You mean a man with an iron hook for a hand? Sure. We'll have to look into this. Wait, little beaver. I'll be right with you. I'm sorry, folks, but some business has come up I've got to attend to right away. Oh, but have you given up the thought of working for us, a shotgun guard? Can't say just now. That sort of depends. See you later about it. Excuse me if I seem in a hurry. Maybe we've been too hasty in disclosing such valuable information. After all, Rita, we don't know anything about this Red Rider. I've seen enough of him to trust him implicitly. Uh, perhaps what you're trusting is six foot one and that red hair. This sure is peculiar, little beaver. The sign on the shebang where Ace Hanlon vanished says Harry Gilligan a sayer. Gilligan must be the gent with the iron hook. What you mean a sayer? Well, he's sort of the miner's medicine man who makes chemical tests of gold ore. Seems now like there might be an interesting connection between test and gold and stealing it. Wait, wait, quiet, I hear voices. Here's an open side window. Knock your head, little people, and listen. We had bad luck with that stage today. Which is up in the cabin with the driver. We're going to stick up that stage tomorrow night. How are we going to do it? Before I lost my hand, uh, I could have handled it myself easy. Now with an iron hook from our right, I'm just a brain. I, I've got to have a gunman for a body. With Butch done up, I'm helpless. I've got just the hombre for you. They call him Deadwood Dick over on the West Fork. Yeah? He's not known around these parts. Now you go to the captain and tell the boys to get ready. I'll send Deadwood to you tonight over the West Fork Trail. Well, that sounds good. I'll be waiting for him. What we do now, Red Rider? We're heading for the West Fork Trail. You catch him, Deadwood, Doc? You bet. I'm going to see that Deadwood never arrives at the outlaw cabin. I'm going in his place. <laughs> Easy, Thunder. Take it easy, little beaver. This is the West Fork Trail. Deadwood Dick can't pass us without our seeing him first. We put him near the ground and listen. Hear anything? We hear him horse come down trail. You're right. I can hear it now, too. Get behind this tree, little beaver. There he is. I can see him in the moonlight. Thank you, Ace. All clear, Deadwood. Come along. And don't touch your gun if you want to stay healthy. Ow! Sorry, I'm in the habit of being obeyed. Now drop that gun. Slide out of your saddle and keep your hands up. Now, march straight to that tree. Hey, who in the tarnation are you? Red Rider's the name. All right, first I'll take your hat and coat. 
And all you got to do is stand up against that tree. Now, the hands are crossed behind the tree. Tie his wrists together, little beaver, and make sure they're not. You do them. Here, what you aiming to do with me? Keep you out of trouble? I reckon you've been in enough already to hang you. Now, little beaver, here's my spear gun. If Mr. Deadwood makes any false moves, you make him as good as his name, understand? Me savvy. I won't be long, little beaver. Now, don't blink an eye. I'm heading for the outlaw cabin. All right, Thunder. Hit that trail. Come on, Thunder. I'm looking at... Uh... Edward Dick. Are you Hook Gilligan? Right you are. Meet Butch Calkins. Butch is Ace's right-hand man, but he's been temporarily sidetracked by a lead plum. All right, let's get down to business. I deal out of my own terms. When I cash this spring cleanup, you'll all talk turkey with me. What's your plans, Deadwood? How many men have you got? Well, we're short-handed. It's just Jake and Shorty. They're out tending the horses. Why you leave yourself out, Gilligan? Uh, that's why to you, Deadwood. You're forgetting my iron hook. On account of that, uh, I never carry a gun no more. I'm the brains and you're the body. Together we make the man that cinches this big deal. You land that gold shipment tonight and I'll do my part and grab Bassett's franchise. Have your men at Devil's Gate on time. They won't have to do any shooting. I'll attend to that. Yeah, it sounds easy, but how? Well, when the stage pulls out a bullion bend, I'll be on it. At Devil's Gate, all I got to do is tell the driver where to stop. You'll stop, all right. Well, now I know why they call you Deadwood Dick. Well, little Beaver, what are you doing tied up to that tree? Where's Deadwood Dick? He work him smart trick. He want him drink. Me give him. He get him gun. Uh-oh. Well, it's not your fault, little Beaver. I shouldn't have given such a big job to such a little fella. Me no little feller. Me just blink a mind. With Deadwood loose, they'll go after that spring cleanup, sure. We've got to move fast. I'm going to be on that stage and stop that holdup. Come on, little beaver. Come on, Thunder. Return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. and Little Beaver riding full speed for Bullion Bend, the real Deadwood Dick unexpectedly shows up at the outlaw cabin to the great astonishment of Hook Gilligan and Butch. Hook is congratulating himself on their good fortune. Well, Butch, between me and Deadwood, that $150,000 is as good as in our hands. <laughs> oh, that Deadwood sure is smart. Yeah, well, you're banking on him because I was euchred out of my last old up. Hey, but maybe you're counting your chickens for their hatch. Oh, no, I ain't. I couldn't be fooled on Deadwood Dick. Look out, Hook. Might be the sheriff. Who's there? What do you want? It's Deadwood Dick. Let me in. Deadwood Dick. What in tarnation is he doing back here? Who are you? You ain't Deadwood Dick. Of course I'm Deadwood Dick. Hey, Sandlin sent me here. Get that door. Don't stare at me like a fool. Oh, you can't be Deadwood Dick. Because I was talking to him just a few minutes ago. Why, he, he just left here for Bullion Bend. What are you up to, stranger? Ah, you dumb head. The man you was talking to was running a bluff. I don't know what his game is, but he used Ace's name to get the drop on me. Tied me to a tree. Took my hat and coat. Uh, had on a black hat and a buckskin coat, didn't he? Oh, well, well, yeah, sure. He, he did have on a black hat and a buckskin coat, but I can't get this straight. 
Who's that feller? What on earth's he up to? Eh, calls himself Red Rider. Got an Indian kid with him named Little Beaver. Red Rider? See, whoops. Don't you remember he's saying Red Rider was the lobo who's always on his trail? Well, don't stand there chewing the rag. I'm here to pull that hold up tonight for my split. What are you going to do about it? Yes, Hook, what are you going to do about it? You're the brains. Yeah, now, look here. You said this coyote took you. Did you have anything in your coat that would identify it as yours, Deadwood? Ah, well, sure. That's what makes me so all fired burned up. That Red Rider got away with ten golden eagles I had sewed in the lining of my coat. Good. Anything else? Yeah, nothing to care much about, except in a file and a hacksaw blade for sawing jail bars, just in case. Well, that settles Red Rider's hash. That coats are going to hang him. Going over to buy my ticket on the stage. If you see, I get aboard with it without any trouble. You stay here in town till I come back. We go on with you. No, if I get in a tight fix, I'll need you here. I'll whistle if I want you. You whistle. Me answer him with Hoot Owl's call. That's right. Well, and am I the cowboy in your song, Miss Rita? Oh, it's you, Mr. Ryder. Well, if you weren't in my song, you deserve to be. I haven't forgotten how you stopped the stage. Speaking of stages, Miss Rita, I want to buy a ticket. If I remember correctly, it leaves at midnight. Oh. Well, I'm sorry you're leaving. Where to, please? West Fork. That's the Devil's Gate route, isn't it? Correct. I, uh, I said I was sorry you were leaving us. Oh, I reckon I'll be back. There's your ticket and your change. I'm disappointed you aren't riding guard for us. The gold shipment goes on the 12 o'clock stage, you remember. I haven't forgotten the gold, Miss Rita. Get your hands up, Deadwood. And don't turn around till I tell you to. Now, Gilligan, get his gun out and help keep him covered. If that's my friend Gilligan, he never uses a gun. What's the meaning of this, Sheriff? This is Red Rider. Oh, no, it ain't. It's Deadwood Dick. You hear him say he hadn't forgotten the gold. You'll soon learn why he ain't. Now, keep him up, Deadwood, and turn around. We'll have a look at your face. That's Deadwood Dick, all right. That's the man who robbed me. I don't believe it. Sheriff, this is ridiculous. Yes, the clever blind of his, Miss Bassett. Deadwood Dick plays for high stakes. <laughs> don't you? Maybe I do. But if Mr. Gilligan is so sure I robbed him, how's he going to prove it? You'll find out. Bring your brother, Miss Reader, and come over to my office. I want you both there when I question Deadwood Dick. Deadwood, sit in that chair. Keep him covered, Gilligan. You're wasting your breath on Gilligan, Sheriff. He can't even fire a gun. Come in, John. You, Miss Reader. You'll be interested in this hombre, Deadwood Dick. Well, you mean Red Rider, Sheriff. I agree with my sister. You've made a mistake about him. You just listen and see if I have. Now, Miss Bassett, I'll begin with you. You just sold this man a ticket on the stage that's carrying the gold shipment tonight, didn't you? Yes, I did. Did he know the gold shipment would be on the stage? Well, I suppose he did. What of it? Well, I'll have to admit that Ryder not alone uh, knew of the shipment, but he suggested that he ride his guard on the stage. Not that that means anything. It means just this. This man is a notorious outlaw, Deadwood Dick, and he's imposed on you with the sole object of being on the stage tonight in order to rob it. Suppose you prove first that I am Deadwood Dick. All right. Is that your coat you're wearing? Can't exactly say it is. I borrowed it. Oh, you borrowed it, did you? Well, what do you got to say about that, Mr. Gilligan? I say he was wearing it when he held me up on the trail and robbed me of ten twenty-dollar gold pieces. Take off that coat. You can have it, Sheriff. It doesn't fit very well. Yeah. Just a minute. Nothing in the pockets? Wait. Here's something sewed in the lining. You got a knife, Gilligan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah. just as I thought. Here's your money, Gilligan. Count it. Yeah, it's mine, all right. Ten golden eagles. Yeah, and what's this? Well, that does cinch it. A file and a saw. 
The jailbreaks, I suppose. Well, I guess that proves what I had to say about him. Now, Sheriff, I've done my part. Excuse me, I, I've got a business engagement. Thanks, Gilligan. Won't need you anymore tonight, but you'll be the main witness at the trial. Call on me, Sheriff. Uh, see you in court, Deadwood Dick. Want any more proof of your identity, Deadwood? You've got me stumped, Sheriff. I don't know how those things got in that coat. The only one who can tell you is the man I borrowed it from. Deadwood Dick himself. Deadwood? <laughs> that is good. He says he can't tell me, but Deadwood Dick can. <laughs> I don't believe any of it, even with all your tricks to incriminate him. Deadwood, you do make a good impression on the ladies. But he won't work with the judge. Well, I'm locking you up. I am to please, Sheriff. Seem <laughs> mighty happy about it, old Deadwood. Well, come on, Rita. Let them take you in, John. It's all a clumsy plot. Well, I can't doubt what I see with my own eyes, Rita. Fire! 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 Uh, what? Wake me up, burn them! He's big fire! John, that wastebasket by the window is on fire. Hurry, go! Hurry, go! Stop him! Hey, jump to the window! Good, I hope he gets away! I'll organize a posse. We'll get him! Turn him! That's the sheriff after us now with a posse. He catches me before I get to Devil's Gate. Hook and his outlaws are sure to get away with the gold shipment. Come on, Thunder. Get him up, Pinto. We've shaken off the sheriff's posse. Can you see the stage road from here, little diva? We see him road. Look, Big Rider. Lights come round mountain. I see them. Down below, that cut on the hill. That's Devil's Gate. We'll have to ride down this gorge to get there in time. Come on, Thunder. Well, Deadwood, you got your money back. Red Riders locked up in jail, and now we've got a clear field for the holdup at Devil's Gate. Well, that suits me for now. But someday I'll meet up with Red Rider and Square of Grudge yeah, We're pretty close to Devil's Gate now. Yep, you're right, Jake. I see the lights of the stage are coming around the mountain. Yep. We're just in time. Well, I'm boss now. Put your horses over in the shadow of that rock. When the stage reaches a deep pile, I'll block the way and stop it. You boys cover me with your rifles. Start shooting if the guard uses his shotgun. All right, now. All right, here she is. Now get ready, boys. Don't wreck the stage while I stop the horses. Mistake, Hook. Huh? Don't move a let out of sound. And you, fella, drop your gun or I'll drop you. Now lie down, both of you, on your faces. Pick up his gun, little beaver. Edward! Edward, come quick! It's Red Rider! I've been waiting for this, Red Rider! Come and smoke her! Little beaver! I mean, Red Rider! Here comes Cheryl! Oh! Oh! Uh, you stay with him, all right? We got him with the grid, honey. Get your hands up, Deadwood, fast! One of them won't go up, Sheriff. Increase with a lead plum. You he big fool, Sheriff. He no Deadwood. He Red Rider. You look him there. Deadwood. He on ground. You say this other fellow's Deadwood? Why, why I got Deadwood right here covered. You're mistaken again, Sheriff. If you try that coat I borrowed on the real Deadwood, you'll find it fits him better. He's right, Sheriff. He stopped the robbery after that bandit held up in the stage. He'd have gotten away with the gold if it hadn't been for him. Well, I'll be hanged for a mangy coyote. Where is he? What have they done to him? Oh, oh, Red Rider, you're safe. No, no, you've been hurt. Here, let me bandage your hand with my handkerchief. Oh, this must pain you terribly. No, Miss Rita, the thing that pains me is the fact Ace Hanlon wasn't here with his gang. If I'd have got the goods on him tonight, added to the crimes he's already accused of, he'd have been finished for sure. I figure you've done plenty tonight, Ryder. Rounding up this pack of wolves single-handed. Take him away, man. Here, come on. Get him going. And now, Red Rider... You'd better come back to town and get a few days' rest. I'm worried about your bullet wound. Oh, 
thank you, miss, but it's just a scratch. Little Beaver and I'd better be on our way. We find a Mace Hanlon. Goodbye, Sheriff. Hello. Miss Rita. Goodbye, Red Rider. All right, Thunder. Hit that trail. Come on, Thunder. Rider has accomplished one more step in his battle against his nemesis, Ace Hanlon. But there is yet much to be done, for already word has come to Red that Ace is operating in another section of the western country. When next we meet the famous fighting cowboy and his inseparable companion, Little Beaver, they'll be far from Bullion Bend, still on the trail of Ace and his henchmen. Don't miss the next exciting episode of Red Rider. <laughs> of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Call that pony, little beaver. We're heading straight across the plains to Dobie Town, and there's plenty of trouble ahead. You bet you, Red Rider. Get along. The Adventures of Red Rider. Rider and Little Beaver are riding hard across the sunburned prairie heading for Dobie Town because Red has heard that Ace Hanlon, gun lord of the plains, has been seen making tracks for the frontier town himself not more than 48 hours ago. As they ride up the slope of a rocky barranca and look down onto the range, Little Beaver suddenly reins up his pony and points toward a distant water hole. Red Rider, Red Rider, look him. Look him down there by water hole. Where, well, Little Beaver? Where do you see a water... Well, I'll be blamed. How can you see that far? Are those men down there? Sure shooting them men. They do them something to water, too. They sure are. 
Looks to me like they're pouring something into that water hole. Little Beaver, lest I miss my guess, those Jaspers are trying to poison every head of cattle on this range. We ride them off, huh, Red Rider? We chase them away. Doggone Tootin' right, Little Beaver. If they're aiming to kick up trouble, I'm aiming to see that they get it. Let's ride. Get them up, Pepper. Come on, Thunder. Ride them down, Thunder. He said to be mighty sure, Lobo. Yeah, supposing you let me worry about Ace Hanlon. Now, you put the top back on that cannon. Who's that? Who's that coming over here? Huh? Where? Oh, up there, Lobo. Over the ridge. Big fella with a red shirt and an engine kid. Red Rider. Grab that horse of yours, Vince, quick. I'm going to get myself a nice picture of that red-haired gent from a gun sight and blow him clean out of here. Lobo, mount up. Don't try shooting it out with an hombre like Ryder. I've been waiting for a chance like this for five years now. Shot the gun right out of my hand. Vince, come on. Let's get out of here. Come on. Hold it, little beaver. We don't go catch him, Red Ryder. No sense going any further, little beaver. We'd lose him anyhow on those rocks. And what damage they've done has been done already. Smell them powerful bad. Here, yeah, hand me that can, little beaver. Yeah, the coyotes, it's poison, all right. Hope the cattle didn't drink any of that water. Maybe we saved them just in time, our huh, Red Rider. See over there, big herd cattle heading this way. Maybe come for water. Best thing we can do is ride over and head them off. Say, it looks like some punches with them. We ride them. Get them up, Papoose. Come on, Thunder. Those your cattle? Your dad claimed right, them's my cattle. I suppose you explain what you got in that can you're carrying. That's what I wrote over here about. We saw some jaspers poison in the water hole. That talk's mighty easy, mister. But if you run them off, why are you carrying the poison? Didn't expect me to leave it there for someone else to use, did you? That's exactly what I'm going to find out. And meanwhile, just keep your hand away from your holster, mister. Why, sure. I'm but... doing the talking. Right, round up the other hands. Unless this fellow's got a better excuse why he's packing poison... We're going to have us a little burying party. Now, just a minute. I said shut up. If you're talking about burying me, I think I'm entitled to say something. Well, out with it. You seem plumb plumb upset. Now, what's the matter? Somebody been poisoning your beef? I'm not the only one. Almost every rancher using this lower range has had steers falling over like flies. You make a big mistake. Red Rider just run them off men who poison water holes. Did you say Red Rider? Yeah, that's what folks call me. But I haven't the honor of knowing you, man. <laughs> well, tan my hide and call me buckskin. I must be just plain loco. I should have known who you was. Never seen you around Dobie Valley, but we sure heard enough about you to know anybody looking like you do must be Red Rider. <laughs> you know, many's the time I wish I had just ordinary hair. <laughs> but this carrot top seems to have come in mighty handy this time. Yeah. Mind telling me if you got any ideas what's been happening? If you mean who's been poisoning the water holes and mean or nobody else knows. All we know is practically every rancher in the valley is in debt to Dan Parker. Now, Parker owns a general store in Dobytown. Oh, I see. You mean that Parker might be behind it? No, sir, e, that's just what I don't mean. We all been trading with Dan Parker for years now. He carries us on his books until shipping time. Then, each year after we sell off our beef, we settle our accounts. I see. You mean this year, with your beef being poisoned, you're not going to be able to pay Parker what you owe him? That's about the way it looks, Ryder. Suppose and I ride into town and talk to Parker. Think that might do any good? It may not do any good, but it sure won't do any harm. You know how it is. Man hates to talk poor mouth to an old friend. If that's the case, I'll leave this can with you and I'll be riding. All right, shake up that pony of yours, little beaver. We got a job to do. We do them too, Red Rider. Get them up, Papoose. Get Come on, Thunder. Find Ace Hanlon, waiter. Hanlon? At that table back in the corner. Thanks, I see you. Howdy, Ace. Hello, Lobo. Sit down. Thanks. You get your job done? Most of it. 
What do you mean, most of it? Well, we were just finishing the last hole on Jim Chase's North 40 when an old friend of yours paid us a call. What are you driving at? I mean Red Rider spotted us and run us off. Rider? Well, this is going to be even better than I'd hoped for. I'm not only going to end up owning every ranch in this valley, but I'm going to get rid of Mr. Ryder at the same time. Well, look, Ace, you hired me for one job. If you want to take care of Red Ryder, that's up to you. I don't want any part of that, Jasper. And by the time I get through him, there won't be any part left for anyone else. And as for them ranchers, when they learn they haven't got enough cattle left to pay Dan Parker what they owe him... They're going to find that East Hanlon's bought out Parker's store, and it's him they owe. You're crazy. Parker will never sell. No, Parker will never sell. But his widow will. Widow? That's what I said. Now, I want you to go over to Parker's store and talk him into an argument. Understand? Poor fellow's got a hasty temper, and when he goes for his gun, I'm depending on you to outdraw him. Hanlon. Yeah. I got to hand it to you. You got brains and you know what to do with them. <laughs> if Parker goes for his gun first, it's going to be just too bad. Because everybody knows any man can shoot to kill in self-defense. Hey, if Red Ryder is sticking his nose into this, you better be getting over to Parker's store now. I like my gun and done one at a time. Stay here at the store, Mary. Business is about over for the day. Well, I was just dusting off the shelves, Dan. That calico picks up every bit of dirt. Well, I guess it was wrong. Here comes another customer. Afternoon, mister. What can I do for you? Your name Dan Parker? Why, yes. I want a pound of sugar. Yes, sir. Right here. Well, I said I wanted a pound. Sure, sure, I heard you. This is a pound sack. Are you aiming to call me a liar? Now, look here, mister. I didn't ask you to come into my store. But I come in, and I'm not going to have a thieving crook like you try to give me a half pound and call it a pound. Get out of here. Clean out of my place before I... Before you what? I- I'm giving you three to Van Moose. Oh, Dan, don't. Look, you thieving old sidewinder. Nobody's putting me out of no place. Thieving old... I'll show you. Dan, don't. Oh, Dan. Oh, oh, Dan. Hold it, you. You open that door. Who did that shooting here, ma'am? This man... He killed my husband. If I were you, stranger, I'd leave my right hand just where it is. All right, you watch the door a little bit. You bet some Red Rider. Now, look, before you get mixed up with something that ain't no concern of yours, Parker went for his gun first. I only shot in self-defense. Is that true, ma'am? Yes. Oh, I tried to stop my husband. I knew this man came in to force him into a fight. But Dan drew first. Well... Now, are you satisfied? I can't say that I am satisfied, because I know you and your kind. But someday, and it's going to be someday soon, it's you who's going to catch hot lead in self-defense. Now get out of here. Oh, Dan. Dan, why did you do it? Ma'am, I'm so sorry I didn't get here two seconds early. I know, Sam, how sorry I am won't bring your husband back. But there are other ways of squaring up accounts. And you can count on me for my help. Oh, you're you're being very kind, but there's nothing you can do now. There's a lot I can do, man. And I'm going to tear this town apart, board by board, until I find the coyote I'm hunting for. Because I'm sure there's a certain snake behind all this, and his name is Ace Hanlon. <laughs> What a bee, Ace. Another round of the same. <laughs> I got good cause for celebrating. I figured you had, Ace. Well, uh, uh, well, if it ain't my old friend Red Rider. If I didn't have something else on my mind, Ace, I'd see that you apologize for calling me a friend of yours. Yeah, asking for an apology and getting one or two different things, Ryder. I generally get what I ask for, Ace. You ought to know that. Maybe that's because you're always asking the wrong people. Maybe. But it might be because you've always managed to deal yourself out every time I've called. I don't know. Seems every time I've asked for a showdown, you're the one who didn't draw. Well, I'm putting all my chips on the table now, Ace. 
And if you're wanting to ask for a draw, I'm ready to fill my hand. Yeah, trouble with you is that deck you're talking about may be full of jokers. Maybe I better make myself clear. Dan Parker was just shot down in cold blood. And I thought you'd be interested in knowing I was making it my business to find out why. But I never had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Parker. But he, if he was a friend of yours, I can't say I'm exactly sorry. You will be sorry, Ace. First time you or any of your gun hands try to finish what you started. I told you this before, Ryder. You talk too much. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be enjoying myself. Why, sure, Ace. Enjoy yourself while you can. But next time I see you, you'd better fill your hand for sure. Because I'll be looking at you over the bill of a forty-four. <laughs> We return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. As we rejoin Red Rider and Little Beaver in Adventure in Dolby Town, we find Ace Hanlon just entering Parker's General Store. The store now run by Dan Parker's widow, since Hanlon's gunslinger Lobo has killed the local merchant. Good morning. Is there something I can do for you? I reckon you're Mrs. Parker. That's right. Hanlon's the name, Mrs. Parker. Sort of a stranger over here in Doby Town, but I'm uh, aiming at settling. Figured maybe you and me could talk a little business. A little business? Uh, some of the boys at the hotel told me about the misfortune you had yesterday. I mean, about your husband. Well, it's mighty kind of you, a stranger, to come over to pay your sympathies. Well, I want you to believe me, Mrs. Parker. Sympathy is just what made me drop in today. You see, I got thinking about how difficult it might be for a woman like you to try to run a store alone. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid it really takes a man to run a business. Exactly. Now... I come down here looking for a business to go into myself, and uh, I thought of you probably wanting to sell and me wanting to buy, perhaps we could deal. Well, I wasn't thinking of selling out, Mr. Hanlon. Yes, well, I know this may be kind of sudden, but I'm willing to pay a fair price. All cash. Say, uh, $2,000. $2,000? Why, why not counting our stock? We've got more than $15,000 owed us on the books. Uh, from what I hear, Mrs. Parker, that $15,000 isn't worth the ink it took to write it. They tell me the ranchers hereabouts in Doby Valley lost most of their cattle from oh, bad water. I'm not worrying about the ranchers. My husband carried them through other bad years, and I reckon I can manage to get by somehow. Well, I don't aim to argue with a woman, Mrs. Parker, but I'm a fair man, and when my mind's made up, I don't generally let anyone change it. Now, you listen to me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Parker, but it's you who's going to do the listening. Here's $3,000 in cash. So, supposing you sit down and start writing out a bill of sale. If I were a man, I'd blow you through that door with more gun smoke than you could swallow. Yeah, but seeing as you're not, and seeing as I've got the cash here on the counter and I'm aiming to spend it, get out your paper and start writing. Just a minute. Right. Seeing that Ace came here to spend his money... Supposing you accommodate him, Mrs. Parker. What are you doing here? Drop that gun, Ace. That's better. And next time, maybe you'd better wait to go for your gun like you usually do when my back's turned. Oh, Mr. Ryder, I'm so glad you walked in when you did. I didn't exactly walk in. I was passing by, smelled something bad, looked in, and sure enough, Hanlon was in here. I've told you before, Ryder, you talk too much. Supposing you pick up Mr. Hanlon's gun, little beaver. It's a mite too handy laying there on the floor. Me pick them for sure, Red Rider. Maybe me use them. I don't think that'll be necessary, because men like Ace would rather wait till they're hiding behind a rock and dry gulch a man. Will you see that he gets out of here, Mr. Ryder? If you don't mind, Mrs. Parker, not just yet. Now, like I said, when a man's got that much cash to spend, a smart merchant ought to accommodate him. Maybe you know what you're talking about, but I don't. I just figured since Mrs. Parker hasn't done much cash business this year... Maybe I'd help you spend two, three hundred dollars here, since you're so all fired rare to buy some. Oh, I don't want any of his money, Mr. Ryder. Who said it was his money? I'd hate to think just where it came from. Uh, get a couple of those picks and shovels over there, little beaver, and load them into Mr. Hanlon's arms. You betcha, Red Ryder. 
Him gonna be heap good customer. Now, what do I want with picks and shovels? Why, I heard talk around that you're fixing to dig your own grave. Now, stretch your arms out. You got nice no. arms, folks. You betcha, Mr. Hanlon. Ryder, you're gonna pay for this. Wrong again, Ace. You're going to pay for this. Now, that'll be exactly uh, $40. Now, uh, how about some of that calico, Mrs. Parker? Oh. What color do you want, Mr. Ryder? Well, let's see, about uh, $80 worth of that pretty yellow. Yeah, that should be mighty becoming to you, Ace. Yellow is your color. And by the time I get through with you, Ryder, the laugh will be on the other side of your face. Why, you just don't appreciate a bargain. That's the prettiest calico stolen money could buy. All right, load it on top of those picks and shovels, little beaver. Me load them, all right. You know, it's too bad your arms are so full now, Hammond. With all the money you've still got left and knowing what you're going to be needing soon, I sure would like to sell you a nice $500 headstone complete with inscription. Maybe it's a good thing they got headstones in stock because I got a sneaking idea they'll be buying one for you. A sneaking idea is about the only kind you ever have, isn't it, Ace? Now, supposing you take your purchases and mosey along. If there's anything else I think of that you may need, I'll be glad to deliver it personally. Little Beaver... Open the door for the gentleman, and as he goes out, be sure you get one of those $100 bills. Uh, that $100 is only a down payment, Ryder. Before I'm through with you, you're going to be paid in full. That's a deal, Ace. And whenever you feel you can pay in full, you'll be ready, and you'll find that I'll give you a receipt. I open door, Mr. Hanlon. <laughs> Goodbye. You come again. Oh, Mr. Ryder, I don't know how to thank you. No thanks are necessary. Besides, the time for thanks hasn't come yet. What do you mean? I mean, Hanlon's found out all the ranchers in Doby Valley owe you money, and he's decided to cripple them, force you to sell out to him, and then attach all of their ranches for what they owe. Oh, how terrible. Then why you no get him Hanlon, Red Rider? Because he isn't the kind to put his neck out. Hanlon always has some gunmen to do his dirty work, and until we get his gunmen red-handed, this game isn't over. Well, that certainly makes sense, but... I don't see what we can do about it. What we've got to do is force Hanlon's hand to figure some way to make him turn those gun hands loose in something crooked where Maybe. we can catch him and put him behind bars. Maybe so, Red Rider. But you all the time tell me a hey, Hanlon, him plenty smart. There's only one thing to do with a man who's plenty smart, little beaver. Play your card so he'll outsmart himself. Mrs. Parker, I have an idea that may work. And the only thing I need is for you to tell me that you'll give me a free rein. Oh, anything, Mr. Ryder, anything you say. Then come on, little beaver. You've got to round up the ranches and get them in here to Mrs. Parker's store before it's too late. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Oh, you stop acting as if you're running this whole show, Ryder, and let Mrs. Parker do her own talking. I've turned everything over to Red Ryder. Huh? He's taken over my business, and you'll have to do what he says. Oh, no. Now, there's no sense of your grumbling, because it's not going to do you any good. Business is business, and that means cash on the barrel head. Uh, just because Mrs. Parker's husband was soft-hearted enough to let all you ranchers owe him thousands of dollars... There's no reason to think you can get away with it from now on. I should have strung you up the other day when I had you. Sure. Maybe you should. But I'm in the saddle now, and I'm collecting every cent that's owed this store. I'm giving you exactly five days to come in and pay dollar for dollar what you owe. Or by ginger, we'll attach every ranch in Doby Valley. But how do you expect us to raise any money in five days? Yeah. Sell your cattle, that's how. You dirty cook taking advantage of us when you know our cattle's been dying off like flies. Yeah. Instead of standing here and calling me names, if you don't get together and start to drive up to the railhead, you'd be back here in time to pay your honest debts. Now go on. I've wasted all the time I'm going to waste talking to you. <laughs> Did you hear what happened? No, what happened, Lobo? That mealy mouth Red Rider, that's what's happened. Well, what's he up to now? Plenty. All that fine talk he was putting up yesterday about protecting that old lady was just so much molasses. Reason he run you out of that store was he took it over himself. Himself? Why, you're crazy. Crazy nothing. I just come from across the street. He had every rancher that owes Mrs. Parker a dollar over there, and he laid it on with a whip. What? He told them unless they paid every cent they owed inside of five days that he was taking over every ranch in the valley. Why, that low-down, sneaking horse thief. I always knew there was a crooked streak someplace in Red Rider. But how did he reckon they're going to raise the money to pay off? 
He told them to take what cattle they got left, join up in one big drive, and sell it off. Well. <laughs> Isn't that just wonderful? What do you mean? I mean, Ryder's a bigger fool than I ever thought he was. Ryder a fool? Right. He's just playing straight into my hands. Sure. Walking right in and taking your deal out from under you. Ah, uh, don't you see what this means? When them ranchers get out on the trail, you're going to run off their cattle. Then when Ryder butts in and tries to attach those ranches, them cattlemen are going to get awful sore. Sore enough to shoot. Oh. And when the shooting starts, you better make mighty sure the only way Red Ryder gets out of there is feet first. Ace, you know more angles than Sawtooth Canyon. <laughs> Never mind the back slapping. Get out and round up ten of the best gun hands in the country and raid that cattle drive. This is one time Ryder's walking his neck right into a noose. Oh, Thunder. Oh, boy. You see him cattle drive, Red Ryder? This is one time my eyes are as good as yours, little beaver. Ah, uh, you think so? You see ten riders hide him in cottonwoods? Doggone you, little beaver. Every time I think I've seen something you don't see, you pull a surprise right out of the saddlebag. Where are they? You see them little clump tumbleweed? Uh Uh-huh. Maybe ten, twenty yards toward right. See them now? Why, George, I sure do. Do you recognize the leader of the gang? Me know him. Him same man come in store and shoot a Mr. Parker. Lobo. Then my little trick did work. Lucky thing for you, work him. No work him. Maybe ranchers get awful mad at Red Ryder. You're not fooling about that, little beaver. I got those ranchers so dad blamed sore yesterday. I was afraid they'd start shooting right there in the street. Look him, Red Ryder. Over by Buttes, right of Sheriff's Posse. Good, they didn't get here any too soon. Because if you look at the cottonwoods, you'll see Lobo starting the raid. We better ride him and tell him, Sheriff. You better fly him and tell him, Sheriff. The way things are going, we may be too late. Get him up, Papoose. Thunder, we've got to move fast. Come on, Thunder. a few more ranchers. Oh, no, you're not. Red Ryder. This is one time you're not getting away, Lobo, because I'm going to drag you out of that saddle. Kick out with your spurs, will you? That will take care of you. You all right, Ryder? I think so, Sheriff. It's a little mussed up, but I got Lobo, the leader of the gang. Yeah, good going, son. That scheme of yours sure works out. You catch him, everybody, Red Ryder. I don't know, little beaver. Was Ace handling with any of those men you rounded up, Sheriff? Never saw a hide and a hair of handling. Well, it looks as if my idea didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. Ma'am, Steve, round up these gunslingers and get them back to town. You ride back with me, Red. Branches and Mrs. Parker will be kind of anxious to thank you for all you've done. I'm sorry, sir, but I'll have to disappoint them. While Hannon is still loose, I've got to keep riding. Are you ready, little beaver? Me all ready, Red Rider. Then let's ride. Get him up, that goose. Get ride him, up, boy. Come on, thunder. and Little Beaver, through hard riding and quick thinking, have saved the ranchers around Dobie Town from losing their cattle and rangeland. But Ace Hanlon is still free and hoping to get his revenge. So join us next time when Red Rider and Little Beaver run up against Hanlon's desperate scheming and plotting over in the Bear Canyon Territory. <laughs>
finer, fresher, tastier Langendorf bread, America's finest, presents The Adventures of Red Reiner. From out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy. If, like you say, somebody else wrote this note, what are we going to do? I don't think it's just somebody else. Huh? I think it's a certain red-headed busybody, the great fighting cowboy. And if it is, I'm making you one promise it's going to stick. That we'll be leaving town tomorrow with that entire payroll, just about six hours before Mr. Ryder's funeral. Well, here we go again. Red Rider in trouble, and tonight's Western adventure, The Badlands, packed to the brim with thrills and chills and an extra bonus of real heartwarming human interest. Speaking of extra bonuses, I have a word to say about the extra bonuses Langendorf bread can pay. You mean an extra eating pleasure. At any time of day. Well, Langendorf bread is so tender, so light... It melts in your mouth with a first luscious bite. Yes, Langendorf bread has the eating appeal... That makes it a treat served with every meal. And Langendorf bread makes a toast hard to beat, so crisp and so golden... And so easy to eat. And for tempting snacks, your favorite spread... Will taste twice as nice... On top of a slice... Of creamy Langendorf bread. (laughs) Now, say, our poetry's almost as good as Langendorf bread itself. And don't forget, Langendorf bread is good for you, too, because it's made with the very finest ingredients that can go into a bread. And every loaf of delicious Langendorf bread is enriched with lots of vitamins and minerals, too. And baked in moist heat ovens that lock in the goodness. Keep it fresh and tender all the time it's baking. So if folks in your house like good things to eat, give them Langendorf bread for a taste-tempting treat. Better get some right away. Langendorf bread. Finer, fresher, tastier Langendorf bread. America's The territory around Devil's Hole, Red's hometown, has been plagued with a sudden and vicious series of holdups, robberies, and murders. And as our story of the West that lives wherever gets underway, we find Red and Little Beaver sitting on the corral fence at Painted Valley Ranch in the midst of a hot and heavy argument with Buckskin. Tattle tales to talking dog, Red. Why don't you listen? Because I don't care what they're saying all over town. I don't believe Dave Baskin had anything to do with robbing the bank. Now, Martha told me... Oh, for the love of Pete Buckskin, what's a man's wife got to do with whether he's guilty or not? And in the second place, I didn't say Dave let those crooks rob the bank. I was just telling you what the folks are saying in Devil's Hole. That right, Buckskin. Even Mr. Doolittle and the banker is saying that it look like Dave Bascom shoot him over heads of bandits. Careful, proof of and poppycock. The two of you ought to be plumb ashamed for Pete and Siscott. Why, I, I know Dave Bascom's wife back in the panhandle. Knowed her for years. And I'm telling you, no man Martha Bascom would marry would rob a bank. Now, it's you who's starting to sound ridiculous. Well, anybody what don't agree with you is always ridiculous. Andy, if I'm as dumb as you seem to think I am, why ain't you out trying to catch some of that crooks to prove that I'm wrong? Well, good night, Buckskin. What do you want me to do? The sheriff and three deputies have been working on this case day and night. They haven't asked me for any help. No, but Martha Bascom has. Oh, you mean you promised her that I'd poke my nose in where I'm not invited to clean this whole thing up before morning, I suppose? Well, I did tell Martha I'd uh, talk to you about it. Uh. Oh, so why don't you be a nice helper, critter, and run over there and see if there ain't some way you can help? Why, you look at me, Red Rider. We can't do him anything about it. No, I guess you're right, son. Buckskin happens to know Dave's wife, so we've got to lead with our chins. Well, maybe we do. But if you let on today that Martha put me up to putting you up to this, you're going to be in plenty of trouble. Dave. Dave, there must be some reason folks are saying what they think. 
How do you think I feel? By jingo, Martha, I've heard about all I'm going to hear. Oh, no, you haven't. I know you too well, Dave Bascom, not to recognize the signs when something's troubling you. Something you haven't told me about. Why, you go around like a man in a dream when you're at home. And you're certainly not home much. Seems every time I turn my back, you slip out for something else. Dave. Dave, darling, what is it? Somebody knocking on the door, Martha. Wonder who it is. I'll go, Dave. I'll open the door. Well, it's red, buckskin, and little beaver, David. Hello, Hello there, Martha. Martha. Well, are you just going to stand there? Come on in. Oh, thanks. Howdy, Dave. Howdy. Mind if we drop in for a bit? No, Red. Something particular? Well, I guess so. I suppose you know ever since the bank was held up, there's been a lot of talk going on in town about you, Dave. Plenty. Yeah? Well, I'm not interested. And the first one who says something to my face about it's going to be sorry he ever started. Well, I'm afraid I've got to take that personally, Dave, because I came over here hoping to help you. Well, I don't want any help, yours or anybody else's. Why, Dave. Dave Bascom. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Red's acting like a real friend. Doggone that blame right he is. Well, if he thinks he's going to go around poking his nose in my business, he ain't no friend of mine. And what's more, neither him nor his help are welcome. Now, hold on, Dave. Hold on nothing. I'm sick and tired of the whole thing. I don't want to talk to you or nobody else about it. So you might as well just turn around and get out before I have to put you out. Red, don't let him treat you like that. And if you want to know, Dave, I asked Buckskin to send Red over here. Oh, you did, did you? Well, then suppose you pack up and get out along with him. That no way for you, a lawn man, to talk him to his wife, Red Rider. Why don't you shut up, you big-mouthed Indian brat? Why, doggone it, Dave, I've heard enough. Now you sit down there and cool off. Oh, before... so you're going to start giving me orders, are you? I told you to get out before, and now that you're still here, I guess there's only one thing to do with your kind. Don't do that, Dave. Dave, what's come over? Dave, you got to stop. I'll stop. I'll stop when I've got this redhead. Here. Someone's got to knock some sense into your head, maybe there's some help. Oh, Oh, Dave. Dave. I'm sorry I had to do that, Dave. Awfully sorry. But it convinced me of one thing. There's a lot more behind this bank hold-up than you've let on. Uh, Bascom, if something did happen that you don't want other people to know about, if you'd tell Red, maybe he could fix it up for you so everything will be all right. He's right, Dave. If you've got anything in your conscience, anything you'd like to get off, believe me, it'll never go any farther than this room. Dave, there is something. I know there is. Why don't you tell Red and see if he can't help? All right, Red. But if a syllable of this ever leaks out, so help me. You have my word on it, Dave. Now, go on. Did you ever know my kid brother, Bill? He left Devil's Hole and went to Texas four or five years ago. Yeah, I remember Bill. Nice-looking youngster. Always seemed to be enjoying himself. That's right. He liked to enjoy himself so much, I guess he wasn't too particular of the company he kept. Well, one day, about two weeks ago, when Martha was to a meeting in town, I was sitting here all alone when... Bill, what in heaven's name? Dave, pull me in, close the door. Yeah. Posse, they're after me. Here, Bill. Here, get you in a chair. Here, there. There we are. Now, now, what's this about a posse? I'm on my way back from Texas. Yeah? I stopped in dry goods, played cards, had a few drinks. Yes, yes. Next thing I knew, three other Jaspers had me along with. They held up a stagecoach. Good Lord, Bill, uh, how could you do a thing like that? It did. Didn't want to, but by the time I found out what they were up to, it was too late. Oh. Getting away, got shot through the hip. Dave, you could they help me? Sure, Dave. Dave, sure. Look at that. There's a deserted miner shack back near Bill Baldy, Big Baldy. Probably can hide you there. Keep your bandages up and bring your food until this thing's blown over. Oh, good old Dave. I knew you, I knew you wouldn't let me down there. Oh. Great Scott, the youngsters passed clean out. Well, Dave, little Red, I, that's what started it. The kid coming home like that. But, Dave, you didn't say a word. You didn't tell me. I would have. I was going to next day till... till I got that message from Flash Creelman. Flash Creelman? Uh-huh. You mean the chap who just gave Devil's Hole a thousand dollars to help build that new schoolhouse? Yeah, that's him. That's why I don't dare tell nobody the story. Nobody'd believe me. They'd say I was lying. Uh, Creelman's a great guy. But what about Mr. Creelman? What happened to him? Well, as you know, I'm the night watchman down at the bank. I was just on my way to work. When... Just a minute, Bascom. 
I want to talk to you. Huh? Oh, oh, it's you, Skinner. What do you want? There's a man over there in the alley who wants to have a little power with you, Dave. What's the matter with him? What's he hiding in the alley for? Because he thought you wouldn't like everybody in town to know about who you'd got hidden in that little shack up on Big Baldy. What? What do you know about Big Baldy? Are you coming, Dave? The gentleman may get tired of waiting. Here he is, boss. Here he is. Hello, Dave. Remember me? Creelman. Sure, I Dave, remember you. Uh, if you'd let me know when the payroll shipment was arriving at the bank, I, I might forget what I know about your brother Bill. Well, you're double dealing hypocritical. Oh! Slap me around, will you? I'll show you. Skinner, Skinner, skin grab your arms. Yeah, it's better. How best of you listen to me. You'll either play ball with my rules, and not only will I turn your brother in, but I'll see that you land in a cell right next to him. For hiding out a fugitive and obstructing the due process of the law. You! You sneaking rabbit! Stop! Next time, Basque, I'm not going to slap you. I'm going to gun you down drag your buddy up to that cabin. Tell the sheriff I shot you when you refused to let me arrest your brother. All right, Creelman. You got me over a barrel. Now go on. Break my back. What do you want me to do? Yeah. What you've got to do is very simple. Let me know the night before the next payroll shipment's due, and when we come into the bank to get it, just be mighty careful that you shoot over our heads. Is that clear? Sure, sure, it's clear. Is that all? That's all, my friend. In fact, you, uh, you do as you're told, and I'll even see that your brother's moved to another town, gets a doctor's care. All right, Skinner, let him go. And there it is, Red. If I hadn't have been so scared for Bill's sake... I'd have shot it out with Creelman when he came into the bank. But I figured if I just nicked him and didn't kill him, he'd tell what he knew just to get even. That plain nasty mess Mr. Bascom get him into, isn't it, Red Rider? Yeah, sure is, little beaver. He's committed two crimes to shield a third one. And now, with no proof, it's only his word against Creelman's. But nobody will believe Dave. Everybody will say he's just lying and blaming it on Creelman. Well, it took it your word, Red. I told you. And even though I do feel better, having gotten it off my conscience, I I still don't know what to do. Well, are you willing to take just one more risk to prove that Creelman's a crook? Anything, Red. Anything. All right. Then with a little cooperation from the bank and the sheriff, we'll either have Creelman and his gang in jail by midnight tomorrow, or you and I'll be getting our measures taken for a pair of unpainted pine boxes. <laughs> Buckskin was certainly wrong about Dave Bascom not being mixed up even in the small way with the holdups. And regardless of Dave's motives, it looks bad for Red's chances if he hopes to prove who the real crooks really are. But here's something that looks mighty good for you. One of the best ways to help keep feeling full of health and energy is to eat foods that contain lots of vitamin B1. Yes, sir, vitamin B1 is an essential of growth and normal energy in our daily living. And you get this important vitamin in Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 Wheat Bread. There are 1,100 units of Vitamin B1 in every loaf of this swell bread, so when you eat two slices of Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 Wheat Bread with each of your three meals, you get the average person's minimum daily requirement of B1. Now, youngsters and grown-ups alike go for the rich, nutty flavor of Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 Wheat Bread. So get a loaf of Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 Wheat Bread... And enjoy it every day. Well, getting on with the Badlands, Dave Bascom has just entered Hanlon's Silver Dollar Cafe, where he stands looking around for a moment. Then spotting Creelman at a table, Dave hurries over. Hey, boss, look, here comes that night watchman from the bank. Yes, come on. What a fool, does he think I want people to see him talking to me? <laughs> well, I'll be jiggered. You see what he did, Flash? He walked right by the table as if he didn't know us, and he dropped something beside your chair. Yeah. That Jasper's smarter than I give him credit for. Wait till I pick this thing up. Well, it seems to be a note. Well, Flash, well, 
What does it say? Pretty cagey gent, that Bascom. Here, listen to this. Huh? Need help for Dr. Bill. Huh? Dr. Bill? What's that supposed to mean? Well, you fool. It means he needs a doctor for his brother, Bill. Oh. Is that all it says? No, no. Here's the rest of it. Could you use me on your payroll? Can report for work not later than midnight tomorrow night. <laughs> it's pretty slick. Pretty slick. I don't see what he's getting at, boys. How can he report for work? He's got a job at the bank. Of course, he doesn't want to report for work. That's his way of telling us that he wants us to report for work. That there's a payroll due at the bank. And that we can get it at midnight tomorrow. Well, I'll be hogtied. You know something? Huh? Writing that note requires more imagination than I think Dave Bascom's got. Huh? What do you mean by that, boss? I mean I think somebody put him up to it. Now, now wait a minute, boss. You can be wrong. Suppose there's... That's just a bum guess of yours. Suppose there really is going to be a payroll at the bank tomorrow. We're not going to pass that up. No, of course not, Skinner. We're not going to pass up a payroll or anything else. Not even the chance to make sure if Bascom is framing to get us that he, he won't find his own face sticking out of the frame. And the sheriff standing by to hang him. to mild ideas in your time, but I never hear the one as wild as this one. Do you realize you stand a good chance of getting killed? Why, sure, I realize it, Buckskin. But the way you took on yesterday about Martha Bascom and her husband, I didn't think you realized it. Oh, doggone it now, Red. Stop a word, man. <laughs> uh, do you think uh, that uh, Creelman will fall for that there note? <laughs> He'd better. Or it's going to be awfully lonesome hiding in the bank all night tomorrow night. Well, if it's going to be so doggone lonesome tomorrow night, well, how about a crawling into a bunk now and catching up on some shut-eye? Nope, Buckskin, there's no rest for the wicked or those who are trying to catch him. We'd better ride back and meet Dave. You know, maybe he didn't find Creelman and give him that note. Oh, ears to elbows. Couldn't we wait till tomorrow? Sure, we could, but it can't. You know, I went up to Big Baldy today, brought Dave's brother Bill down, sneaked him into Dave's house. That youngster's pretty badly shot up, Buckskin. And even though Martha's taken good care of him, I promised we'd be back to see how he's getting on. So now if you go finish your homework, little beaver, Buckskin will get the horses ready, and then we'll all of us take a nice, fast ride. All right, rain up. Yes, who is it? It's me, Martha. Red. The door's open, Red. Come on in. Well, how's our patient, Martha? Starting to feel a lot better, Red. That is, my hips feeling a lot better. But the more I think about you and Dave are planning, the worse I feel about that. Oh, hush now. Even if your brother doesn't know what he's doing, I'm sure that Red does. You betcha. Red Ryder enjoy him all this. Get him a big bang out of it. Oh, a big bang, eh? Well, let's hope that the bang I get's a mental one and not out of the barrel of a forty-four. Amen. Was that a horse that just pulled up outside? Well, it sounds like Dave coming. Well, Red, it worked all right. I dropped the note like you told me to, then I went out through the back and watched him through a side window. <laughs> Flash took that bait like a hungry trout takes flies. So, I guess it's all over but the shooting. All over but the shooting. Well, I hope you're right, Dave. And I hope when the shooting does start, we're not stuck in a corner like clay pipes in a shooting gallery. Because I'm going to be in that bank, hiding behind the counter, and just waiting for Mr. Creelman to make his move. See anything yet, Dave? See any sign of Creelman or his gang? No, Red. Can't see hide nor... Shh. There are five men leading horses just turning the corner now. Flash with them? Can't see, but they're sure heading this way. Okay. Now remember, this whole idea doesn't mean a thing if we try to stop them before they get their hands on that sack of money. We've got to catch them in the act. Duck, Red. Get the cop. Get 
everything okay, Bascom? Yeah. Come on in. Ah, where's Creelman? Ain't he with you? Never mind where Creelman is. Where's that payroll? In the back, in the big safe. The door's open. Good. Come on, boys. Yeah. Uh, this is a pleasure. Here, two of you guys grab this big sack there. Yeah, yeah, got it. There. And now we might as well scoop up a lot of this loose kit. I'm sorry, gentlemen. The only thing you're going to scoop up is about 20 years apiece. Why, why you... Tony, Jim, what are you standing there for? Nice shooting, Dave. All right, look, you high binders. Line up right over there. Wait a minute. Where is Creelman? I'll tell you where he is. He's the smart one. He got us to go into the bank while he went up to Bascom's house. Up to my house? Yeah, sure. He figured this might be a frame-up, so he went up there to get Bascom's wife. If we don't ride by and let him know everything's okay, he's taking Mrs. Bascom, sort of like a passport, and cleaning out of here. Where is that miserable oh, murder? Hold, hold it, Dave. Huh. You getting all excited and yelling about it isn't going to help any. But Reed, if he does anything to Martha... He won't, not if we move fast. Now, where's little Beaver? Out back in the alley where you told him to wait. All right. Dave, you and Buckskin, stay here and guard these monkeys. I'm taking Skinner with me. And as I leave, I'm sending little Beaver for the sheriff. Stay here. Not me, Red. Nothing doing. I'm going up to my house You're doing exactly as you're told, because if you don't, you may find Creelman's outfoxed us completely. And that something may happen to your wife. All right, Skinner. Uh... You're leaving with me. And that's all I promise you. Because even though you're leaving now, there's no assurance you're ever coming back. <laughs> Say, now, this story's certainly taken a turn for the worse, hasn't it? Flash Creelman surely had a trump card up his sleeve. And now, holding Martha Bascom as hostage, he certainly has Red backed into a corner. While Red's figuring out how to get out of that one, I'd like to suggest a special treat for you. Next time there's meat and gravy for dinner in your house, try spooning some of that luscious gravy over a tender, creamy slice of Langendorf bread. Mmm. -hmm. Now, there's some really delicious eating for you. Why, the way that light and fluffy texture of Langendorf bread goes with good gravy. The way the rich flavor of Langendorf bread blends with that grand gravy taste. Well, you just try it. You see, Langendorf bread is made with only the finest ingredients. It's baked in moist heat ovens that lock in the swell flavor and freshness. Rush to your store fresh as a spring morning. So no wonder Langendorf bread is grand with gravy or any way you serve it. Try it soon. Fresher, tastier Langendorf bread. America's finest. <laughs> now for the action-laden climax of tonight's story, The Badlands. Rejoining Red, we find him with Creelman's henchman, Skinner, just approaching the Bascom Ranch. Listen. We're getting close to Bascom's house, Skinner. Slow down that pony. Oh, 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 Easy, oh. boy. Easy, Thunder. Now, you remember what I told you, don't you? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to do? Play school and have me recite my lessons? You haven't even started to learn your lesson yet. Ooh, Thunder. Ah. Don't forget, Skinner. You're going to be in front of me. And if your boss gets too anxious with his trigger finger, it's you he's going to hit. And if you try to cross me up, well, you've got a pretty good idea of what'll be going on behind your back. Now, hold it. can't let them knock all night. Why don't you just shut up, Mrs. Bascom? I'm handling this. Yeah, that's better. All right, call out and ask who's there. Yes? Who is it? I got a message from Mr. Bascom. A message from David? Relax, will you? That's a signal. That's what I told my boys to say if the job came off all right. All right, Skinner, come on in. I got here as soon as I could, boss. Now, what are you standing there for? Close the door and get in here. Well, I... You see, Flash. Flash, quick. The right. quiet is outside. Right. Yeah, quick. Get out the wall. No, no. You let go of me. Take your hands off of me. Take my hands off you when we're a hundred miles away. <clears throat> well, Ryder, why don't you come in? That's funny. Maybe when I slammed the door, he went around to the back. Yeah, well, ain't that handy. Because we'll just make sure of that. 
You cold-blooded murderer. Get in the you... front door. Come on, quick. I don't hear anything. Yeah, maybe I got him when I fired out the back window. Jesus, boss. We can't stay here all night waiting for him to make up this move. If he's still alive... I'll cover the front door, Skinner. You go out through the back and see if I got him. Nothing out here but a lot of broken glass, Flash. I don't see no sign of... Ah, Flash! You might as well stay right where you are, Ryder. Because if you don't, you're going to be responsible for Mrs. Bascom's untimely death. Yeah, Flash, I can see what you mean. Red, you better get out of here. I'll go with him. And when he's safely over the border, he'll let me go. I'll be all right. Well, Ryder, better make up your mind in a hurry, because if you don't... Bill, Bill, for goodness sakes! I don't know how to thank you. Well, how do you like that? You ain't got nothing to thank Red for. If it hadn't been for that there brother-in-law of yours to drag himself out of bed with his hip and splints and have grabbed that there rifle. <laughs> that rifle? Where do you think I got it, Buckskin? When Skinner slammed the door on Red, Red came around the back to my room and handed me the rifle. Yeah, but I didn't tell you to use it. I just told you to stick it through the window to attract Creelman's attention so I could jump him. Young Mr. Bascom got him too anxious to even up for trouble all of his old cousin. <laughs> yeah, he sure got him something. Maybe just an itchy finger. Yeah, it was a mighty lucky thing he did. When that glass broke, Creelman threw a shot that nicked a neat little notch in my ear. Knocked me clean off balance. Well, years are too long anyway. Always the hearing things that wasn't meant to. Uh-huh. You mean things like you were so sure Martha's husband couldn't have had anything to do with the trouble at the bank? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, maybe you're right, old-timer, so before we bore these good people with our family affairs, what do you say we light out for home? That's plenty good idea. You betcha. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. So long, folks. Get up, Captain. Get up. Get up. All right. Get. Come on, folks. In. All right now, says the bill. Well, Thunder, how about some homegrown oats, huh? That's it, fella. Come on. again this Thursday and every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night at 7.30 for the adventures of Red Rider. Between meal snacks are a bite to eat, but with Langendorf bread, they're an appetizing treat. As a snack, in a sandwich, or with any meal, Langendorf is the bread with a taste appeal. Finer, fresher, tastier Langendorf bread. America's finest. Thursday evening, this is Art Gilmore saying goodnight for the bakers of Langendorf Bread. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Read Bread Rider in the Los Angeles Daily News. KHJ Los Angeles. From out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Trot up that pony, little beaver. The circus is in devil's hole tonight. Let's hit the trail and find out what's up now. You bet your mad rider. Get along. Get him up. Get. Get going, Thunder. Hit that trail. Come on, Thunder. The Adventures of Red Rider. Here's a question I wish you folks would answer for me. When you opened that lunchbox this noon, were those sandwiches tender, tempting, fresh-tasting, a real treat? 
Well, if they were made with Langendorf bread, you can bet your boots they were all of that. Yes, sir, because Langendorf bread is the bread that stays deliciously fresh longer. Sandwiches made in the morning for your midday lunch are still deliciously fresh and tasty when that noon whistle blows. But that's not all. Those swell taste in Langendorf bread sandwiches help keep you feeling peppy all afternoon. That's because of the big one-two energy values in Langendorf bread. Vitamin B1, without which you cannot feel your energetic best, and dextrose, the world's greatest quick energy food. So do this, won't you? At your grocer's tomorrow, reach for the bread that gives you extra goodness, extra nourishment. Fresh and tasty Langendorf bread, judged America's finest by baking experts. It stays deliciously fresh longer. met Red Rider, he and Little Beaver had succeeded in trapping roaring Chris Bender, turning him over to the sheriff and saving the election for Mayor Harcourt. And now with spring in the air, posters all about Devil's Hole tell of the annual arrival of the circus, McCune's Mammoth Circus. As we join Red and Little Beaver, they are on the trail from Painted Valley to town for a day's outing, the parade and tonight's circus. What are you thinking about so deeply, Little Beaver? Me think him now can spell cat, dog, pig, and other animal. Maybe today me learn them spell lion and tiger when go to circus. That's what I call a top rung idea, son. Mm. Oh, Red Rider, see him just down the road? Many wagons. Maybe they could be circus wagons on way to Devil's Hole. They sure could, little beaver. Mm. What's more, that's just what it is. Look at them, all that guilt and red paint glinting in the sun. Oh, it makes me wish I was your age again. Mm. Red Rider, hear him? Someone tried this last circus wagon train. They're riding right into an ambush. And that lead team scared running away. Pound leather, little people. We've got to ride. Chase him up, Papoose. Run him fast. Get Cut across that brush, fella. Lay onto it hard. Come on, thunder. Behind. That circus crew drive off the sidewinders who were ambushing them? Mm. Wish whackers run for a hill. Good. Then all there's left is for me to stop this runaway team. All right, pour it on, Thunder. All right, steady now. Oh, you panicky move, you. Oh! Slow down there. Ho! Oh. That's it. There you are, miss. You just arrived a little ahead of schedule. Oh, I hardly know what to say. It would have been awful hadn't it been for you. Oh, I'm Norma McCune, owner of this circus. Mm, she owned them circus. Good. Maybe for help, she let us go in for nothing, huh? That'll be enough, little beaver. I'm Red Ryder, Miss McCune. You'll have to forgive my sidekick here, but he's been dreaming of circus day for weeks now. <laughs> I don't blame him. As much as I see of them, I still can't get enough of a circus. Miss, have you any idea who it was who tried to ambush your outfit back down the road? Mm, yes and no. I mean, I know who uh, would try to get rid of the McCune Circus, but I'm sure he isn't in this part of the country. I see. Mind if I ask this hombre's name? Why, no, I guess not. It's Glade Slavens, owner of Slavens Super Combined Shows. He's been trying to put us out of business for years now. One of his men finally got my dad. Mm, I see. Well, I'm plum sorry about this, Mr. McCune. But since everything seems so uncertain, how did it be if Little Beaver and I stuck along with you until we got into town and the fairground? I think that would be wonderful, Mr. Ryder, but... No, never mind the butts, miss. I'm too fond of a circus to stand by while some gun-toting Jasper ruins yours. I'd hear your reins. So let's rejoin your wagons and head for town. <laughs>
That's the Devil's Hole Fairgrounds, miss. Just inside that row of cottonwoods. Follow that cow path. Yeah, that's right. You see it now? It's right Mr. over... Mr. Ryder, look. Those men are putting up tents in there. Well, I wonder where they came from. I wondered, too, till I saw the face of one of them. It's Glade Slavens and his bunch of gun-toting rustics. In that case, let's stop right here and have us a showdown. Oh, thunder. You'd better wait here, miss, while I... Well, Missy, she weighed them. We take them care of her. Look, cowboy, I appreciate your help, but this is my business, and I still run it. If you want to come along... That's all the invitation I need. Oh, oh, put that stick in there, Mac. Oh, put the stick in there. Well, Slavens, it didn't work, did it? Beg your pardon, Miss McCune? You know what I mean, all right. Tried to stampede my wagon train outside of town and then cash in on all the business my show would bring. Maybe you know what you're talking about, but I don't. Mister, that isn't the tone we use out here in talking to a lady. Why don't you go throw your rope, cowboy? This is our busy day. Keep talking like that and it'll be a lot busier than you counted on. Excuse me, Red. Now, Slavens, I'm giving you five minutes to load your outfit and pull out of here. I'm booked into the fairgrounds and I'm going to put on a show. Funny how one little girl can make so many big mistakes. I thought I spoke to you, Slavens, about the tone you're using. If it's trouble you're looking for, Puncher, you don't have to get glasses. You found it right here. I'm not looking for trouble, but I'd be proud to oblige you. Red, please, don't start a fight. He's got a dozen... Well, I don't need more than my own two hands. All right, Redhead. Now get up and get out of here. I'm getting up, but I'm not leaving here yet. Go on, Red. Let him have it. Let him have it with both hands. You like this, Miss Norma? Uh, Since you like this fairground so much, maybe you can get a lot closer to it, Mr. Slavin. Yeah. Rocky! Fargo! Hey, Hey, Rue! Hey, Rue! Come on. What is it, boss? Oh! So that's it. Stand back, boys. He's all mine. Mr. Smart Man wouldn't even remember he was packing a gun. Rocky, quit stalling. All right, boss. I warned you, Rocky, and now if you want to try and fill your hand, go for your gun. That's just what I am doing. Any of you other junks want to have a drawing match? All right, then. Start packing up and clearing out of here pronto. Red Ryder! Red Ryder! Look! Here comes Sheriff running like old plow horse. Well, now, the sheriff will make this dispossessing party nice and legal. What's going on here, anyway? Howdy, Sheriff. Ryder, what in carnation are you doing here with these circus troublemakers? I'll answer that, Sheriff. I'm Norma McCune. My circus is to play here tonight and tomorrow. Yeah? Who said it was? Slavins, I'd hate to have to teach you that lesson in manners all over again. Now hold on. Fist fights, shooting scrapes, we've had enough trouble already. Now, miss, who said your circus is going to play here tonight? Why, why, of course it is. We've played Devil's Hole on this date every year now for the last 16 years. Besides, Sheriff, her circulars have been all over town for a week. Red, you're a mighty handy man in a scrap, but when it comes to law or business, I'll thank you to keep out of it. Just as you say, Sheriff. You bet it'll be just as I say. Now, Miss McCune... What made you think you had exclusive rights to use the fairgrounds? You knew we were coming, didn't you? sure I knew. I can read, especially type as big as you use on them fancy posters. But did you write and ask for permission? No, just like a woman, you took it for granted. Now, hold on, Sheriff. Are you meaning to say you're going to let Slavens keep his outfit here and order Miss McCune off? You're dad blame right I am. Law says without no special agreement, first come, first serve. And Slavens and his shebang got here first. I never heard of such a thing. Why, all of all the unfair, ridiculous... Now, you see, miss, tempers aren't going to help this situation any. Now, I suppose you realize, Sheriff, that you're playing right into this man's hands. He's taking advantage of all the advertising and prestige Miss McEwen has, and still you say it's legal. I guess I know the law. I wonder. Come on, Miss Norma. There are more ways than one of skinning a cat, and in these parts there's a fair-sized body on skins that come off skunks. <laughs> You know, Clay, there's one thing I don't understand yet. How'd you buy off that sheriff? He looks like he eats honesty with his oatmeal in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Why, he's as honest as the day is long. That's what makes him so easy to get to. I don't follow you, boss. All the money he makes is a dollar a day for what prisoners he's got in that two before lockup. So when I came along... Offered to pay a hundred dollars to the sheriff's treasury for the use of the fairgrounds. <laughs> well, you can imagine. That sheriff's just a public spirited citizen. <laughs> we ought to carry him along on a sideshow as a freak. Never mind the bum jokes. Get the men together and wait for Ryder to show his face. Then when he does, make it look like two bits worth of hamburger steak. <laughs> Something to 
Greg, Missy, stop crying. No, no, come on, Miss Norma. <laughs> Buck up, we're not licked yet. No, Mr. Ryder, I'm afraid we are. The worst part of it is I, I've been looking forward to what we've made here to pay everybody. Now I'm afraid there's nothing left to do but sell out to Slavin. You mean if there's enough left of Slavin's to do anything with? What do you mean? Well, first off, you still have several hours before circus time. And no place to set up my tent. I've got a few ideas about that. But the first thing you'll have to do is put on your regular parade. But I don't see what... <laughs> Remember the Pied Piper? <laughs> and how all the rats followed him out of town? Well, that's what I'm aiming to do by having you hold your parade. Get everybody following us. Following us away from the fairgrounds and slave and show. But, but where to? Where can I hold the show? Now, now, let's do one thing at a time. You see, I reckon if Slavens really doesn't want your circus put on, he'll overplay his hand when he thinks he's licked. And if he does, well, that's all I'm waiting for. Mmm, you good idea, Red Rider. Thanks, little beaver. Now, how about it, Miss Norma? Do we have a parade? <laughs> It makes me feel like a ten-year-old kid. <laughs> Say, watch that clown, little beaver. See him turning somersaults right in the street? <laughs> he can turn them somersaults and walk on hands, too. And you like them best effluence. Effluence? <laughs> That's elephants, little beaver. Uh, who care what call them? Me only like fat animal with two tails. One in back, another tail in front. <laughs> Say, little beaver, look, the parade is slowing down. Uh. And I see him. Why? Sheriff, he up at first wagon, talking to Miss Norma. What in thunderation is that sheriff up to now? Come on, little beaver, let's run. Mm. Don't care, can't eat legal. You get that parade off the street. Now, just a minute, sheriff. And what's all this about? Holding a parade without no permit, that's what. By ginger, we got laws in this town, and I'm here to keep them. But I never had to have a permit before. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, miss. Now, what... Who put you up to this one, sheriff? Slavens and his crowd? See here, Ryder. You keep opening your trap, and I'll trap you right down in a nice dark cell. If you didn't have that badge on your shirt... Why, you... Oh. Red Ryder, you let old Billy Goat hit you like that? Nothing much I can do, little beaver, except say that a man his age should have better sense. All right, you better do as he says, Miss Norma. Turn your teams and head out of town. But, but the circus. If I leave town, I won't ever be able to give a show. That's something I wouldn't be too sure of. You advertise a show today, and I'm going to see that the folks of this valley aren't cheated. Come on, little beaver. We've got work to do, and we've got to work fast. We return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. But before we continue with tonight's story, I want all you boys and girls to meet Red Rider in person. Howdy, boys and girls. It's been a real pleasure for me to have appeared before you for the past two months. And I almost feel that I know each and every one of you. Little Beaver and myself appreciate the many letters that we've received from our good listeners. And we're gratified to know that you're enjoying our Red Rider shows three nights a week. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something for our sponsors in appreciation for these shows that you enjoy so much. You know, Langendorf bread has been judged by experts as America's finest. This means that it has all the health-giving qualities to help make you physically fit to do your bit. When you or your mother go to your grocer's to buy bread... Will you please do me a real favor? Always insist on Langendorf bread. I'll sure appreciate it. And I'll have some more good news for you regarding a new club and full particulars on next Thursday's program. Mmm, you betcha. Langendorf bread tastes them swell. And me appreciate it, too, if you get them. <laughs> As we rejoin Red Rider, Red, Little Beaver, Norma McCune, and her entire circus company are working like Trojans. But Rocky runs into Glade Slavin's headquarters tent with the explanation... Boss! Boss! Boss, I just found out what they're up to, and it ain't good. Well, come on. What are they up to? Well, they're going to give their show anyhow. What? What are you talking about now? I'm telling you. That engine kid is running all over town telling people the McCune show is being held out at Painted Valley Ranch. Painted Valley... Whose place is that? I don't go getting any ideas about it. 
That ranch belongs to an aunt of that redhead's. Folks in town call her uh, the Duchess. Oh, so that's it, huh? Well, just like Ryder says, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You got about six men you can spare this afternoon? Is it going to take six to get that guy? It's going to take six for what I got in mind. Go on, now round him up while I figure this thing out right. <laughs> If there's any more help you need, Miss McCune, just let me and my nephew know. Any more help? Well, you've been wonderful already letting me use your ranch to put up my tent. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take any bows for it. I'm not doing it just to be a good neighbor. I get a thrill out of the circus, even at my age. Go on, Duchess. You don't look a day over 20. Oh, well, that's a good one. Use a plenty soft soap. Make a man duchess feel good. That'll be huh. enough out of you, you <laughs> copper-colored scalawag. Remember, if there's anything you want, Miss McCune, just let us know. Oh, that aunt of yours is a wonderful person, Mr. Ryder. Yep, she's got a mother and a father, a school teacher and a judge to me. Mm. She plenty skookum squaw. Voice like big wind, but her heart, heart like spring breeze. Well, I'll be doggone if going to school isn't making you poetic. Mm. No talking about school now. Me want them see circus effluence and clowns. Little Beaver, how would you like to meet one of the clowns? Uh, you only tease me. Oh, indeed not. Diablo, Diablo, come on over here. Yes, Miss Norma, you wanted something? Yes, Diablo. I want you to shake hands with a young friend of mine, Little Beaver. Mm. Howdy, <laughs> Mr. Diablo. Well, tan my hide and call me buckskin. <laughs> I'll bet you he's not a little Indian at all. I think he's a little white girl dressed up in costume. Uh, <laughs> me not no little white squaw. Me fighting Indian brave. You better not make him prove it, Yablo. That fat poo's can handle a bow and arrow better than I can handle a six-gun. Help, help. I take it all back. Don't scalp me with that tomahawk. Uh, you take me over to Ethelance and me no scalp you. <laughs> well, come on, son. I'll introduce you to Mumbo and Jumbo. They're as lazy and tan as they are. <laughs> well, I guess that'll keep little beaver busy until showtime. All right, come on, Miss Norma. There's a lot to do before we can start selling tickets. Yeah. Here's the place, boss. See it? Oh, so that's the Painted Valley Ranch, huh? Well, it's going to look more like a roaring canyon before we get through with it. What are you up to, Blade? You're being mighty mysterious about just how we're going to take care of that McCune girl and her gentleman friend, Ryder. I didn't want to say anything until I was sure. But look down there. See all them cattle? Yeah. Maybe they belong to this old woman who owns Painted Valley Ranch. But what those steers don't know is they're working for us. Come on, boys. Start those horses. <laughs> what they call a midget, little beaver. Yeah, maybe him midget, but him look him like little boy or water be spank him. Him smoke him up big black cigar. <laughs> big black cigars are just midgets' pipes apiece, little beaver. 
Say, by the way, how did you like the effluence? Mm, you better go, <laughs> Miss Jane School. Effluence. Hmm. Diablo, he told me they call them elephants. <laughs> Jack. Well, come on, little beaver. Miss Norma told me she'd have two swell seats for us down front. Yeah, you know Ken White. He think him circus much better going to than happy hunting grounds. Those happy hunting grounds are something to keep in mind. I'm not going to feel clear of them until the show's over and we haven't been bothered by Glade Slavens and his gunmen. That's the prettiest sight I ever saw. What sight? What are you talking about, boss? Them cattle down there. All right, men, now here's what I want you to do. When I give the word, ride down and stampede that herd. Get them away from that ridge and turn them so they run for that circus tent. You mean we're going to stampede them into the tent and ruin that girl's circus? And that ain't all. That head of red hair should make a pretty good target in all that milling around. And there's a $500 bonus for the man who brings me his scalp. Okay, let's ride! <laughs> Sick about this. That stampeding cattle. Everybody, outside the tent. No need to shout, but hurry. Hey, you! Hey, what's the big idea? Slavin's paying you to bring up the show? No, you fool. Someone's stampeding cattle, and they're coming right this way. Adam! They're all animals. Have they ever knocked out the cages? Oh, Norma, Diablo, get your men together, hurry. Have them save the wild animal cages while I see if I can turn off that herd. Little beaver, find your pony and hit the saddle. Our Finding out who they are is my job. You round up as many of the punches as are within earshot and turn that herd back. There, good gravy. Those tears are making right for the wild animal cages. Hurry, run for your horses. There's 600 lives at stake. <laughs> Fix that girl on that smart Alec redhead for good. <laughs> they never knew what hit them. If any of your boys round up some of those cats or elephants that escaped, hold on to them. When I buy out my friend, Miss McCune, I'd like to get every animal that I'm paying for. <laughs> That's a good one, boss. Get everything you're paying for. Well, I guess there's nothing for us to do but go back to town. And... <laughs> hey, what's that? Huh? Boss, that's someone following us. I see him now. It's that... That big redhead, the engine kid, some old lady, and two other men. Why, that fool, if it's trouble he's looking for, let's make sure that he gets it. Spread out. Hey, look. One of them lions loose up above you. Look out. Get a jump. No. What's this? Hey, 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 hey. About kill me. The only reason I shot it was to have what's left of you for myself. A whole thunder. Uh, All right, Slavens. The sheriff's here and listening. Now start talking. Talking? Are you crazy? I had nothing to do with what happened at the circus. Then how do you know about it? I don't suppose it means anything to you that a few hundred women and children could have been killed, you black hearted. Right, you! This, Slavens, you'll be in a cage of your own. Oh. Now, you ready to talk? You've got nothing to hold us on. We had nothing to do with those steers tearing down the tents. We just happened to be mixed up with the cattle, that was all. And by thunder, that'll be enough. Slavens, you can have your hundred dollars back. This town don't rent to no cattle thieves. Cattle stealing is a major crime in these parts. Just enough to put you and your roughnecks behind bars for the next ten years. 
Now, come on. Hey, hey, you can't do that to me. Maybe this will teach you something, Slavens. Next time you try to steal a circus, make sure you don't play your own clown. <laughs> you should have been in court, Red. That judge gave Slavens and his whole gang everything the law allows. <laughs> if they get out under 12 years, I'll eat the jail. Cells, locks, and all. Red, I... Now, look, Norma. You've been doing nothing but thank me for the last three days. I'm convinced. But the way you roped all those wild animals and got them back without hurting any of them... Come on, little Diva. We'd better get out of here before they start pinning medals on us. Yeah, you betcha. Them. They got time for medals from me old men. Get them up, Papoose. Get along. Get. Start running, boy. Hit that trail. We've got to get to Tarantula Springs before Laredo Jim gets out of jail. Come on, thunder! Red Rider and Little Beaver not only risked their lives in saving the circus, but had the time of their lives, too. Every American, no matter how old, no matter how great, still has a special corner of his heart reserved for that grand old institution, the circus. But now that Red and his Indian partner are heading for Tarantula Springs, you can look forward to another rip-roaring, gun-shooting adventure next time you meet America's famous fighting cowboy when he tries to put Laredo Jim Flagger back in jail and re-establish law and order in the smoke-filled valley. Red Rider comes to you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday over these same stations. Tune in again Saturday at 7.30. Red Rider is presented for your enjoyment by Langendorf, bakers of the bread judged America's finest. Today there's a real opportunity for every man and woman to help win this war. Our national defense organizations need all kinds of skilled and unskilled workers. Typists, clerks, fire wardens, filter center workers. There's plenty of work for everyone in America's gigantic war effort. So get in touch with your local Red Cross, USO, or civilian defense headquarters and enroll for victory work. Yes, do your bit. And keep physically fit. Langendorf bread, made with dextrose for extra energy, plus essential vitamins and proteins, will help safeguard your health and give you the mental and physical fitness so needed today. Get the bread judged America's finest. Fresh and tasty Langendorf bread at your grocer's tomorrow. Bread Rider came to you from Hollywood. This is the Blue Network. Langendorf Bread, the fresh and tasty bread judged America's finest, presents the adventures of Red Rider. From out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy. The bill will be, uh, well, $20. Seems a little steep, but that's what it says here in the ordinance. Well, that's funny. My pocketbook seems to be missing. Oh, here. Let me frisk you, Ryder. Well, you sure ain't got it now. I'm sorry, but the law says I'll have to keep you here all night. And just for poking that fellow Bowser in the beezer, too. Now, that's what I call carrying law and order on my two far. But what I can't figure out is what happened to my pocketbook. Tonight's Red Rider adventure, called The Law Comes to Stovepipe, tells the exciting and amusing story of what happens in a small western town when the law swings into the saddle. But right now, we're going to join a football party that's just over. Well, Judy, you look pleased as fun. I am, Mother. Everybody had fun. The game was exciting, and the lunch you served was marvelous. Gee, I didn't know sandwiches could taste so good. Well, you can thank Langendorf Red for that. Langendorf bread makes everything taste extra good because it has lots of extra flavor and freshness. And it also has lots of extra friends since the party. 
Everyone said it really hit the spot. Langendorf bread always hits the spot. Served for snacks, sandwiches, and all meals. That's because Langendorf is a richer, finer bread, brimming with creamy, smooth goodness and oven-fresh flavor. Only top-quality ingredients, milk, fresh wheat shortening, sugar, are used in Langendorf bread. Every flavor-filled loaf is baked with moist heat to protect its freshness, make it stay fresh longer, and it's vitamin and mineral enriched. Tomorrow, get the bread judged America's finest. Fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. Come to stove fight. That is to say, the community now has a town marshal and a jail. To celebrate the momentous occasion, a carnival company has been invited to set up its tents on the main street. But the festive spirit which prevails through most of the town fails to reach into the dismal office of Obadiah Entwistle, the town money bank. Hey, j- just a minute. can't stand listening to people enjoying themselves. I I think it's sinful. Oh, please. Now there ain't no use you're doing that, Mrs. Calvert. I extend your note for 30 days, and I don't intend to extend it another minute longer. Uh, look here, Mr. Antwistle. Antwistle, is... confound it. Antwistle. Oh, Mrs. Calvert's a widow, and after it all, you It ain't no can... fault of mine that a horse kicked her husband in the head. She borrowed money on a place, and she ain't paid it back. And if it ain't forthcoming by tomorrow morning, I'm taking possession. And that's final. But she told you, you that she'd have the money for you in a day or two. She sold some property in the east, but the money's still in escrow. Now, it won't hurt you any to wait a couple of days for it. It ain't a question of being hurt, Ryder. Business is business, and I want what's coming to me. And I got a sneaking hunch you're gonna get it, too. Hey, you shot. You hit red? Kind of like they have trouble down at Carnival Ground. Yes, I, the kind of trouble I know how to deal with. But when I come up against a sniveling old vulture who'd bust in two if you shook a finger at him, I feel as helpless as a kid in swaddling clothes. What? There, you just missed it, boss. Some of the boys caught one of them Carnival grifters listening to customers' pocketbook and... What's the matter, boss? Your collar too tight? Mauser? Take this insolent, red-headed whippersnapper and throw him out of my office. Oh, the bodyguard, eh? Well, anybody who'd work for a penny-pinching old skin flint like you just isn't big enough to throw me out. I'll show you who ain't big enough. So you're heavy enough here, yeah, but your weight isn't well distributed. You could stand a few more ounces under your hat. <laughs> now, ain't that there pitiful sight? It looked like a picture I once seen of a dead whale washed up on the beach. You ain't gonna get away with that! Help! Murder! Police! That means you're a cool control. I'll see, Ken. Let's take me out of here. All right. Help! 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 It wouldn't have hurt that that old tight was down to wait a couple of days. You just like to be a mean. That some people are like that. Yeah, there's some people who put the almighty dollar ahead of everything else. Ant whistles, one of them. Look at that brighter. Men walking the road ahead. Yeah, and from the way he's a dragging his heat, he must have come a long ways. Say, hey, that's funny. When he turned around, saw us coming, he started to run. Let's catch up with him. Come, come on, boy. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody else. See, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little nervous about people that come up behind me. I don't know whether you know it or not, but you're headed away from Stovepipe. 
There isn't another town in this direction for 70 or 80 miles, stranger. Uh, yeah, that's what I was hoping. Uh, uh, you see, I'm, I'm sort of traveling for me health. Uh, I, I was in so fight, but it uh, got a little too hot for me. Well, out here in the West, we don't usually get nosy with stranger, but... You know, you remind me a lot of a fellow that used to hang around Laredo. Now, now, if it's about that stick up in a pool hall, I don't know nothing about it. See, in, in fact, I didn't even know there was one, huh? Well, he, he, this here fellow was known as a Sticky Fingers McGlooch. Now, he used to take ten types of folks on all the street corners. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. You, you ain't buckskin Blodgett. No, I sure am. Well, I'll be, uh, well, how do you... Why, that's been 15 years ago. I'm glad to see you, man. Yeah, that goes double for me. <laughs> but what in thunder reason are you doing a hooking along or way out here? Well, well, it's, it's, it's a long story, Buckskin. I was um, I was taking ten types at the carnival, see, and raking in plenty of the suckers, though, legitimately, too. But uh, I'm getting awful absent-minded lately. I, I, I was looking for me pocket knife to sharpen a pencil, and I... Uh, I must have got my hand in somebody else's pocket. Uh, well, I don't like to bust up this happy reunion, but Mrs. Calvert here has to get back to her ranch. Well, doggone it. In all the excitement, I forgot to do to, to my friend, Sticky. Just hold up the formalities till we get to the ranch, will you, Buckskin? Hey, if you climb on behind me, mister, we'll give you a lift. Well, uh, you, uh, you uh, don't uh, have a step ladder, do you? Well, here, come on up and give me your hand now. All right. I'll pull you up. There you are. Easy, Thunder. Easy, boy. Now, you hang on to it, Sticky. Just ask Isabel. Come on, Emma. Come on, Thunder. Hang on there. You know, Captain, we can't... Hey, uh, can't we uh, get together on this thing? Uh, when I'm coming up, this blooming horse is going down. Was, uh, was awful nice of you to have me for supper with you, Miss Calvert. Why, you was more than welcome, Mr. McGlooch. You never finished telling us why you leave him carnival. Oh, it didn't, huh? Well, you uh, hear something about being absent-minded, you say. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting uh, terrible forgetful lately, and... You... Hmm. Now, where did I get this watch and chain? Gee, that there's my water bear, Sticky. Well, it surely is funny how it got in my possession. You're having company, Mrs. Calvert. There's some gent ambling up to your front door. You know him? Why, that's the new town marshal. What does he want, I wonder? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, terrible thirsty all of a sudden. If you don't mind, I'll just go out to the kitchen and help myself to a dipper of water. Well, it's kind of funny where he got my watch. Come in. What are you fellas named Ryder? Yes, I am. Why? Well, I'm the law in these here parts, and I got a warrant for your arrest on a charge of assault and battery. You've got what? <laughs> Ain't that ridiculous? It's getting so a fella can't have a nice sociable fist fight without the law putting in. Well, who swore up that warrant? Ant Whistle? Yep. And Stove Pipe's got an ordinance that'll back him up in it, too. Well, I guess there isn't much I can do but go along with you then, Marshal. Well, since you're so nice and accommodating about it, I- I'll just book you and let you go out again on bail. Oh, thanks. Well, of course, you'll have to have the cash now. I ain't allowed to take no checks. And Buckskin, you and the little button wait for me here. I'll be back in a couple of hours at the outside. Oh, Red, I'm mighty sorry. The whole thing is my fault. Now, you forget it. That one sock I took at Aunt Whistle's bodyguard was worth it. Poor Red. I shouldn't have asked him to help me in the first place. Nah, don't you worry none about him, ma'am. He'll be back out in the back who's gone and back here before you know it. Cut a pit on his last beat it. Uh, what a long pin. Where's Ryder? Jeepers, don't tell me the law came after him. Oh, man. What's wrong with her? Oh, things are in a terrible mess around here, Sticky. Uh, Mrs. Calder's going to lose a little ranch here tomorrow morning, and, and she's pretty well busted up about it. Oh, gee. Why, on account of money? No, on account of no money. Hey, she's got a $1,200 note due tomorrow and, and nothing paid with. Now, that is, uh, she ain't got it here. Hey, she sold a lot or something in the East, but, but the money's still in escrow. Escrow, huh? Where's that? That's one break I missed. Well, escrow is a sort of a banking term, Sticky. It means you got the money, but you ain't. Trouble is old Aunt Whistle and the wheat and to her money get him here. Aunt Whistle? 
Who's that? Oh, he's a penny pinching old skin fit who's a foreclosing on this here place. Well, and what she needs is some dough to tide her over till hers gets here from escrow. That's right. Well, uh, who is there around this neck of the wood who's uh, pretty well stocked up on uh, lettuce? No, they don't raise no lettuce around here at all. Uh, I mean, uh, who's got enough dough to swing this deal? Providing, of course, they'd uh, let loose of it a little. Well, Aunt Russell just about got it all, Sticky. Oh, but they know you're talking to him. We've tried that already. Mm -hmm. There's an old saying that if at first you don't succeed, uh, don't get discouraged. Uh, what does this old money bags hang his hat uh, I'd kind of like to try my luck. Well, I can point out his office to you, but I can tell you right now, it ain't no use. Well, what do you think of our new jail, Ryder? Uh, nice place. Well, now, let me see. The bail will be uh, $20. Huh? Seems a little steep, but that's what it says here in the ordinance. Well, that's funny. My pocketbook seems to be missing. I know it had had it here with me earlier. Paid for lunch at the hotel dining room. Well, here, let me frisk you, Anna. Well, you sure ain't got it now. Well, I, I'm sorry, but the law says I'll have to keep you here all night. And just for poking that fellow Bowser in the beater, too. That's what I call carrying law and order a mite too far. What I can't figure out is... What happened to my pocketbook? When Red tries to persuade the town money bags to give Mrs. Calvert, her widow, an extension of time on her mortgage, the cowboy becomes involved in a brawl with the old skin flint's bodyguard and is arrested for assault and battery. Meanwhile... An old acquaintance of Buckskin, Sticky Fingers McGlooch, decides that he'll help the woman in her plight. Of the complications that follow, we'll learn in just a moment. But now, a note to early birds. You know that send off to school in the morning sets the youngsters' pace for the whole day. And to make it good, children need a hearty breakfast with lots of flavor and vitality. And that means crisp golden brown toast made from fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. It's a tempting fragrant treat worth waking for. Lots of milk, fresh sweet shortening, sugar, and other top quality ingredients make Langendorf bread flavor rich. And for last longer lasting freshness, every appetizing loaf is baked with moist heat. And Langendorf is a bread with a bonus. It's chock full of pep building vitamins. And so tomorrow, try serving Langendorf bread toasted and serve it always for every meal. Fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. Judged America's finest. Turn to our story of the West that lives forever, we find Buckskin, Little Beaver, and Sticky Fingers McGlooch in the office of Mr. Antwistle. It's night. I, uh, I think one more match will do it, Buckskin. I'm not sure Red Ranger going to like him, Miss. Oh, but we're just borrowing the dough. We're going to put it back. Uh, there. That done it. We'll have to have one more match and see what we got in here. Look at the mint leaves. That no mint leaves. Leaves? That be money. They're green, ain't they? Now, let me see. Uh, 1,200 simoleons is the amount we want. Plus uh, interest. And uh, that just about makes it. You worried about what Red Ranger going to say him about this? Well, he ain't going to like it, I'll tell you that. Oh, we ain't keeping it, though. We're just using it for a few hours, that's all. Can't you get that through your head? I know we're true. What it will put it back. Now, I'll uh, stuff this spontolix in my pocket, and we'll beat it out of here, because... Well, that's funny. Now, where did I get that? Oh, what's the matter, Sticky? Is something wrong? Hey, uh, 
Quite another match, will you? Yeah. Hmm. Somebody's pocketbook. Now, where did that come from? Well, it looked like Red's. Where I got it, I'll just never know. I I'm just terrible forgetful, that's all. Well, come on. If we're going to save the old homestead, we'd better get on our horses. <laughs> and I do hate the thoughts of that. <laughs> and his bodyguard coming in there buckboard sticky. Yeah, and it ain't yet the crack of dawn. He sure ain't wasting any time, is he? Well, let him come. We're ready for him. Whoa, Nelly! Whoa, whoa! Mr. Obadiah Antwistle, I assumes to presume. And who are you? McGlooch is the name. I represent the interests of Mrs. Calvert's late husband, who is now demised. Well, well, what of it? You have business with me, state it. I am what is known in financial circles as a picker-upper. I'm here to pick up that measly little note that you've been kicking up all the fuss about. You don't mean you're, you're going to pay it. Certainly I'm going to pay it. I think your attitude in this matter has not only been infinitesimal and picky-uni, but it's also been small, Mr. Antwistle. Uh, is that an insult to us? I'm not sure yet. Wait. If uh, yous will step into the barn for a minute, we'll conclude this little transaction. I uh, got the money in my pocket. And uh, why go in the barn? Uh, why not hand it over here? My dear Mr. Antwistle, I am a businessman. I'm used to transacting my transactions in an office. I ain't making no financial deals in no corral. See? Kindly come this way. Uh, uh, how about Bowser? Sure, sure. Bring him along. There ain't nobody but cows in there. And they ain't the fussy kind. I ain't sure if I like that or not. See, I have to yell so loud. The party of the first part is in the house asleep. And I don't wish us to have a disturb. See, see uh, I'll stay here and see that Mr. Antwis is horse. Don't get lonesome, Sticky. And don't forget, Buckskin... Don't forget. Well, it's daylight, Ryder. According to the law, you spent the night in jail. Now you're free to go. Fine thing. Here I am cooped up in the jug all night. My friends don't even come to see me. Of course, if you want to stay till seven, you got breakfast coming on the counter, you know. Uh, no, 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 thanks. Just the same. Oh, uh, I'm warning you, Marshal. If that bodyguard of Ant Whistles ever gets in my way again, I may turn out to be a permanent guest of yours. <laughs> and the joke is, Bowser, that fellow McCoops give me two fifty dollar bills too much. <laughs> Did something happen? Yeah, yeah. The wheel come off the backboard, can't you see? Anybody get him hurt? Say, did you see anything of my store teeth? I still can't figure out what made that wheel come off. Say, you, you, you sure got yourself all dirty, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, here, here. I'll help you up and brush you off. Uh, wait a brushing. I'll do the brushing. Uh, uh, let me help you up, Mr. Ant Whistle. Mm, thanks. We're right in them, Buckskin. Yeah, looking black as a thundercloud. Move, move, honey. Say, does it happen to interest you that I've been locked up in the stove pipe jail since last night and all on account of that mangy varmint you're brushing off so carefully? Yeah? Well, you better stop that kind of talk. You slipped over a lucky punch before, but this time, I'm going to tie you in a little piece. Of... Uh, uh, if you had teeth, you'd bite me here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of getting monotonous, ain't it? Here comes Marshall again. Had it again, eh? Whoa, 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 whoa now. Oh, yeah, Marshall. 
I was afraid something like this was going to happen. I again charge that man with assault and battery on the person of my bodyguard. And I demand that you do your duty. Well, I'm sorry, Ryder, but... Yeah, I... no, I know. The law's no. come to stew. Pipe, all right, Marshal, let's go. But this time, some of my friends had better come and bail me out. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, did you drop this uh, pocketbook by any chance? Well, yes, I thought I'd lost it. Thanks. Where'd you find it, Sticky? Uh, I don't know. I'm just getting terrible forgetful lately. Well, there. Aunt Whistle's dough was back in his safe. Mrs. Calvert's notice paid off, and everybody's square with a board. Do you come in, Aunt Whistle? Yeah. And, and he's getting us red-handed in his office. I'll be getting to town so quick. Well, look who's here. Do you mind telling me what you three are doing in my office? Uh, uh, not, not at all. No, no, we're here because... And where did you get that watch you're, you're swinging around with a chain? Uh, uh, no use to talk, and I, I, I sure I'm getting forgetful. I asked you where you got my watch. Well, I, I, I wasn't sure it was yours, see? So I, I, I brung it over to find out, and that's what we're doing in your office. Well, give it here. You didn't happen to find my store teeth, did you? Uh, no, no, not that I recall. Uh, come on, Buckskin, I think we better be getting along. And, uh, good day again, Mr. Rantwistle. Uh, remember me to the missus. <laughs> quaint character, Bowser. Uh, very quaint. As soon as I put this 1200 in the safe, why, we'll... Uh, Bowser, it's gone. Not the money. Uh, the 1200 McGooch give me. I've been robbed. Oh, don't look at me. I get it, Bowser. I get it. How did McGooch get my watch? And how did he get into my office when the door was locked? Hi, there are a gang of thugs and pickpockets. That's... Shall, shall I get the marshal for you? No, no, no. This is no matter for the law. A crime has been committed. So go round up a posse of citizens. Them blasted thieves don't know it, but they're going to attend a party. A necktie party with them, the guests of honor. Although his intentions are doubtless the best, Sticky Fingers McGlooch has certainly complicated things for America's famous fighting cowboy. And for the action-packed climax to our story, we'll return in just a few seconds. You know, energy is a pretty precious item these busy days of building a secure future. And if you want your family to get the extra energy they need at every meal, try including fresh, delicious Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 wheat bread in your daily menus. Every tempting loaf of Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 wheat bread is fortified with 750 units of Vitamin B1. Yes, 750 units of energizing, vitalizing B1 in every loaf. And you get a large serving of extra flavor, too, with Dr. Pentland's vitamin B1 wheat bread. It has a distinctive wheaty, nut-like flavor that adds hearty enjoyment to every meal. For stepping up energy and pepping up appetites, try fresh, delicious Dr. Pentland's vitamin B1 wheat bread. Ideal for reducing diets. As we get back to our adventure with America's famous fighting cowboy we find that a mob of irate citizens led by Obadiah Entwistle have now rounded up Buckskin and McGlooch and are about to take the law into their own hands. You two thieving polecats, anything to say before we drive them horses out from under you and leave you dangling from that limb? Only that you're, you're making a doggone serious mistake. There's law in this fight now, and every one of you's going to pay for this year. And that's the kind of thanks I get for bringing back your watch. Ah, that up. Let's sing them up, boys, and get it over with. <laughs> the little engine's breaking the help. Here comes that redhead. Now, Marshal, boy. Stand your ground, Marshal. Stand your ground. Well, here's Mrs. Calvert, and she's got your money for you. Ant Whistle. You just come in by telegraph. Money? Why, now, I... Now, untie those men and be quick about it. Listen, you. You better than our business for the last time. Mister, I don't think you've got very good sense. Oh. Oh. I... I charge that man with assault and battery on the first of my bodyguard. Marshal, do your duty. Not this time, Obadiah. 
What you are going to do is in violation of city ordinance 13. I'm arresting you for disturbing the peace, assault, kidnapping, and attempting homicide. And for them crimes, there ain't no bail. Well, thanks to you and your friends, Red, my troubles are all over. Yeah, and Aunt Russell is just the beginning. Not that thieving old skin fence are getting just what he deserves. Well, I'm getting out of here. The wild and woolly west ain't no place for sticky fingers, McGlooch. <laughs> Well, if you want to ride with us as far as Devil's Hole, you can catch a train from there. Listen, Rat, the only time I'm going to have anything more to do with horses is when they're pulling a hearse and I'm in it. <laughs> well, uh, so long, Sticky. It's my night to see you again. Yeah, the same here. I. Th- hey. That's a funny thing. How did these things get in the hip pocket? What things? Why, this sort of false teeth. Oh, 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 And so we say so long to America's famous fighting cowboy and his two compadres for tonight. Red Rider is presented for your enjoyment by Langendorf Bread, the fresh and tasty bread judged America's finest. But Red, Buckskin, and Little Beaver will all be back again next Tuesday night at 7.30 in a new Western adventure story packed with action and suspense. For now, this is Owen James speaking for Langendorf Bread and saying good night until next Tuesday night at 7.30. <laughs>Tasty Langendorf bread. It makes such a delicious, tempting addition to any meal. For breakfast, fresh Langendorf bread toasted a good golden brown hits just the right spot with sleepy appetites. For lunch, a tender, tempting sandwich made with Langendorf bread is really a meal in itself. And for supper, serve Langendorf bread plain with butter, jam, or preserves, and every member of the family will comment on its luscious, rich flavor. Yes, there's real zest in your daily meals when you serve this flavorful bread. Moist air baked in moist air ovens so that it stays deliciously fresh for the very last creamy white velvet smooth bite. Baking experts have judged it America's finest bread, and you'll agree. From now on, make Langendorf bread your daily bread, both for goodness sake and for energy's sake. You'll really like it. unforgettable year of action and danger behind him, it seems that trouble shall always be the fate of America's famous fighting cowboy. 
Because the shadow of gunplay and swift striking murder again cast clouds over the peaceful range around Painted Valley. Word has just reached the ranchers that a wagon train of homesteaders is creaking slowly across the mountain pass, which leads to the rich, wide valley. And, alarmed lest their range be invaded, the ranchers have gathered at the Devil's Hole Town Hall in a lusty and noisy protest meeting. Come on, handle Jesus. It'll let a man have his say instead of all flattened at once like sheep. All right, all right. Now, go on, Red. I've had my say, Duchess, and I suppose you have yours. Well, all I gotta say is, I don't hanker after nesters any more than the rest of you. But not liking him, don't give me no lawful right to try to drive him out of here. I am right. Left alone, 80% of those nesters will have given up and moved on a year from now. Yeah, oh, sure. Give them a year, like Red says, and 90% of us will be moving out with them. Show me a nester and I'll show you a cattle thief. They're a mangy, flea-bitten bunch of sheep-stealing owl hooters, a lot of them. Let me ask you a question, Bray. Yeah, Ryder, what is it? How did you get your range? Why, what do you mean? You didn't buy it, did you? Oh, I don't mean that. I don't mean you stole it. But if memory serves me, your place was a homestead not too many years ago, just like most everyone else's around here. Sure, that was ten years ago. But conditions have changed. By that, I take it you mean nesters have only become a mangy, flea-bitten bunch of owl hooters since you settled here. <laughs> now look here, Ryder. Are you trying to make a fool out of me? You don't have to answer that, Red. Nature beats you to it. <laughs> well, Grace, your neighbors seem to have answered that question for me. You're a pack of mule-headed jackasses, a lot of you. A lot of us, eh? Then that would include me and my aunt. Well, Brace, did you mean that? I ain't making no exceptions. Especially not in your case, you red-headed, loud-mouthed, smart aleck. You wouldn't like to step outside, would you? I may have a way of making you take that back. Yeah? Well, I've got a way of taking care of your kind. Right here. Red, look out! Go on, Brace. You started to scratch leather. What's stopping you? Nothing, you long-legged... <laughs> Too bad about knocking the butt off your forty-four, Brace. But a man who handles a gun like you do doesn't need a coat. You do just about as much harm with a cat pistol. All right, Ryder. Go on, have it your way. When them nesters come in and your cattle start to turn up missing, don't come looking to me for help. They'll rob you blind, and I'll be mighty glad of it. glass of water and just leave the box. Well, what happened to you, Brace? You look like 18 weeks of Texas rain. Well, I thought I'd find you here, Slip. Come on, let's go over to that empty table and sit down. Sure, sure. Well, boss, the meeting didn't go so good, is that it? Well, it would have if it hadn't been for that loudmouth writer. Yeah, someone ought to take care of him. Yeah? Well, I'm not wasting any time or lead on writer. Yeah. What we got to do is make sure them nesters never reach Devil's Hole. Well, why don't you wait and see if any of them happen to settle that little piece around Catamount Pass first? If they don't file a claim on it, you got nothing to worry about. No, sir, Slip. While well, Catamount Pass is the shortest way out of this valley to the railhead, I've either got to own it or give up all I've been working for the last two years. Well, it's okay with me, Murray. But since the ranchers don't seem to want to keep the nesters out, how do you figure you can do it alone? By stopping them from ever getting here. Now, go on. Round up a dozen men who want to get paid for a little target practice. I'll meet you in that sycamore grove on the south slope of Snow Peak Mountain. And be sure you've got plenty of ammunition, Slip. Because before we're through, there ain't going to be nothing left but smoke and a lot of body. That meeting. Well, thanks, Duchess. Yeah, you're talking plenty good sense, Red Rider. Make them other people understand that Mister's entitled to have a decent chance. Well, now, maybe I ought to run for Congress or something with two such loyal supporters as you. Now, I wonder how soon that wagon train of homesteaders will descend on us. Until they get here, I can't help feeling a little nervous. Why, Red? Why should you feel nervous? Red Rider, from the sound of shooting, that must be wagon train and road that passing by Snow Peak Mountain. Oh, darn it, I had a feeling in my bones something like this would happen. Get him up, Papoose. Get along. Get him. those legs, Thunder. Let's have some speed. Come on, Thunder. Come 
around them just like a bunch of yellow jackals. Run if it even looks as if the odds were against them. I'd like to, I'd like to see them on road. A couple of homesteaders' horses frighten them by shots. Some of them run them away. And maybe get them into plenty of trouble. Wait a minute. See, cutting across the rocks, away from the wagon? Looks like a little boy or a girl on a horse that's got the bit in his teeth. Little Viva, the Duchess and I will do what we can about stopping your wagons. You veer off here and see if you can't cut off that runaway pony. Think you can do it all right? Uh, no, we're about to him. But sure can try him. Get along, Papoose. Get! feel a lot happier if I knew what happened to Pam, my little girl. Well, Mr. Sir, that's one worry you can get rid of. See, here she comes now, with Little Beaver leading a pony. Well, nice work, son. You're getting to be a real He-Man. Daddy! Oh, Daddy, are you all wrong? <laughs> Bounced around a little, but oh, thank goodness nothing happened to you. Oh, Daddy told me now. Oh, boy. Well, Redskin, as soon as I get my homestead filed, my cabin built, Sam and I are going to give you the biggest dinner you ever ate, aren't we, darling? Yes, indeed, Daddy. Little Beaver certainly saved my life. <laughs> well, till you get settled, Mrs. Barrett, we got enough for all of you to eat at Painted Valley. <laughs> well, thanks, Duchess. May take you up on that. But first, I think I'd better be getting into Devil's Hole and stake another claim. Oh, before you leave, Mr. Stewart, did you get a look at any of the men who staged that raid on the wagon train? No, sir. I can't say that I rightly did. They were hidden by the rocks. Red, look, up there, halfway up Snow Peak. Isn't that Brace Bendix? Well, if it weren't for this confounded son, I could see better. Yes, it certainly looks like Brace. And if it is, I'd bet you a penny to a possum he had his fine polecat's hand in this raid someplace or other. Hey, Brace! Bendix! Well, either he can't hear me or doesn't want to. Maybe this will attract his attention. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> now, that's the trouble with nesters. That's in my tender feet. Oh, that's a <laughs> nice way to talk, little beaver. Well, I guess maybe I shouldn't have fired those shots without warning you. Just who was that man, right? Eh? A rancher by the name of Brace Bendix. A mean, ornery cuss who hasn't made any bones about not wanting you homesteaders in his valley. But, but why? Surely we aren't going to harm him, none. No, of course not. But if I'm any judge of men, and Bendix hardly qualifies for that classification, he's got something up his sleeve which you're coming in here might spoil. And if what he has up his sleeve is another gun... There's not going to be any peace around here until either Bendix or I carve that wood on a stone. A headstone reading, Rest in Peace. We return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. How about it, ladies? Are you having trouble slicing bread these days? Well, if you're buying fresh and tasty Langendorf bread, you're probably having less trouble than a lot of folks. But there is an art to slicing bread. And here are four simple rules that will help you get neat, even slices. First, You are listening to the Red Rider program, originally broadcast over the western leg of the Blue Network on January the 19th, 1943. ...towards you. Third, hold the knife horizontal to the cutting surface and cut with a gentle sawing motion. Fourth, 
keep your eye at the bottom of the loaf where you want the slice to end. And here's another tip. Langendorf bread is easy to slice. Its fresh firmness helps you cut clean, even slices that are just right for sandwiches, for meals, and for your automatic toaster. So try easy slicing Langendorf bread. You'll like its tenderness, its aroma and flavor. Judge America's Finest. And now for the second act of tonight's Red Rider story of the West that lives forever. Having been just in time to frustrate the raid on the wagon train of homesteaders, Red and his aunt, the Duchess, have taken a personal interest in homesteader Sterrett, as has Little Beaver and Sterrett's eight-year-old daughter, Pamela. As we join them now, Pamela and Little Beaver are playing in front of the huge shady porch of the painted valley ranch. <laughs> that isn't fair, oh. Little Beaver. Throw the ball to me. Well, okay. But if me threw them, you catch them. Watch! Oh, we knew him that was going to happen by trying to play ball with little squirrel girl. Little Beaver, what's the matter with you? You go pick up that ball yourself. It isn't manner to expect a girl to do it. Well, if little girl's no chasing ball, we should play him ball. I'll go with you too, Little Beaver. I'll help you find it. You know, Duchess, that Indian's grown up. A year ago, he wouldn't deign to have been caught playing ball with a little girl. Are you sorry? I know too sure she little go. She might eat enough to be a little boy. King how? will you stop that constant complaining? Pamela taught you how to make drop biscuits, didn't she? Oh, drop me. Oh, I hate to understand what he just said. All right, Ching, back in the kitchen with you. It's getting dark, and it's about time to be thinking of supper. Yes, and it's time the little beaver was taking Pamela home. Her daddy will be wondering where she is if she's not back before sunset. Pam, darling. Yes, Annie Duchess. You go get your things on. Little beaver will ride home with you. Well, okay, Annie Duchess. Me do them. Well, I must say, a little girl living in the neighborhood has certainly helped that young sir. Well, if that's the reason you induced her father to file a claim on that barren hunk of rock you picked out for him around Catamount Pass, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, well, you know that wasn't the reason, Duchess. But I figured if the railroad ever decided to come in from the southwest, that little barren hunk of rocks, as you call it, would be worth some real money. And that's a lot better than Sterrett working his heart out trying to make a living raising cattle year after year. Oh, well, I guess you're right at that, Red. Pamela tells me that her father's health hasn't been so good ever since her mother died. Now, if Bruce Bendix will keep his mouth shut and leave him alone, maybe the poor man will do all right. You still got it in your head that it was Brace who tried to drive the homesteaders off the other day over by Snow Peak Mountain, haven't you? Yes, and so have you. But with that stubborn, red-headed streak of yours, you won't even admit it until you got enough proof to hang him. Well, I'll promise you one thing. If he starts anything again, that is, of course, if it was Brace, he'll hang all right if I have anything to do with it. Goodbye, Annie Duchess, and thanks Bye. for the cookies and the milk and the chocolates and everything. Let me get them, Toby, and take them Pam home now, Red Rider. But be him back in plenty time for supper. Goodbye, Pam, and remember me to your father. What's the matter with you, Duchess? You've got a faraway look in your eye like a girl with her first bowl. <laughs> you know what I was thinking, Red? Little Beaver and Pamela make a mighty handsome-looking young couple, ain't that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. You're nothing but an old matchmaker. And if you don't mind some good advice, Aunt Harriet, you spend less time thinking about Pamela and more about her father. A polecat like Brace Bendix, if it is Bendix, mind you, isn't going to give up without a lot more scheming and gun smoke. Okay, okay, so I was wrong. I was wrong, Brace. But you make mistakes, too. Well, I certainly made a mistake when I let that mangy nester stare at come in and stake out Catamount Pass on me. Well, if Ryder hadn't helped him keep it so blame quiet, I might have found out in time to stop him. So what I'm in here for is to find out what the next move is and who makes it. The next move is the thing we should have done first, getting rid of stare mm -hmm. And I don't know a better man to make a move like that than you, Slip. <laughs> Little Beaver. I never... Oh, Papoose. 
Little beaver, what was that? That noise? That pussy bird noise. Sound of shot. They're coming right from your house. From my, from my house? Yeah. Oh, little beaver. You don't think anything happened to, to Daddy? I oh, mean, hope I'm not, but look. Somebody ran him away from house. But so dark, I can't see him who it is. Oh, little beaver. If anything happened to Daddy, I... Well, no good send him here. We got to get him down to ranch house quick. Get up there, Toby. Ow! Have a look, quick. Get behind me. Somebody see him is coming. And no one must have seen him then. Oh, my goodness, little beaver. Yeah, well, now you don't have to worry, Pamela. Nobody scared him off, little beaver. Get him up, Papoose. Get along. Everything, Red Rider. Don't know him no more about who killed him, Mr. Starrett. If I ever get my fingers around the neck of the buzzard who did it, I'll... The worst part of the whole thing is to see him Pamela cry. Yes, yes, I know, son, but she'll be all right. Andy Duchess has taken her upstairs now and made her lie down. Oh, what a foul-hearted bunch of coyotes they must be imagined, throwing shots at a youngster like you. We think of that because killer figure me see him. Yes, probably, but the rotten part of it is you didn't see him. Now, son... You know as well as I do that I'll never have a moment's peace until I run that murdering polecat down. Yeah. And since we didn't catch Bendix actually doing the killing, don't you think to be fair about it, we ought to give him a second chance? Second chance? Well, what for? And already kill him one man. Yes, that's true, except that in the eyes of the law, no one saw it. But if you're willing to pitch in and help out, I've got an idea that ought to appeal to Bendix. Because from the viewpoint of a slimy killer like that, it's as easy as shooting fish in a barrel. Are you game, son? You don't have to ask me twice, Red Rider. Anytime Little Beaver can help a new fine killer who gunned down Pamela's father, we go in with you no matter how long his trail. You betcha. Him. You're a loco, Sheriff. You sent for me to come over here because you think I killed Sterrett. Now, don't go flying off the handle, Bendix. I'm only doing what every sheriff's got to do. After the way you shut your face off at that big meeting before the homesteaders got here, naturally people started talking. Well, you can tell them to quit their talking. Five men will testify that I was in Hanlon's Cafe between sundown and 8 o'clock last night. Well, I know, I know, Brace. But I still had to ask you. Well, thanks for coming in, and I'll see that nobody goes around saying things. Well, Mr. Beaver. Hello, sir. What are you doing in here, Bendix? What do you think I'd be doing any place when you come in? Getting outside where the air smells better. A couple of the boys thought Brace might have had a finger in Starr's killing. Well, they all wrong, Sheriff. Killer not Mr. Bendix. Yeah? What makes you say that, Injun? Because Little Beaver had a good look at the killer, Brace, and he doesn't answer your description. That's why I brought him into the Sheriff. If he's the only witness who can identify the killer, for his own sake and for the sake of the state, I figure he ought to be kept locked up. You mean put Little Beaver in a cell, Red? That's exactly what I mean. And since Bendix is leaving anyhow, I suggest you get your keys out and not waste any time. Brace, I'm telling you, if, if I could hardly make him out, how could that engine have seen me? Now look, Slip, I'm not taking any chances. I know you and your kind. If they ever got you locked up, you'd yell like a stuck pig. I don't want the one around here yelling my name. Ah, you make me sick. I ain't gonna squeal on you. You're right about that, friend. You're not gonna have a chance to squeal. Because tonight, when that broken-down deputy, the sheriff leaves to guard the jail, is on duty, you and I are going over and make sure that little redskin heathen never lives to identify you. Oh, but jeepers, Brace. Gun him down a kid and shut up. From now on, you're doing as you're told. Exactly as you're told. Claim I guess nothing more is going to happen tonight, so I think I'll mosey along home and go to bed. Now, go ahead, Sheriff. No reason for you to stay here because little beaver's locked up. Yeah. Well, what's some good? Yeah. Well, good night, Claim. I'll bring you your breakfast over in the morning. All right. All right, you old coop. Keep your hands away from your gun and get them up. Why, you can't Slip. shine. You can't have no noise. I'll grab him before I get that shotgun. What do you mean? You play it, fool. You might get hurt. Let's go keep you quiet. 
That's it, Slip. Now get those keys and open that gate. Right, Marsh. Hey, Brace, look. This is going to be a pinch. That engine's on his cop. Fast asleep. He couldn't miss him from here with a slingshot. Yeah? Well, I'm not taking no chances on you missing. This is one job I'm going to do myself. That's one engine who won't do any talking. You'll talk, all right. You'll talk on the stand with the sheriff and me, testifying how you tried to murder him. Won't you, little beaver? You bet him. And this time we see him whole thing. Brace. Brace, that engine. Where did he come from? He came out of the cell you're both going to occupy. Except that he came out a long time ago. And if the bullets we found in that mattress under his blanket on the cot match the slugs they took out of Mr. Sterrett Brace, we've got you on a charge of double murder. You haven't got me yet, Ryder. <laughs> I've got a little sewing to do myself, Sheriff. A nice short fish right to the point of the jaw. Gosh, Red Rider, you swing your mom so fast, look him like locomotive pistons. Well, the only thing we've got to do him now is pull him into court and testify. When those two coyotes wake him up. Got a face on him as long as Ching Hao's winter underwear. <laughs> What's the matter, little beaver? Feeling bad because we just put Pamela on the train and sent her back east to her grandmother? <laughs> you shouldn't be treating him like a cub anymore, Duchess. Little beaver took a big chance in helping us catch Brace Bendix. Yes, sir, he acted like a real man. Now, never mind trying to make me feel good. We just want to get him home and see him alone for a little while. Get him up, Apples. Get along. Go ahead if I don't think you're right, Duchess. I'm afraid Pamela is carrying Little Beaver's heart back east on the train with her. All right, boys, stretch out. Come on, Sunday. There'll be more news of America's famous fighting cowboy in a second or two. But right now, Red Rider himself wants to talk to you. Yes, I do want to talk to you briefly on a matter which is very close to my heart. Of all the mail I've received from you listeners... The letter which touched me most was from a youngster in Northern California who hoped that someday he'd be able to do all the things Red Rider does. Today he can't, because he's been struck down by one of America's greatest enemies, infantile paralysis. Are you men and women, boys and girls who are enjoying the blessings of fine physical health, can help little Bobby and thousands of others to grow up to be useful and worthwhile citizens. You can do it this week, right now. By sending a single dime in an envelope merely addressed to President Roosevelt at the White House. Help these unfortunates up, and they'll never let you down. like a man in more ways than one, didn't he? But maybe when St. Valentine's Day comes around, if he hears from Pamela, he may be feeling a little better. And now, long before St. Valentine's Day, America's famous fighting cowboy rides into a blistering new adventure. Yes, sir, I mean next time. A red-hot, scorching thriller that you won't want to miss. So until then, so long, and keep thinking of your old friend, Red Rider. <laughs> Red Rider comes to you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at the same time. Tune in again Thursday evening at 7.30 for the next exciting story of the West that lives forever. Red Rider is presented for your enjoyment by Langendorf, bakers of the bread judge, America's finest. This program comes to you from Hollywood. This is the Blue Network. The Red Rider Program, from January 19th, 1943.
You are listening to Same Time, Same Station. This is KRLA Pasadena. One hour from now, it's 9 o'clock. From out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Fly clear across the country in the friendly skies for only $119. It's United's love affair to New York. One way, any day, Monday through Thursday on our nonstop flights to New York. Just $119 for full friendly skies service from coast to coast. Just buy your ticket by January 31st and complete your trip by March 31st. That should be easy. There are no advanced purchase requirements either. You can buy your ticket, get on the plane, and love that fare all the way to New York. Just $119. Don't you love it? You're not just flying. You're flying the friendly skies. Leave on the weekends, and the fare is still a lovable $149. United flies to New York from L.A. Call your travel agent or United. attempt to catch their breath from their last whirlwind adventure, Red Rider and Little Beaver have returned to the home ranch. But trouble, ominous trouble, is brewing for him about a hundred miles away from home. As the curtain rises tonight, we are in Horseshoe Valley, in the large comfortable parlor of Alex Carter's Bucking Horse Ranch. A tall, swarthy, well-built man is talking to Rancher Carter. You talk like a fool, Carter. Why should we break our necks raising horses just to do the government a favor? Dawson, you said just about enough. I'm not making any agreement to hold the government up for high prices, and that's that. So you might as well pick up your hat and go about your business. Who do you think you are, ordering me out? I've got a good mind to knock your teeth right back in your throat. That's the best suggestion you've made since you come in, Elo. Do you want to try it? Uh, you mangy old sheep stealer. I don't need that invitation. Wait. Are you leaving? I've been itching to do this ever since you moved into Horseshoe Valley. Yo, yo, it's all over by the time I get through with you. Yeah. Why, you're through right now with this. Oh. All right, Dawson. Now get up from there and clean out of here. Elo, for pity's sakes, man, what you doing with that six gun? I'm going to use it, Carter. Use it on you. Knock me around, will you? Well, your knocking days are all over. Dawson, drop that coat. Did you hear me? Drop that gun to the floor, or so help me, this rifle will make your back look like a sieve. I'm not waiting, Dawson. Drop that gun. I'm in business, Hilo. And you better drop oh, that right, gun. All right, young lady. But this is only the start. Dad, pick up his gun. I don't trust a snake like that. Open the door for him, Marge. Open it and leave it open. I want to get that smell out of here. All right, Dawson, move. On your way. Uh-huh. Remember what I said. This is only the beginning. Only the beginning. And I'll still be around for the final showdown. Keep it, Hilo. If Alec Carter won't come in with us, your whole idea's all gout up. He's got more horses on that ranch of his than anybody, except you. A lot of good them horses are going to do him when I get through with them. What do you mean when you get through with them? With the Army opening two new cavalry posts around here, selling them horses is too good a business to let one addle-brained old billy goat like Carter ruin it. It's easier to ruin Carter. Ruin him? What do you mean, Hilo? You ever notice that Carter runs his life like he runs his ranch? 
On schedule? Yeah. Matter of fact, every morning when I see him pass by heading for town, <laughs> I know it must be 11 o'clock. That's right. Goes to town at 11, picks up his mail and supplies, and comes back through Mile High Trail about quarter after two. Regular as clockwork. What are you driving at, boss? I'm driving at Ron Horseshoe Valley the way I want to. And I'm not letting Alex Carter stand in my way. It's too late to do anything about it today. But you know where that little bridge is on Mile High Trail? The one across the Little Arroyo? Yeah, sure. Well, tomorrow, a little before two, I want you and a couple of the boys up at that bridge with some saws and sledges. Cut most of the underpinning out, but leave it so it looks whole. Understand? Now I get it. Old man Carter will ride onto the bridge, and when it gives way... <laughs> well, you know what folks will say? Poor old Alec Carter. <laughs> he got killed in an accident. something there so the bridge don't cave in before he gets on it. Hey, Luke, look! Here comes old man Carter now. Come on, boys. Hit them horses and get out of here before he spots us and suspects something. Come on, come on, get down here! Come on, get down here! Come on, get down Thunder, watch it. Now, what was that again, little beaver? They're just asking me why they call him this place Horseshoe Valley, Red Rider. Valley no good in shape of horseshoe. No, it hasn't, but... Well, I understand the valley originally got its name because almost all the ranches over here are horse ranches. Consequently, the most popular pastime is horseshoe pitching. Did you ever play any horse... Excuse me, Red Rider, but look, um, see him down there? Little bridge all bust him up and fallen down the bottom of a royal. Good night. Say, wait a minute, rain up. That looks like a horse down there with his rider sprawled over the rock. Mm. Oh, Papoose. Oh, boy. Mm. Come on, son. If he's still alive, there may be some chance. Here, take my hand. That's it. Hey, good heavens, little beaver. Do you know who this man is? It's Alex Carter, the man who sent me that telegram. Is he... Is he dead, Red Rider? I'm afraid that Alex was gone before... Little beaver. Little beaver, he's still alive. Just the faintest kind of pulse, but I can feel it. Here, help me swing him up on my shoulders, and we'll get him over to the Bucking Horse Ranch and to a doctor as fast as we dare. Yeah. Hurry, little beaver. A second wasted, maybe a second too long. No one will ever tell me there's no such thing as a providence, Red. The doctor says if you had come by five minutes later... Dad wouldn't be here tonight. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Marge. I think you were wise in sending to San Francisco for that specialist. I've known a few men to be paralyzed like your father, and it can be an awful thing. A living death. Pretty funny thing how that bridge happened to fall him down, Oh, Red it should have been replaced years ago. The timbers which braced it were old and rotten. Oh, they were old, all right, Marge. But they weren't rotten enough to give away under the weight of one horse and one man. What do you mean, Ray? Well, as we carried your dad back up to the road, I noticed something a little pile on the ground. Sawdust. You mean that... No, I I don't believe it. Why should anybody saw through the lumber and wreck the bridge? Well, I'm afraid that's one question I can't answer. I thought maybe you might be able to help me figure it out. Must be him somebody your father having trouble with, Miss Marge. Otherwise, why should him telegraph to Red Rider and ask him to come him down here to help him out? But that was different. That was... Well, you might call it a business quarrel between Dad and Hilo Dawson. What do you mean, a business quarrel? Well, from all I can gather, Dawson wanted all the ranchers to form a combine to hold up the government for the horses they'll need for their two new cavalry posts, and... Well, it never fails. See there, Red? Just tying off at the corral? That's Hilo Dawson himself. Well, he looks harmless enough. But tough, too. As hard as nails and as cold as ice. Well, I'll be interested in meeting the gentleman. Very interested. Evening, Miss Marge. May I come in? Yes, I guess so, Dawson. Come on. Well, now, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had callers. It's quite all right, Dawson. 
This is an old friend of ours, Mr. Ryder from Devil's Hole and his pint-sized Indian partner, Little Beaver. Howdy, boys. Glad to know you. Pleased to meet you, too, Mr. Dawson. I suppose you heard about Marge's father. Yes. Yes, I did. That's why I came over. If I were you, Marge, I'd certainly slap a suit against the county. <laughs> Imagine leaving a rotten old bridge like that one up on Mile High until it gives way and almost kills a man. Yes. Imagine. Uh, what did you say? I guess I wasn't clear at that. What I meant to say was the county had nothing to do with the bridge collapsing. Oh, it didn't, eh? Well, <clears throat> when did you say you arrived in Horseshoe Valley? Around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Why? Because in the next few hours you've been here, you seem to know a lot more about what's going on than all the rest of us combined. Well, it was Red who found Dad. And that wasn't all he found. Just to keep the record straight, Dawson, that bridge didn't give way. The underpinnings were sawed through. Are you sure about that, Ryder? I'd stake my life on it. That's rather a sizable bet, ain't it? Yes, it could be. Do you, uh, do you know anybody who might have some reason for seeing that the bridge crashed? Mr. Carter along with it? No. Why should I? I don't know. But looking at it only as a matter of circumstantial evidence, Dawson, if I were in your boots, I'd try to find the man or men who did the job. Now, wait a minute. Just because I flew off the handle over here yesterday, you're not trying to say that I had anything to do with that bridge, are you, Ryder? Oh, did I say anything about Dawson being mixed up in the bridge crashing? No, I sure didn't. I only said that if I were in his boots, I'd find out who did it. Ryder, I've got a sneaking feeling that your own boots will be more important to you. You may die with them on. You mean from another accident? Why, oh, you loudmouth. Now, look, Ryder, I don't know what your game is, and I don't care. But one thing I'm sure of... You go around accusing me of trying to kill Alex Carter, and I'll show you what killing really is. I've got my gun on. Or is that what's stopping you? Why, you cheap hypocritical... Dad, look out! I generally hit what I aim for, Dawson. This time it was just the barrel of your gun. The next time my temper might get the best of me. You're very smart, ain't you? Show off stuff. Now look, Dawson. A man was almost killed today by one of the lowest, most despicable sidewinding schemes I ever heard of. I don't know who tried it. But if you happen to run across the man who did, just tell him for me. I'm not going to rest until one of us crosses another bridge. The bridge across the river stakes. That's all, Dawson. You'd better be leaving. We return to the adventures of Red Rider in just a moment. Hello, and welcome to Hughes Market Hotline. Today's topic, pickiness. If you've shopped at a market as picky as Hughes, let's talk. Call me at Klondike 5 4454. That's Klondike 5 4454. Pickiness. If you're in the valley, dial 1 and 213. I was afraid of this. No stores as picky as Hughes. Here's more proof. Treat your hair with the 12-ounce size of Jermac EFA or Jalavi shampoo. Your choice is just $3.59. And the new 4.5-ounce pump of Colgate toothpaste or gel is red tag priced at just $1.09 this week at Hughes. The 20-count of gallon-sized Ziploc food storage bags, especially priced at only $1.52. And the 200-foot roll of Dow Handy Wrap is just $1.59 this week at Hughes. All right, then. How about them Lakers? USDA choice bonus rounds take at $1.87 a pound. Prices effective through Wednesday, January 16th. At all Hughes markets. This is the news station, KNX 1070. Rejoining Red Rider in the second act of tonight's adventure in Horseshoe Valley, we find Red with his little Indian counterpart the following morning out at the corral on the Bucking Horse Ranch. Oh, I know just how you feel, Marge, but worrying and fretting isn't going to help your father any. But, Red, I, I feel so helpless. If there was only something I could do for him... You know, there is something we could do. And I'm willing to bet my Sunday jeans, if we succeeded, it would do more to bring your father around than all the medicine in a city drugstore. What's that, Red Ryder? What can we do? Win the fight he started. What in the world are you talking about, Red? The fight to wreck Hilo Dawson's combine and land a contract with the government to sell them horses. Say, uh... Where are these cavalry posts they're putting in, Marge? Fort Lincoln is the closest one. About 14 or 15 miles from here. Why? Well, I thought if you didn't mind leaving your dad for a while, we might ride over and talk to the commandant. Colonel Houston? I'll be glad to go with you, Red, but I don't think it'll do a blessed bit of good. We talked to him once before. He's a typical, grizzly, taciturn army man. If he says yes and no, that's a long conversation for him. Well, in that case, we may 
make them plenty easy for Colonel Alred Ryder. All him got to say him is yes. Oh, that's the spirit, young fella. Now, while you go in and tell the cook to keep an eye on your dad, Marge, little beaver, and I'll get the horses ready. I got a feeling in my bones that this is going to be an interesting day. A real interesting day. <laughs> Colonel, if you'd only understand that I have no axe to grind, that I'm Young only... man, my only interest is in buying the best remounts I can find at the lowest possible price. Well, sir, if that's the case, I guess the deal's settled. Anyone who's a judge of horse flesh knows that Alex Carter raises the finest stock west of the bluegrass. And I've seen other horses, too. Some of them that look just as good. Well, who's are they, Colonel? A man by the name of Dawson, I believe. Kilo Dawson? Well, I understood that he was holding his stock at a much higher price than Dad wants for his. Well, if that's true, young lady, I'll make short work of Dawson. Good enough, Colonel. I'm not so sure that Dawson will be pleased about it, though. I... Pleased about what, Ryder? Dawson. What are you doing here? I hope you don't mind, Colonel. <laughs> as much privacy here as a goldfish. Come on, come on, you're in. So let's not waste any more time. Thank you, Colonel. Now, what was that these good neighbors of mine was saying about me just as I came in? They said that you had priced your horses higher than they thought they were worth. Is that so? My price is too high? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Colonel. I don't know what sort of a price Miss Carter and her red-headed gentleman friend here are giving you. But you can have any horse on my ranch, and as many as you want, for $10 less than you can buy them from them. Uh -huh. Fair enough? Well, you've changed your tune a little, haven't you, Hilo? Have I? Well... I don't know what tune you thought I was playing, Ryder, but it's a cinch that it ain't music to your ears. Colonel, you can have any horse on our ranch for the same price you can buy them from Dawson. Young lady, the United States government is not interested in a price war. And what's more, personally, I don't look with favor on anyone who did what you tried. I beg your pardon, You deliberately Colonel. came in here and told me that Mr. Dawson wanted more for his horses than you did. I think that's a very contemptible, backbiting way to do business. But you don't understand. Mr. Dawson told us that himself just a few days ago. As a matter Ms. of fact, Carter, Colonel. I haven't the time or the patience to debate this matter. And since you had the opportunity of seeing me alone, I should think you'd be willing to see that Mr. Dawson had the same privilege. But, Colonel, if you'd only let listen... Let it go, Marge. All right, come on, we'd better be getting back home. I don't like to drive you off. It's too bad I came in just as you were leaving. Oh, uh, thank you anyhow, Colonel. Yeah. Too bad, Ryder. But I think I can supply the Colonel with all the remounts he needs. We'll see about that, Hilo. That's another bridge we'll cross when we get there. And now, Colonel, suppose we talk business. I didn't know we were talking anything else. How much do you want ahead for 300 broken saddle horses? Oh, being as it's the Army, I'd take uh, 175 apiece. 170? Are you out of your head? But they're good horses, Colonel. Real good. I wouldn't pay that price well, for the Wait a minute, Colonel. Wait a minute. We might bill them to the Army at 175 and... Then, in consideration for your cooperation in the matter, I might, uh, well, sort of show you my appreciation. Did I hear you rightly? Were you hinting that you could bribe me, Mr. Dawson? Bribe is a harsh word, Colonel, but... By gilded glory, I've heard enough out of you. Now go on. Get out. Just a minute, Colonel. Don't you try any of that high-handed ordering around on me. Are you going to get out of here, Mr. Dawson? I don't know if I am or not. I came here to talk business. Why, you I... insufferable... Oh. Who do you think you're slapping around, you old... Get out of here, Dawson. Get out of here before I blow you through that door. All right, Colonel. But remember this. It's your job to buy horses for the Army. The best horses you can find. And when you come crawling to me in a few days, begging me for remounts, I'm not going to forget this. Will you sit down? Shut up. If it hadn't been for that redhead, Marge Carter button in, I'd have had the cavalry contract all sewed up. Now they'll probably sell the army their horses and... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm waiting. What is it? What do you think would happen with the army if suddenly Carter didn't have any horses to sell them? You know, that ain't a half-bad idea. There hasn't been a good fire around these here parts. <laughs> Since last election. Well, what are you waiting for? Get the boys together and be ready to ride at 10 o'clock. Hold it, man. Oh. 
far enough. Easy, boys. Keep it quiet. Johnny, start dumping that oil. Yeah. Right here. That's it. Douse it good. Yeah. Okay. Now get it lit. Yeah. Look at that boy. Come on, boys. Let's go out and hear a boy roast with the rest of it. Now you're talking sense, Colonel. And just to prove that I'm not trying to hold you up because of that unfortunate accident Carter had, I'll still let you have the horses for 175 That unfortunate accident you speak about? Strange, wasn't it? Happened very timely for you. Well, what are you talking about, Colonel? Alex Carter is one of my closest friends. Yeah. I feel terrible. Terrible. If I didn't have half of the Army staff in Washington insisting that I mount my men before the week's up, Dawson... I wouldn't be doing this. All right, let me have the papers. There you are, sir. The signature goes on the bottom. Good morning, Colonel. Eh? May we come in? Ryder. Well, Hilo, you're right where we left yesterday. Haven't you been home yet? Miss Carter, Mr. Dawson just told me of the accident that occurred at your ranch last night. Accident? At our ranch? Why, why yes, the fire. Oh, that, that was no accident. Somebody set that fire, and if it hadn't been for the wind changing, I guess we would have been burned out. Oh, uh, how did it happen you knew about it, Dawson? Saw the flames from your bedroom window, I suppose. Why, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. We uh, came by your ranch on the way over here to the post, and I noticed that there's a hill about 3,000 feet high between the two ranches. You couldn't have seen those flames without an X-ray. What are you getting at, Ryder? You mean I had something to do with that fire? Hilo, I never make accusations without having pretty fair proof. And you mean you still have horses for sale? We most certainly have, Colonel. All you want. But, but Colonel, you and I just struck a bargain. Did we? Fortunately, I didn't sign that paper. Say, I'll tell you what I think, Colonel. Just to keep this fair and to make sure the army gets the best of it, how would it be if we held a race? Huh? The best ten horses from Dawson's Ranch against the best ten horses from the Carter spread. Whoever wins the race gets the government contract. Why, that's ridiculous. What would a race prove? I think it would prove a lot. And that's just the way it'll be. Twenty-mile course, cross-country, that I'll lay out over here today. Have your horses at the starting light at sunrise tomorrow morning. So, all gentlemen, Miss Carter, I'll see you then. All the lame-brained ideas telling me But it don't make no difference And after that race, there won't be no argument Got everything straight? I sure have And no wind's changing like what the fire can affect a couple of good shots of blasting power Okay Now go on With the race starting that early You'll have to have that powder planted before sunrise. Get going. Oh, look, Red. Here comes the colonel. Look, I'm pretty sure I'm too. Everything said, Colonel? Well, it all depends on what you mean, Ryder. But I think I understand. That was boots and saddles. Time to mount up. Well, Marge, aren't you going to wish me luck? Of course, Red. I'll be scared to death till I see you back here again. Me too, Red Ryder. Plenty scared. Go on, Ryder. Dawson and his men are all mounted. Well, don't let it be said that I held up the parade. You men all ready? Yes, sir. All, all right. You're all ready then? Go! I 
thought something would happen when Dawson agreed to the race so easily. He promises cavalry protection all along the trail, and by golly, we got it. Here comes the cavalry now, chasing Dawson right back towards us. All right, come on, Buck. This is one race, but we want to be in for the finish. My part, Miss Carter, the Army ought to give Red Ryder the Congressional Medal of Honor. I guess I didn't tell you that after we caught Dawson, we found out not only that the horses on his ranch were stolen horses, but he had actually stolen them from an Army post back in Kansas. That's why we were so short out here. Well, that part all right. But what's making me glad is that Miss Marge's father getting better and soon be able to walk him around again. And if we don't start for home, we'll still be here when Alex has been up and around for two months. So how about it, son? You betcha. him. Goodbye, Colonel. So long, Marge. Bye, Bye Colonel. All right, Thunder. Let's make this a real race. Let's show the Colonel what a thoroughbred can do. All right, come on, Thunder. Listen to this commercial announcement very carefully. Discount Tire Stores has officially acquired American Tire Warehouse. This means greater volume buying power and greater savings passed on to their customers. To celebrate this momentous occasion, Discount Tire Stores is offering a free alignment with a purchase of two or more Michelin tires. That's right. For a limited time only, buy two or more Michelin tires and get a free alignment on most cars. Michelin's because so much is riding on your tires. Discount Tire Stores because they save you dollars. Discount Tire Stores. For tires for your car or truck. Discount Tire Stores. Remember, this celebration is for a limited time only. Get a free alignment with the purchase of two or more Michelin tires. Go to Discount Tire Stores and celebrate their new acquisition of American Tire Warehouse. Get quality Michelins at everyday low prices plus a free alignment. Visit one of their 33 locations. See their ad in the Sunday Los Angeles Times Sports section or your local newspaper on Wednesday. See Discount Tire Stores. Yeah. Tires for your car or truck. See Discount Tire Stores. Yeah. And you'll save lots of bucks. Don't miss the next exciting episode of Red Rider. Langendorf Bread, the fresh and tasty bread judged America's finest, presents the adventures of Red Rider. From out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy. <clears throat> the bill will be, uh, well, $20. Seems a little steep, but that's what it says here in the ordinance. Well, that's funny. My pocketbook seems to be missing. Oh, here, let me frisk you, Ryder. Well, you sure ain't got it now. I'm sorry, but the law says I'll have to keep you here all night. And just for poking that fellow Bowser in the beezer, too. Now, that's what I call carrying law and order a might too far. But what I can't figure out is what happened to my pocketbook. <laughs> Tonight's Red Rider adventure, called The Law Comes to Stovepipe, tells the exciting and amusing story of what happens in a small western town when the law swings into the saddle. But right now, we're going to join a football party that's just over. Well, Judy, you look pleased as pun. I am, Mother. Everybody had fun. The game was exciting, and the lunch you served was marvelous. Gee, I didn't know sandwiches could taste so good. Well, you can thank Langendorf Red for that. Langendorf bread makes everything taste extra good because it has lots of extra flavor and freshness. And it also has lots of extra friends since the party. 
Everyone said it really hit the spot. Langendorf bread always hits the spot. Served for snacks, sandwiches, and all meals. That's because Langendorf is a richer, finer bread, brimming with creamy, smooth goodness and oven-fresh flavor. Only top-quality ingredients, milk, fresh wheat shortening, sugar, are used in Langendorf bread. Every flavor-filled loaf is baked with moist heat to protect its freshness, make it stay fresh longer, and it's vitamin and mineral enriched. Tomorrow, get the bread judged America's finest. Fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. Come to stove fight. That is to say, the community now has a town marshal and a jail. To celebrate the momentous occasion, a carnival company has been invited to set up its tents on the main street. But the festive spirit which prevails through most of the town fails to reach into the dismal office of Obadiah Entwistle, the town money banks. Uh, just a minute. can't stand listening to people enjoying themselves. I I think it's sinful. Oh, please. Now there ain't no use to your doing that, Mrs. Calvert. I extend your note for 30 days, and I don't intend to extend it another minute longer. Uh, look here, Mr. Antwistle. Antwistle, is... confound it. Antwistle. Oh, Mrs. Calvert's a widow, and after it all, you It ain't no can... fault of mine that a horse kicked her husband in the head. She borrowed money on her place, and she ain't paid it back. And if it ain't forthcoming by tomorrow morning, I'm taking possession. And that's final. But she told you you, that she'd have the money for you in a day or two. She sold some property in the east, but the money's still in escrow. Now, it won't hurt you any to wait a couple of days for it. It ain't a question of being hurt, Ryder. Business is business, and I want what's coming to me. And I got a sneaking hunch you're gonna get it, too. Hey, shot. You hit red? Tumble like they have them trouble down at Carnival Ground. Yes, I, the kind of trouble I know how to deal with. But when I come up against a sniveling old vulture who'd bust in two if you shook a finger at him, I feel as helpless as a kid in swaddling clothes. What? There, you just missed it, boss. Some of the boys caught one of them Carnival grifters listening at customer's pocketbook and... What's the matter, boss? Your collar too tight? Mouser? Take this insolent, red-headed whippersnapper and throw him out of my office. Oh, the bodyguard, eh? Well, anybody who'd work for a penny-pinching old skin flint like you just isn't big enough to throw me out. I'll show you who ain't big enough. You're, you're heavy enough, yeah, but your weight isn't well distributed. You could stand a few more ounces under your hat. <laughs> now, ain't that there pitiful sight? It looked like a picture I once seen of a dead whale washed up on the beach. You ain't gonna get away with that. Help! Murder! Police! That made your crew from short of heart. I'll Help! see, Ken. Red, take, Red, take me out of here. All right, Help! come on. Help! Help! It wouldn't have hurt that that old tight bought down to wait a couple of days. He just like to be a mean. That some people are like that. Yeah, there's some people who put the almighty dollar ahead of everything else. Ant whistles, one of them. Look at Red Ryder. Men walking in the road ahead. Yeah, and from the way he's dragging his feet, he must have come a long ways. Say, that's funny. When he turned around, saw us coming, he started to run. Let's catch up with him. Come on, boy. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. with somebody else. See, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about people that come up behind me. I don't know whether you know it or not, but you're headed away from Stovepipe. 
There isn't another town in this direction for 70 or 80 miles, stranger. Uh, yeah, that's what I was hoping. Uh, uh, you see, I'm, I'm sort of traveling for me health. Uh, I, I was in so fight, but it uh, got a little too hot for me. Well, out here in the West, we don't usually get nosy with strangers, but... You know, you remind me a lot of a fellow that used to hang around Laredo. Now, now, if it's about that stick up in a pool hall, I don't know nothing about it. See, in, in fact, I didn't even know there was one, huh? Well, he, he, this here fellow was known as uh, Sticky Fingers McGooch. Now, uh, he used to take ten types of folks on, on street corners. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. You, you ain't buckskin blanket. I sure am. Well, I'll be, uh, well, how are you? Oh, well, that's been 15 years ago. I'm glad to see you, pal. Yeah, that goes double for me. But what in fun reason are you doing a hooking along or way out here? Well, well, it's, it's, it's a long story, Buckskin. I was um, I was taking ten types at the carnival, see, and raking in plenty of the suckers, though, legitimately, too. But uh, I'm getting awful absent-minded lately. I, I, I was looking for me pocket knife to sharpen a pencil, and I... Uh, I must stick up my hand in somebody else's pocket. Uh, well, I don't like to bust up this happy reunion, but Mrs. Calvert here has to get back to her ranch. Well, doggone it. He, in all the excitement, I forgot to introduce you to my friend, Sticky. Just hold up the formalities till we get to the ranch, will you, Buckskin? Hey, if you climb on behind me, mister, we'll give you a lift. Well, uh, you, uh, you uh, don't uh, have a step ladder, do you? Well, here, come on up and give me your hand now. All right. I'll pull you up. There you are. Easy, Thunder. Easy, boy. Now, you hang on to me, Sticky. Get there, Sister Bill. Come on, there, boy. Come on, Thunder. Hang on there. Hey, uh, can't we uh, get together on this thing? When I'm coming up, this blooming horse is going down. nice of you to have me for supper with you, Miss Calvert. Why, you was more than welcome, Mr. McGlooch. You never finished telling us why you leave him carnival. Oh, it didn't, huh? Well, you, you had something about being absent-minded, you said. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting uh, terrible forgetful lately, and you... Hmm. Now, where did I get this watch and chain? Gee, that there's my water bear, Sticky. Well, it sure is funny how it got in my possession. You have him company, Mrs. Calvert. There's some gent ambling up to your front door. You know him? Why, that's the new town marshal. What does he want, I wonder? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, terrible thirsty all of a sudden. If don't mind, I'll just go out in the kitchen and help myself to a dipper of water. Well, it's kind of funny where he got my watch. Come in. What are you fellers named Ryder? Yes, I am. Why? Well, I'm the law in these here parts, and I got a warrant for your arrest on a charge of assault and battery. You've got what? <laughs> Ain't that ridiculous? It's getting so a fella can't have a nice sociable fist fight without the law button in. Well, who swore out that warrant? Ant's whistle? Yep. And Stovepipe's got an ordinance that'll back him up in it, too. Well, I guess there isn't much I can do but go along with you then, Marshal. Well, since you're so nice and accommodating about it, I- I'll just book you and let you go out again on bail. Well, thanks. Well, of course, you'll have to have the cash now. Huh? I ain't allowed to take no checks. And Buckskin, you and the little button wait for me here. I'll be back in a couple of hours at the outside. Oh, Red, I'm mighty sorry. The whole thing is my fault. Now, you forget it. That one sock I took at Aunt Whistle's bodyguard was worth it. Poor Red. I shouldn't have asked him to help me in the first place. Nah, don't you worry on about him, ma'am. He'll be back out in the tire who's gone and back here before you know it. Did, uh, did the guy with a cookie cutter pin on his vest beat it? Uh, what a long pin. Where's Ryder? Jeepers, don't tell me the law came after him. Oh, dear. What's wrong with her? Oh, things are in a terrible mess around here, Sticky. Uh, Mrs. Calder's going to lose a little ranch here tomorrow morning, and, and she's pretty well busted up about it. Oh, gee. Why, on account of money? No, on account of no money. Now, hey, she's got a $1,200 note due tomorrow and, and nothing to pay it with. Now, that is, uh, she ain't got it here. Hey, she sold a lot or something in the East, but, but the money's still in escrow. Escrow, huh? What is that? That's one boy I missed. Well, escrow is sort of a banking term, Sticky. It means you got the money, but you ain't. 
trouble his old Aunt Whistle and the wheat until her money get him here. Aunt Whistle? Who's that? Oh, he's the penny pinch old skin fit who's a foreclosing on this here place. Well, and what she needs is some dough to tide her over till hers gets here from escrow. That's right. Well, uh, who is there around this neck of the wood who's uh, pretty well stocked up on uh, lettuce? Nah, they don't raise no lettuce around here at all. Uh, I mean, uh, who's got enough dough to swing this deal? Providing, of course, they'd uh, let loose of it a little. Well, Aunt Whistle just about got it all, Sticky. Oh, but they know you're talking to him. We've tried that already. Mm-hmm. There's an old saying that if at first you don't succeed, uh, don't get discouraged. Uh, where does this old money bags hang his hat, uh, I'd kind of like to try my luck. Well, I can point out his office to you, but I can tell you right now, it ain't no use. Well, what do you think of our new jail, Ryder? A uh, nice place. Well, now, let me see. The bail will be uh, $20. Huh? Seems a little steep, but that's what it says here in the ordinance. Well, that's funny. My pocketbook seems to be missing. I know it had had it here with me earlier. Paid for lunch at the hotel dining room. Well, here, let me frisk you, right now. Well, you sure ain't got it now. Well, I, I'm sorry, but the law says I'll have to keep you here all night. And just for poking that fellow Bowser in the beezer, too. That's what I call carrying law and order a mite too far. What I can't figure out is... What happened to my pocketbook? When Red tries to persuade the town money bags to give Mrs. Calvert, a widow, an extension of time on her mortgage, the cowboy becomes involved in a brawl with the old skin flint's bodyguard and is arrested for assault and battery. Meanwhile... An old acquaintance of Buckskin, Sticky Fingers McGlooch, decides that he'll help the woman in her plight. Of the complications that follow, we'll learn in just a moment. But now, a note to early birds. You know that send-off to school in the morning sets the youngster's pace for the whole day. And to make it good, children need a hearty breakfast with lots of flavor and vitality. And that means crisp golden brown toast made from fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. It's a tempting, fragrant treat worth waking for. Lots of milk, fresh sweet shortening, sugar, and other top-quality ingredients make Langendorf bread flavor-rich. And for last, longer-lasting freshness, every appetizing loaf is baked with moist heat. And Langendorf is a bread with a bonus. It's chock-full of pep-building vitamins. And so tomorrow, try serving Langendorf bread toasted. And serve it always for every meal. Fresh and tasty Langendorf bread, judged America's finest. Turn to our story of the West that lives forever, we find Buckskin, Little Beaver, and Sticky Fingers McGlooch in the office of Mr. Antwistle. It's night. I, uh, I think one more match will do it, Buckskin. We're not sure, Rick, why you're going to like them, miss. Oh, but we're just borrowing the doll. We're going to put it back. and see what we got in here. Look at the mint leaves. That no mint leaves. leaves. That be money. They're green, ain't they? Now, let me see. Uh, 1,200 simoleons is the amount we want. Plus uh, interest. And uh, that just about makes it. You worried about what Red Ryder going to say him about this? Well, he ain't going to like it, I'll tell you that. Oh, we ain't keeping it, though. We're just using it for a few hours, that's all. Can't you get that through your head? Well, when we're through with it, we'll put it back. Now, uh, stick. 
stuff this sponto leaks in my pocket, and we'll beat it out of here because... Well, that's funny. Now, where did I get that? Oh, what's the matter, Sticky? Is there something wrong? Hey, uh, light it on a match, will you? Yeah. Hmm. Somebody's pocketbook. Now, where did that come from? Well, it looks like Red's. Where I got it, I'll just never know. I I'm just terrible forgetful, that's all. Well, come on. If we're going to save the old homestead, we better get on our horses. <laughs> and I do hate the thoughts of that. <laughs> and his bodyguard coming in there, buckboard sticky. Yeah, and it ain't yet the crack of dawn. He sure ain't wasting any time, is he? Well, let him come. We're ready for him. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, whoa. Mr. Obadiah Antwistle, I assumes to presume. And who are you? McGlooch is the name. I represent the interests of Mrs. Calvert's late husband, who is now demised. Well, well, what of it? You have business with me, state it. I am what is known in financial circles as a picker-upper. I'm here to pick up that measly little note that you've been kicking up all the fuss about. You don't mean you're... you're going to pay it. Certainly I'm going to pay it. I think your attitude in this matter has not only been infinitesimal and picky-uni, but it's also been small, Mr. Rantwistle. Uh, is that an insult to us? I'm not sure yet. Wait. If uh, you'll step into the barn for a minute, we'll conclude this little transaction. I uh, got the money in my pocket. And uh, why go in the barn? Uh, why not hand it over here? My dear Mr. Antwistle, I am a businessman. I'm used to transacting my transactions in an office. I ain't making no financial deals in no corral. See? Kindly come this way. I'm, uh, how about... Bowser. Sure, sure. Bring them along. There ain't nobody but cows in there. And they ain't the fussy kind. I ain't sure if I like that or not. See, I have to yell so loud. The party of the first part is in the house asleep. And I don't wish us to have a disturbance. See, see, I'll stay here and see that Mr. Antwistle's horse don't get lonesome, Sticky. And don't forget, Buckskin. Don't forget. <laughs> Well, it's daylight, Ryder. According to the law, you spent the night in jail. Now you're free to go. Fine thing. Here I am, cooped up in the jug all night. My friends don't even come to see me. Of course, if you want to stay till seven, you got breakfast coming on the counter, you know. Uh, no, 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 thanks. Just the same. Oh, uh, I'm warning you, Marshal. If that bodyguard of Ant Whistles ever gets in my way again, I may turn out to be a permanent guest of yours. <laughs> And I'll do the brushing. Uh, uh, let me help you up, Mr. Ant Whistle. Mm, thanks. We're right at him, Buckskin. Yeah, looking black in a thunder cloud. Oh, oh, thunder. Oh, boy. Uh, say, did 
Does it happen to interest you that I've been locked up in the stove pipe jail since last night and all on account of that mangy varmint you're brushing off so carefully? Yeah? Well, you better stop that kind of talk. You slipped over a lucky punch before, but this time, I'm going to tie you in a little piece. Of... Uh, if you had teeth, you'd bite me here. Yeah. It's got to get monotonous, ain't it? Here comes Marshall again. Had it again, eh? Whoa, whoa there, whoa now. Hiya, Marshall. How is a threat something like this going to happen? I again charge that man with assault and battery on the person of my bodyguard. And I demand that you do your duty. Well, I'm sorry, Ryder, but... Yeah, I know, I know. The law's come to stovepipe. All right, Marshal, let's go. But this time, some of my friends had better come and bail me out. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, did you drop this uh, pocketbook by any chance? Well, yes, I thought I'd lost it. Thanks. Where'd you find it, Sticky? Uh, I don't know. I'm just getting terrible forgetful lately. <laughs> Whistles, though, was back in his safe. Mrs. Calvert's notice paid off, and everybody's square with a board. Here you come a hit whistle. Yeah. And he's getting us red handed in his office. How'd they get into town so quick? Well, look who's here. Do you mind telling me what you three are doing in my office? Uh, uh, not, not at all. No, no, we're here because... And where did you get that watch you're, you're swinging around with a chain? Uh, uh, no use uh, talking. I, I, I sure I'm getting forgetful. I asked you where you got my watch. Well, I, I, I wasn't sure it was yours, see? So I, I, I sprung it over to find out, and that's what we're doing in your office. Well, give it here. You didn't happen to find my thaw teeth, did you? Uh, no, no, not that I recall. Uh, come on, Buckskin, I think we better be getting along. And, uh, good day again, Mr. Antwistle. Uh, remember me to the missus. <laughs> quaint character, Bowser. Uh, very quaint. As soon as I put this 1200 in the safe, why, we'll... That Bowser, it's gone. Not the money. No, the 1200 McGlooch give me. I've been robbed. Oh, don't look at me. I get it, Bowser. I get it. How did McGlooch get my watch? And how did he get into my office when the door was locked? Hi, they're a gang of pugs and pickpockets. That's sure. Shall, shall I get the marshal for you? No, no, no. This is no matter for the law. A crime has been committed. So go round up a posse of citizens. Them blasted thieves don't know it, but they're going to attend a party. A necktie party with them, the guests of honor. Although his intentions are doubtless the best, Sticky Fingers McGlooch has certainly complicated things for America's famous fighting cowboy. And for the action-packed climax to our story, we'll return in just a few seconds. You know, energy is a pretty precious item these busy days of building a secure future. And if you want your family to get the extra energy they need at every meal, try including fresh, delicious Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 wheat bread in your daily menus. Every tempting loaf of Dr. Penland's Vitamin B1 wheat bread is fortified with 750 units of Vitamin B1. Yes, 750 units of energizing, vitalizing B1 in every loaf. And you get a large serving of extra flavor, too, with Dr. Pendlin's Vitamin B1 Wheat Bread. It has a distinctive wheaty, nut-like flavor that adds hearty enjoyment to every meal. For stepping up energy and pepping up appetites, try fresh, delicious Dr. Pendlin's Vitamin B1 Wheat Bread. Ideal for reducing diet. As we get back to our adventure with America's famous fighting cowboy... We find that a mob of irate citizens, led by Obadiah Antwistle, have now rounded up Buckskin and McGlooch and are about to take the law into their own hands. You two thieving polecats, anything to say before we drive them horses out from under you and leave you dangling from that limb? Only that you're, you're making a doggone serious mistake. There's law in stole fight now, and every one of you's going to pay for the share. Uh, and that's the kind of thanks I get for bringing back your watch. Ah, uh, that up. Let's sing them up, boys, and get it over with. <laughs> The little engine's bringing us help. Here comes that redhead. Now, Marshal, what? Stand your ground, Bowser. Stand your ground. Well, here 
here's Mrs. Calvert, and she's got your money for you, Aunt Whistle. You just come in my telegraph. Money? Why, now, I... Now, untie those men and be quick about it. Listen, you. You better than our business for the last time. Mister, I don't think you've got very good sense. I, I charge that man with assault and battery on the first of my bodyguard. Marshal, do your duty. Not this time, Obadiah. What you are going to do is in violation of City Ordinance 13. I'm arresting you for disturbing the peace, assault, kidnapping, and attempting homicide. And for them crimes, there ain't no bail. Well, thanks to you and your friends, Red, my troubles are all over. Yep, and Aunt Russell is just the beginning. Not that thieving old skin fence are getting just what he deserves. Well, I'm getting out of here. The wild and woolly west ain't no place for sticky fingers, McGlooch. <laughs> well, if you want to ride with us as far as Devil's Hole, you can catch a train from there. <laughs> Listen, Red, the only time I'm going to have anything more to do with horses is when they're pulling a hearse and I'm in it. <laughs> uh, so long, Sticky. It's my night to see you again. Yeah, the same here. I... Hey. That's a funny thing. How did these things get in me hip pocket? What things? Why, this set of false teeth. Oh, oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye, Diggy. You'll have to have to have to have to have Oh, boy. So we say so long to America's famous fighting cowboy and his two compadres for tonight. Red Rider is presented for your enjoyment by Langendorf Bread, the fresh and tasty bread judged America's finest. But Red Buckskin and Little Beaver will all be back again next Tuesday night at 7.30 in a new Western adventure story packed with action and suspense. For now, this is Owen James speaking for Langendorf Bread and saying good night until next Tuesday night at 7.30. Out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy, Red Rider. Almost saw through, Ansel. Yep. Yeah, that vessel won't hold a toy train now, Rip. Good. Now grab these tools and get out of here. We gotta run for our lives. Come on. Say now, this story sounds like a honey, doesn't it? Trains and bad men and Red Rider undoubtedly in there for a rescue. Well, we'll be into Timber Tornado presently, running right into more real breathtakers. <laughs>
fertile plains of the Old West provided grazing lands for the cattle which roamed there, separating these plains, jagged mountain ranges reared their lofty peaks, and men worked and fought in them for the fortunes they held in gold, silver, and lumber. Thus, as our story opens, we find ourselves in the office of a lumber camp owned by a man Red had met once before, Jim Corcoran. Corcoran is talking to his young son, Bob. Seems to me, if Red left Devil's Hole in answer to my telegram, he should have gotten up here this morning. Well, why did you send for him anyhow, Pa? You know blame well why I sent for Red. I feel since Jennings and that outfit of his set up right next to our timber, that we're in for trouble. But gosh, Pop, you're just imagining that. I told you I saw Jennings a few days ago, and he was just as nice as he could be. Sure he was. But I know Jennings from the old days in Michigan when we both were woods bosses. And that whole cat would stab his own brother in the back if he could make a nickel out of it. But why send for Red Ryder? If we do have any trouble, don't you think that between you and me and Rip Skinner, we could take care of Jennings no matter how ornery he turned out to be? Son, I've never been afraid of trouble in all my life. But I know something about trouble. When you see it coming, prepare for it. Well, you can count on me. Sure I can, son. Sure I can. Now, suppose you run down to the cook shack and find out what supplies the cook will be needing. I'll be taking the engine down to the junction this afternoon and might as well bring back the grub for the week. Okay, Pop. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you run into Rip, tell him I'd like to see him. Yes, sir, I sure will. <laughs> Guess I won't have to. Here comes Rip now. Good morning, Good morning Rip. I was just going to tell you. My father wants to see you. Come on, Mr. Corcoran. Want to see me about anything in particular? Well, yes, Rip. It's about Jennings and that outfit of his. Yeah? What about Jennings? Oh, I just wanted you to keep your eyes open, Rip. I don't trust Jennings. He's a sneaking coyote if I ever saw one. Yep, so I've heard. I want to talk to you about him, too. You did, Rip? All right, what's up? Well, here's the way I figured, boss. I hired on here as a woods boss. But if there's going to be any trouble, gun trouble... It don't seem to me that if I got to run the risk of being shot to pieces, that I'm getting enough out of it. Yeah. I never thought of it quite that way, Rip. If you take risks for me, I suppose I should pay for them. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll add another 150 a month to your wages. Thanks. But another 500 a month ain't a drop in the bucket. Huh? What do you mean? Look, Mr. Corcoran, when there's lead flying, it doesn't care who it hits. If it hits you, you know the outfit is killed. If I'm working for pay and I get gunned down, well, all that happens is just another hired hand is buried. Now, do you see what I mean? Yes, Rip, I think I do. And if I understand you, I don't like what you're hinting at. I worked almost 40 years, starting as a whistle punk, to build up a lumber business. And now you come along and practically demand a partnership. I'm not demanding nothing. I'm just telling you that if there's going to be trouble... I'm not laying my neck on the block for two bit pieces. In other words, it's kicking with a partnership or you'll quit. Is that it? No, no, not exactly. I'm certainly going to give you time to think it over. Think it over nothing. I don't have to think over a proposition like that. If there's one thing I don't like, it's someone threatening to blackjack me into something. So now to save you the trouble of having to quit, here. Here's a month's wages right now. Rip, you're through. Yeah, that's what you think. Here, give me that money. Thanks. But I'm warning you, Corcoran. Letting me go ain't gonna save you from trouble. It's just gonna put you into trouble right up to your thick, bald head. Yeah, Rip, what else? What else did the old coot say when you asked him for a partnership? Nothing else, a sucker. He had a brain in his head, he'd realize what he's in for now. You mean you're going to make that deal with Jennings? Why not? I know what Jennings offered of me to put Corkin out of business, and I gave Corkin a chance to beat his offer. Yeah, except he didn't know he was trying to beat Jennings' offer. Well, what of it? I gave him a chance to talk it over, but oh, no. He had his bank roll out so fast and was paying me off, he thought he was glad to get rid of me. Okay, okay, you don't have to take it out on me. Now, what are we going to do? The cook told me old man Corkin has taken the engine and won the cars down to the junction this afternoon. Yeah? What do you care where Corcoran's going? I care a lot. Because when he starts that engine, he's not going to the junction. He's just taking his last trip on Earth. Mr. 
Bishop to Mistopheles Red. I never seen a mountain yet that runs straight up in the air like the Sheeran does. Uh, how much further can what their bejigged lumber camp be? Can't be much farther, Buckskin. See through that gap in those trees? That little trestle, that narrow gauge railway? Those must be the rails Corcoran uses to get his lumber from the sawmill down to the junction. You see him, Red Ranger. And you hear a train coming, too. Well, it isn't really a train, son. If you look now, you can see it's just an engine in one car. It sure is a whooping it up, Red. Yeah, it sure is a whooping it up, Buckskin. No, but I think he'll slow down for that trestle. Yeah, see, he's slowing down already. Gosh, Red. Ah, I don't know what to say. He, he, that guy was the first railroad wreck I ever seen in my whole life. It wasn't a railroad wreck. Looked to me as if that trestle just gave way and that little train plummeted a thousand feet to the bottom of that gorge. You going down there and check him up, Red Rider? Yes, we'll go down there all right, son, but I don't think it'll do any good. Whoever was on that train's beyond our help. But come on. And after we check over the wreckage, we don't want to waste any time finishing our trip and getting up to Jim Cochran's office. Well, Mr. Ryder, Pop said he thought there was going to be trouble, but I never figured he meant this kind of trouble. Having the engine he was driving jump the track and go into the gorge. Yep. When I saw him coming down there practically wide open... I realized that he mustn't have seen the trestle. I tried to yell to him to slow down, but the next thing I knew, he'd started into the turn, jumped the track, and was pouring into the gorge like water out of a bucket. Yeah, it's too bad he couldn't hear you, although I don't think it would have saved his life. Why not if it just slowed down a little? Oh, send us a cobweb. He did slow down. Now, look, Buckskin. Let's not go back and talk about what might have happened. Certainly, Rip here did everything he could to save Jim's life. Besides, it's too late now to do anything about it. Uh, you're going to keep right on operating the lumber company, aren't you, Bobby? Why, sure, I guess so, Mr. Ryder. I really haven't had time to think. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Bobby. Likely enough, your pop told you I'd come in and quit this morning, and I feel pretty bad about, well, losing my temper like that. So if you'd like, I'll sign on again as Woods' boss right now. Gee, that'd be fine, Red. Don't you think so, Mr. Ryder? Now, Red's going to do from here on in, Bobby. But to answer your question, yes... I think any help you can get from an experienced logger like Rip would be a godsend. Well, that's nice of you to say that, Ryder. Oh, uh, just thought of something. With that trestle out, what are you going to do about getting your lumber down to the junction? Yeah, Rip, what about that? I've been thinking about that, too. By the time we get the construction machinery and the other stuff we need to rebuild the trestle, we'll be snowed in up here. So I thought that if we could start at the break in the tracks and lay new rails down the south side, that wouldn't take over two days. The south side? Well, that's right through pretty dense timberland, isn't it? Wouldn't it be kind of dangerous sending trains through there with sparks flying? Oh, it wouldn't be dangerous. Besides, what would you like us to do? Close up and starve to death till next spring? Well, certainly I wouldn't. But it seems to me that an experienced woodsman like you would bend over backwards not to take a chance on having flying sparks burn off a beautiful stand of timber. Look, Ryder, one book you say I'm an experienced hand, and then the next you talk like you run on the job. If you want to be woods boss, it's okay with me. Well, criminal to course, girls. You know, Red didn't say no such a thing. Of course I didn't. I guess maybe Rip's just a little upset after what's happened. That it, Rip? No, that's not it. I just don't like no green hands coming up here and telling me my job. And from the way you talk, you'd imagine I wanted to put the Corcoran Company out of business. From the way I talk, Rip? No, it seems to me most of that talking has come from you. Now, see here, Ryder. Hold it, Rip. We're not getting any place this way. I'm not looking for your job. You go right ahead as you're going, doing things as you are. Okay, fella? Well, yeah. If that's settled, I think I'd better be getting back and telling the boys what happens from now on. Now that I'm Woods' boss again. Tales to Borneo Red. Uh, how long are you going to keep us down this year, Gord? You're messing around with this year, Rickage. Just long enough, Buckskin. But you've got them there, Red Rider. No, this is a piece of 12 by 12, which was one of the uprights of that trestle. Well, hop a jump and walk a mile. You, you mean to stand there and tell me you think that a termite's chowed it up? Oh, I'm afraid that's one question I can't find. Red Rider, someone up on top shoot him at you. Well, he got his shot back with 300% interest. But he ain't going to ride out after the vomit, Red? What for? By the time we climb that thousand feet back to our horses, he'd be ten miles away. 
But having missed me once means he'll probably try it again. And if he does, you two had better duck. Because one of us is going down in a blaze of gun smoke and singing lead. <laughs> say you ain't heard nothing yet. Yes, there's a lot more fun, excitement, and thrills in the last half of our story of the West that lives forever. get back to our story. With Jim Corcoran killed in the alleged accident and Red Rider up in the lumber camp, obviously smelling a rat, as we rejoin Rip Skinner, Bobby Corcoran's wood boss, he is talking to his sidekick, Ansco, and Jennings, the owner of the rival lumber company. And there is small wonder that Red Rider comes in for the bulk of the conversation. Well, what'd you want me to do? Let Ryder put some slugs through me? I'd hardly fired the shot when there was more lead buzzing around my ears than if I'd stirred up a hornet's nest. Well, they shouldn't have missed him. As a matter of fact, when I told you to tail him, you should have made mighty sure he didn't get down to that wreckage. Oh, look. I didn't come over here to sit around while you two argued. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Jennings. Yes, it does it. Rod is here. Obviously, he's found out that you tampered with the trestle. He knows someone is out to get him. If you want the 10000 I promise you, you'll start sitting up and paying attention. Okay, go ahead. What have you got figured out, Mr. Jennings? Your men starting to lay the track down the south side? Through that stand of Corcoran's virgin timber? I just come from there myself. Them tracks ought to be ready by tomorrow afternoon. Fair enough, Ansco. Now, if you'll just make sure Ryder doesn't stumble onto any more information, we'll have that Corcoran Lumber Company out of business by the end of the week. If you mean running the locomotive through that timber and setting fire... Never mind any arguments. I know just what you're going to say. That Ryder spoke to you about that already. Well, what of it? Train runs through, and what's left of the kid's timber is burned off. What will Ryder do about that? Nothing. Won't be able to prove nothing. Besides, it'll be too late. Okay, Jim. You're dealing the cards. I'm just playing a hand in your game. If you play it my way, you're playing a winning hand. With a pot of 10,000 nice crisp bills to pay off. Report to me when the tracks are late. He's right, Rip. Of course I'm right. You better make sure you're right. Because if this thing slips up... And Corcoran won't be the only man on this mountain who will have lost his life in an accident. Red Ryder. Yes, little beaver. How long are we going to stay here watching this here lumber office? Well, in the first place, son, it isn't this here lumber office. This is the headquarters of Jennings and his outfit. And in the second place, we're going to stay here until sunup watching it. Or else, with what little time is left, how am I ever going to find out if Rip and Jennings are in this thing together? Well, slumberland or sandman, <clears throat> this year staying up all night ain't easy, son. Sounds like someone's coming. It isn't just one man, Red Ryder, it's two. Ring down to roll for it. You see who it is, Red? You was right. It's that there crooked on and no good poor cat, Rip Skinner. Hey, let's get out there. Oh, now, who? Sit still. You go barging up there to that office with no proof, and not only will we get in wrong, but we'll tip them off that we're wise to something. Well, then, what are you going to do about him, Rider? The only thing we can do under the circumstances, sit tight, keep our eyes wide open, and pray for the best. Your eyes look like two burned holes in a blanket this morning. Well, crawlers to cinnamon buns, why shouldn't they? Well, Skin, someday you're going to open your mouth and I'm going to put my foot in it. Hmm? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, Reg, yeah, sure. Oh, it must be the altitude that gets my eyes, Bobby. Not used to being 6,000 feet in the air. Uh, now to get down to cases. Have you seen your woods boss around this morning? Rick? Well, they told me he's going down to see if the section gang got the track all laid down at the south slope. Uh-huh. And you're still not worried about starting a fire through there, are you, Bobby? Why should I be? Rip's a good man. He wouldn't let no accidents happen. Yeah. He wouldn't stop none from happening, another. Why, if you just open your eyes... Buckskin, never mind about Bobby opening his eyes. Be your eyes, I'm going to close personally. Well, that looks like Rip climbing the steps now. Morning, everybody. How's the big boss this morning? Just fine, Rip. Track all in? Yep. By tomorrow this time, we'll have hauled enough lumber from the sawmill to the junction to get the cash for the payroll. Oh, absolutely. I was kind of worrying about that. Well, Bobby, once that load gets down the south slope and I see that you're operating again, I'm going to be heading back for Painted Valley. What's the matter, Ryder? You ought to hang around. This is a healthy climate we got up here. Really? <laughs> Had an idea it might be unhealthy. For me. Huh? What do you mean? Well, after Jim's accident, and then yesterday, some Jasper accidentally shot off a gun and accidentally almost blew my head off. Sort of got to figuring maybe I'd be better off back home. What do you think? What do you mean? What do I think? What should I know about it? I was just trying to be nice and ask you to hang around. You have to start talking in circles again. Circles might be the proper things to talk in at that when the time comes. We might even get a few extra circles made of hemp, just like the noose on a hangman's rope. Oh. I'm starting to get your drift. Well, redhead, then maybe I was right about you hanging around. Really? Well, I wouldn't know. Oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. Rip probably came in on business, didn't mean to intrude. Well, thanks, Ryder. Bobby, the track's nearly all laid. I got the crew loading the lumber on the flat cars now. Any orders before I shove off at the junction? Orders? No, none that I can think of, Rip. You know what to do. I'm sure he does. Thanks, Redhead. Well, if that's all, I'll be going. See you in the morning. Hey, Red, where are you going? <laughs> oh, I figured while we were up here, Bobby, we might do a little hunting. Right now, I thought I'd get out and see what luck I'd have if I set a trap or two for a couple of well-trained pools. Okay, train up. Oh, it should have been tough. Well, Gregor, what are we doing right here? Come on, I'll show you. Now, see over there? Those are the new tracks Rip had laid down the south slope. But these above the beer barrels, Red. What are we going to do? Play choo-choo? Play choo-choo? Yeah, maybe in a way. Because we're going to move two sections of track to the other side of that switch. We don't get them new at all. And you will. You see there to the left? Those other rails? Now, those are the rails that run down from Jennings' sawmill, swing through here, then they make a U-turn, and they go on down to the junction through Jennings' timberland. Yeah, but... So I thought if Jennings and Rip were in this together... Trying to cripple Bobby Cochran, we might teach them the turnabout's fair play by the simple device of moving two rails and tying Bobby's track in with Jennings' track and letting that lumber train run down toward the junction through Jennings' timber. Well, I'll be a three-sided hogshead. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, right, look, maybe I don't get it either. I don't know. It's a wild idea, but from where I stand, it certainly looks like a good enough one to try. So instead of standing there scratching what passes for your head, come on, let's get busy on that switch section. That train with Rip in the cab of the locomotive is going to be cutting through here in about one half hour. How are we doing, Rip? We're all running right along. We'll be hitting a new rail soon and starting to plow through that heavy sand of timber. You think it's time to start throwing those pitch nuts in the fire? Yeah, I guess so. We want to throw out a shower of sparks that'll look like the 4th of July. Get busy. <laughs> Rip, throw that boiler door open. Yeah, we go. Well, now, once them pine knots start burning and that pitch loses out and gets in with the sparks, we're going to earn that 10,000 in a mighty big way. Better signal Jennings that we're coming. He's probably tuned his nails right down to his wrist. <laughs> Well, 
Jennings' two hirelings are right on their way to burn down every last stick belonging to young Bobby Corcoran. So there's no question but what Red was right in his guess. Still, guessing right and doing something about it are two different things. again to our western adventure yarn. We find that Red has not been asleep at the switch. In fact, he's standing at the switch just waiting for the lumber train to roar close enough to him to throw the lever and send the train rocketing down through Jennings' timberland. Red Ranger, here's the lumber train now. Right, son. Come on, Buckskin. Help me throw this switch. All right. All right, now. That'll send that train down through Jennings' timber. And if it's shower and sparks, he's going to be awfully surprised to find that he's burned out of business. Come on, we've got to hit those horses. Move down a mile or so. Jennings ought to be near the right-of-way, just waiting for us. Wow! Look at those sparks fly. Hey, Asco. Yeah, Rip. See what's happening? The sparks are landing on the tree tops and are starting to play. What a fire this is going to be. I'm awful sorry for anybody left up on this side of the mountain. That corker and shit ain't got a jab in the Hey, Rip, what's that? Someone's shooting at us. There it goes again. Rip, who is it? I don't see no one on the way to way. What do I do? Let's go. It's Jimmy. Jimmy. He's trying to do double cross us. Why, that dirty coyote. I'll fix him. Rip. What's the idea of stopping here? We'll be caught in the fire and burned to death. No, no, we won't. Where we are, we're taking Jennings with us. Rip! Rip, you, you fool, you crazy! I'll say how crazy I am, you double crosser. Stop it! Put that gun up! I was shooting at you to stop it. Not to hit you. Stop us. What for? Because you're lame brain buzzard. You switched over back there and you're setting fire to my land. It can't be. This is Corcoran's timber. Just like you told me. Well, thanks, Rip. That little speech is just about enough to send a lot of you to jail for life. Rip, it's Ryder. Why, that mealy mouth. Next one to go for his gun gets lead in him. All right, okay, Buckskin. Get the shooting irons. We're putting these monkeys back into that locomotive and take them down to the junction personally. And from that locomotive cab, Mr. Jennon should get a wonderful picture of his timberland going up in a blaze of flame and glory. <laughs> We'll put those cutthroats away for him. Well, Rip and Ann's go probably for life. Jennings is going to get a lighter sentence for turning state's evidence on who wrecked the trestle and killed your father. Well, yippee de yahoo. I sure hate to be in Jennings' shoes when he gets out, though. His timberland burnt their charcoal and not a nickel in the world. By that time, Bobby will be full grown man and have a big lumber business. Yeah. Hold oh, still, Thunder. Cool, boy. Well, Bobby, we've got to get down to sea level. Yeah. And so let's get on home. Get up to the man. Come on, son. Bye, Bye, Bobby. Come on. All right, stop running, boy. Out there. Come on, Thunder. <laughs>
Langendorf Bread, the fresh and tasty bread judged America's finest, presents The Adventures of Red Rider. From out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy. Is that a million coyotes? He, he tried to drag us a lot of us. Those shots came from that patch of oak brush yonder. Come on, let him have it, Buckskin. Did you hear him out, Red Rider? <laughs> I reckon he didn't like them as slugs of whistling past his ears. That kind of whistling when I don't expect it annoys me, too. I'm going to ride over to the Saskatchewan Lumber Company and teach them a new kind of business ethics. <laughs> Tonight's Red Rider story, called Flames of Hate, is the story of the Dominion Mountain Lumber section and of the length to which greed carries one man, seeking to take more than belongs to him. But first, here's a story of mistaken identity. Do you believe in magic? Of course not. Well, I do. After dinner this evening, what happened? For the first time in history, my family ate bread. Lots of it. And loved it. Magic, that's what I call it. Um, what kind of bread was it? Langendorf bread. I've never tried it before. Then that wasn't magic, silly. It was a finer flavor, delicious oven fresh goodness that Langendorf bread is so famous for. And that ordinary bread don't have. Well, if Langendorf bread isn't magic, it is marvelous. And that's just another way of saying nobody can resist the rich, tempting flavor of fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. It's so creamy, smooth, and flavorful, so chock full of fresh-from-the-oven goodness that one slice calls for another. What's more, Langendorf bread is good for you. All the top-quality ingredients that give extra flavor to vitamin-enriched Langendorf bread make it more nourishing, too. Try it. If you want your family to eat more bread, get fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. Judge America's Finest. tonight starts among the pines of Dominion Mountain Lumber Country, mostly owned by the Saskatchewan Lumber Company. Near its headquarters is an independent mill belonging to Len Summers and his crippled wife, Alice. He is now working at a rotary saw while Alice stands watching. Is that the order for the Santa Maria people, Len? Yes, that's it, Alice. And it's the biggest order we've had yet. It's for 190,000 board feet. That's a lot of lumber, isn't it? That'd build us a little for big house, wouldn't it? Sure would. We'll have it, too, honey. You'll see. Man, a man just drove up and stopped outside the mill. Mm. Looks like that man from the Saskatchewan Lumber Company again. It is. He's coming in here, too. The boss sent me over to see if you'd reconsider that offer he made you. I've done a lot of thinking about it, Badger. But I figure that land of mine has got the best stand of timber in this whole country. And the offer he made me ain't nowhere near what the land is worth. If you think you're going to hold him up for that bunch of timber, you're making a bad mistake, Summers. Pace Buckman ain't the man that'll stand for that kind of business. You don't have to buy my land. With him that made the offer, I'm doing all right with my little mill. And I'd just as soon go right on running it. Jim's got a nice big order from the yard in Santa Maria, too. You're a fool if you think you can buck the Saskatchewan Lumber Company. You'd be a whole lot smarter if you'd sell at any price. What do you mean by that, Badger? You ain't threatening me, are you? I'm just telling you. Buckman ain't gonna fool with you no more. Unless you make a deal, and at his price, he's gonna put you out of business. Now look at here, Badger. I don't like that kind of talk. You, a Buckman of the whole blame Saskatchewan Lumber Company, ain't scaring me one bit. Now I'll ask you to get off my property and stay off until you're ready to make me a fair and square offer for my land. Why don't you try to put me off, Summers, and see how quick I'll drop in your tracks? Get a going or I will. I'll take you by the scruff of the neck and the feet. Oh. You're always making mistakes, Summers. But I reckon this is your last one. Oh, man. Man. The man 
hurt you, Tennessee. Alex, honey, can you manage to get me some help? If, if you don't, I'm afraid it's going to be too late. Southwest comes from this section, Buckskins. The lumbering industry around here is enjoying a boom. But Ryder, look up ahead. Hey, it's a crippled woman trying up hard to walk. Yeah, she's in trouble, Red. Well, come on, we'd better see what's wrong. Up under, come on. Yeah. Hey, she's in such a hurry. She's too much of a hurry to watch where she's going. She, she keeps falling down and picking herself up again, Red. Something scared her. That's a cinch. Who's oh, under? What's the matter, little lady? I think I'm hurt. My husband's been shot, and there's nobody there to do anything for him. Well, how, how did it happen, Miss? A man, a, a man from the side that new hunger got me. Well, you'd better take us to your husband, ma'am, and we'll see what we can do. Here, I'll boost you up into my saddle. Oh, thank you. All right, there you go now. All right, set him under now. Easy, boy. Now, where's your husband? You go straight. For about one mile. And then turn off to the left. I'll show you. All right, ma'am. Come on, Thunder. Up, boy. Come on, boy. Get him up. 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 Don't tell me you walked all that that way. You know what? Lives very close to our mill. Don't waste time on palaver, Buckskin. Let's crowd up these ponies and get to moving. Let's, boy. I'll measure it. Come on. This time, Badger. <laughs> By the look on your face, I'd say you didn't get along so well. I, I, I don't know, Case. I might have pulled a bone We got into an argument and summer threatened me. And what did you do, Badger? Well, well, I guess I lost my temper. Anyway, when the smoke cleared away, he was laying on the floor and he looked to me like he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> And what are you worried about, Badger? You shot him in self-defense? Why, there ain't a judge or jury in this country do anything to you for that. There weren't any witnesses, were there? Well, only his wife. She was hanging around. I should have got rid of her, too. Well, her testimony won't hold water in court. Not against the Saskatchewan Lumber Company. Well, with Summers out of the way, what's to stop you from making out a phony bill of sale and claiming the borders land? Hmm. You know, I was just thinking that same thing. That property holds the best stand of timber in this country. Now, it's only logical that our company should buy it. Sure. Yes, I think you performed a real service for the company, Badger. I'll see that your next pay envelope contains a little boost in wages. <laughs> Buckskin, he might have a chance. And uh, if he can't? I doubt if he can live for 24 hours. Since there isn't a doctor within 90 miles of here, we've got to try and save him ourselves. You do your mom and can to help her, Ryder. I know you will, little button. Buckskin, see that every pan and kettle in this cabin is scrubbed clean. I'm going to need all the boiling water that I can get. And while I'm sterilizing the blade of my knife, one of you fellows hunt up a piece of baling wire and do the same with it. Hey, I've seen a whole room of wire lying out the mill, Red. I'll get a little hunk of that. Say, uh, what's that in that bottle on the bottom pantry shelf over there? Well, about three tablespoons full of rum, Red. Well, bring it here, Buckskin. That's our antithetic. Here you are, Red. We've been through a lot of tight places together, we three. Somehow, we've always managed to come out right end up. This time, we're going to have to depend on him for a lot of help. How 
feel this morning, partner? So fine, Ryder. Good. Yeah, you sure are looking a lot better. You know, for two or three days there, I wouldn't have given a back pin for your chances. Oh, when Alice first told me what you fellas done, I couldn't hardly believe it. <laughs> You're lucky you got put all together again. Red took the Duchess's talk apart one time and had half of the innards left over. <laughs> Uh, up to now, I haven't questioned you about this thing, Len. Uh, well, I didn't think you felt like talking very much. Well, Red, uh, two years ago, I found out this land had never been claimed, so I took it up. 800 acres in all. and formed a little company. Oh, that must have burned up the Saskatchewan Lumber Company, huh? <laughs> they were as mad as hatters because they let it slip through their fingers. Sure was a boner on their part. Oh, uh, they made me an offer for the land. A small fraction of what it's worth, and I turned them down. Then they started to bluff and threaten, but... I stood my ground. Then this happened. Red Ryder! Red Ryder, come in quick! What is it, son? He, he climbed him up in tree. See a man sneak him up through underbrush. He says some will say it'd be a man who threw him her husband. Where is he, little beaver? Now an edge of clearing. Let's show him you. Come on, Buckskin. Down! 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 Quick! Why, is that guy a murdering coyote? But he, he tried to die, die go a lot of us. Those shots came from that patch of oak brush yonder. Let him have it, Buck. Uh, he clear him out, Red Ryder. Yeah, I reckon he didn't like them there slugs of whistling past his ears. That kind of whistling, when I don't expect it, annoys me, too. I'm going to ride over to the Saskatchewan Lumber Company and teach them a new kind of business ethics. Something tells me Red's troubles are just beginning. Trying to teach a cheat like Pace Buckman the difference between good and bad is a man-sized assignment. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Does 1,100 sound like a pretty big number? It does if you're talking about vitamins. And right now, we're thinking about the 1,100 units of B1 you find in every loaf of Dr. Penland's vitamin B1 wheat bread. Yes, ma'am, when you see the name Dr. Penland's vitamin B1 wheat bread on the wrapper... It's your guarantee of 1,100 units of vitamin B1. By simply including this fresh, delicious bread in daily menus, you're being smart, being sure of yours and your family's supply of B1. And wait till you taste the flavor of Dr. Penland's vitamin B1 wheat bread. Distinctive and nut-like, it's brimming with a hearty goodness of sun-ripened wheat. Try it. For extra energy, extra flavor, get fresh, delicious Dr. Penland's vitamin B1 wheat bread. Ideal for reducing diet. As we go back to our adventure with Red Rider, you'll recall that the cowboy has saved the life of Len Summers, a mill owner. Len had been gunned down by a henchman of Pace Buckman, head of the rival lumber company, because of his refusal to sell his land to Buckman. The henchman then tried to dry gulch Red and his pals, but has been unsuccessful. Red has said he would bring about a showdown with the would-be killer. Now, it's a little later, and Red is walking through the door of Pace Buckman's office. Your name Buckman? That's right. My name's Ryder. I just trailed that baboon standing beside you there from the summer's mill after he took a pot shot at me from the brush. Why, there must be some mistake. Badger hasn't left the camp here all day. No, I don't like to call the man a liar, but he was there. And I followed him from there all the way down here. And he's also the same polecat who gunned down Summers in his mill the other day. You're crazy. That little matter will be taken care of through the due processes of the law. You know, fortunately for you two, Summers is going to live. Or the charge would be worse than attempted murder. If Summers says I gunned him down, Summers is a liar. The jury will decide that, mister. Listen, redhead. You try to pin that on me, and I'll... I hope you try that. <laughs> now, there's one more thing, Mr. Buckman. You keep your plug of grease away from that mill from now on, or you'll be bringing them back in a pine box. Just what do you mean? I know all about your little scheme, and I'm here to tell you it isn't going to work. Summers won't sell you a foot of that timber at any price. And your last chance to steal it just went glimmering. Do I understand you're making this a personal issue? Yes, that's right. And what I said for your plug of grease goes for you, too. You stay off that property, or we'll take some of that nice new lumber and build you a winter overcoat. <laughs> Button, if you're going to be my help, 
Harper. You've got to move faster than that. These there boards are stacking up here, and they're getting in the way. What do you say, Buck? I say, hurry up and fire them out boards over in the corner rather than below. We don't hear them yet, Buck. Hot today, Red. Yeah, there's a Chinook wind blowing. Warmed up things considerably. How's the order coming, Buckskin? Oh, it's coming all right, Red. Good. Yeah, you can tell Mr. Summer not to worry on about working the mail till he gets better. Uh, reckon we'll have it done by night. That's fine. Somebody's got to ride into town and buy some supplies. Just checking the larder over in the Summer's cabin. It's practically empty. Oh, shucking. And me are doing all this year work and, and getting up all this year appetite. <laughs> I wasn't worrying about you or your appetite. But our Len and Mrs. Summers and Little Beaver are going to have to have some chow. Uh, since you're delivering the lumber to the railroad tomorrow, I reckon I'd better ride into town and get that grub. You take me to Red Riders? Yeah, you can come along if you want to, son. What about Mrs. Summers? Oh, here she come now, Red. Uh, you ain't going off and leave me, are you, ma'am? No, Buck, Dan. The queen wants you so you don't cut off a finger and help Mrs. Summers. I'll have all I can do right here. <laughs> uh, then, then you two better get it going, Red. It's a long way to town. It'll be dark before you know it. Yeah, I guess it will. Man, I think it's hotter outside than it is in the mill, Red. Yet that wind almost scorches your hide. Be careful about fires around the place, Buckskin. With a wind like this, the whole forest would go up. My husband taught me a long time ago to be careful about fires. Oh, we'll watch it, Red. All right, that's good. Come on, pile on your pony, son. We'll ride out of here, huh? You bet you. <laughs> you see you by and by, Mrs. Summers and Buckskin. Bye, little boy. Bye. So long, folks. Come on. You're up, Papu. That Red Rider's a nice man, Buckskin. Nice. <laughs> That that long, lean, red-headed Ranahan is the salt of this earth, ma'am. No, oh, I kind of wish you'd have stayed here, though. Why, Buckskin? No, oh, I don't know. It's such a Chinook wind, I reckon. It makes a fellow feel kind of uneasy. You, you can just almost smell the trouble in the air. <laughs> saying, Badger, that everything comes to him who waits. We've waited, and things are coming our way now. Yeah. So far, they are. What do you mean, so far? Why, everything's working out perfect. That redhead and the engine kid have lit out for town somewhere, leaving the coast clear for us. Don't forget that old duffer they call Buckskin is still at the mill. <laughs> A lot of help he'll be. He'll just fly with the rest of them. Better not talk too loud, boss. Forces carry on this wind. I think this is close enough anyway, don't you? It ought to be. There's plenty of undergrowth from here to the clearing where the mill stands. The fire ought to take hold good. <laughs> That's what I think, too. Rain up right here. Hello. Oh, no, boy. Oh, boy. Now, don't forget that can of coal oil you got tied to your saddle. I'll have it untied in just a minute. All right, I've got it. Let's go. started right here somewhere. This wind will carry the flames right up to the mill before they find out what's happening to them. The fire's got a long way to go, boss. But it'll likely burn itself out. When it reaches the river, you won't lose a tree. That's what I'm counting on. You don't think I'd start a fire if I thought my own timber would be in danger, do you? That's why I said everything's working out perfect for us. Oh, here. Yeah, this will do right here. Look at this mess of brush in here. It's as dry as tinder. Look at that. Hmm. This will go up like powder, Badger. Oh, come on. Scatter that oil around on it and let's get out of here. Uh, We're a long way from the mill. I still don't want to be seen anywhere near this fire. That ought to do it. Get back, please. I'll touch a match to it. Here it goes. Fine. Now, come on, come on, Dodger. We can get out of here, Paolo. I'll call this a good day's work. Yes, indeed, a very good day's work. My gracious, you're a 
a slow dishwiper, but Stan. Well, I reckon I ain't been what you call domesticated yet. Oh, you find an owl's a pretty hard taskmaster, Buckskin? No, sir, Mr. Summers. He's just pretty, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Blodgett. You say the nicest thing. The trouble is, I just ain't got my mind on work somehow or another. For the last few minutes, I, I've been smelling smoke. Well, it's probably that old stovepipe. It always smokes when the wind blows from the north. What's the matter now, Buckskin? Not that roaring sound. Don't you want to hear it? Yeah, I do. I can hear it way off somewhere. Hit him, isn't it? There's a fire over there, off beyond the mill. The wood's starting to burn. Which way is it blowing? I'm afraid it's coming this way. Oh, Buckskin, what have all we do? That's, that's just one thing we can do, ma'am. We get out of here as fast as we can. We ain't no danger yet, but we'll soon will be. Could we make it to the river, Buckskin? It lies east and south of here. Yeah, I know, but I'm afraid it's too far. You see, it'll be, it, it's, well, it'll be so going, Mr. Summers. But what do we do? We can't stay here and burn out. But the river's only a mile and three quarters, Buckskin. Yeah, I know. You, you see, West, well, we, we couldn't make it. Uh, you ain't too well. Well, and with then... just you and Alice, you maybe could. Oh, not on your tin tight, mister. We don't play that away where I come from. We'll start and see if we can... Wait a minute. I'll pack you out there, Mr. Summers, and Mrs. Summers can keep up with us. I'll try hard, Buckskin. It's our only chance, honey gal. Oh, I wish I was. Well, come on, then. Come on. We'd better get it going. We ain't got no time to waste. That, that fire's coming around the fast. Please, Buckskin. Just a little minute. Our oh, Father, you are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. <laughs> Glad when we get the store red brighter. You'd be a muscle hungry. Yeah, it won't take long, son. Once we get out of these woods, the store's just a little ways along the road. Get him back there, Red Rider. Let's see him on fire. Oh, thunder. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Well, they sure are, son, and that fire's traveling toward the summer's mill a mile a minute. You'd be worried about Buckskin and those people. Well, we can't get back to them now, little button. But we better do them then, Red Rider. We've got to save them. And that's just what we're going to do. Come on, let's make a dash for us while we can. Up, boy. Come no, on, Thunder. Not there. But we're going back towards the store. We're going the wrong way. That's right, little button. I'm going to buy something at that grocery store, and it's not going to be grocery. <laughs> hazard of fire stacking up against him minute by minute, Red Rider's chances of saving his friends seem mighty slim. We'll return for the thrilling climax in just a minute. Right now, let's get our master decoders ready for the Victory Patrol quiz. If you've read the story about Rip Van Winkle, the man who took the longest sleep in fiction, you know old Rip chose the mountains for his bed. But I wonder if you know which mountains those were. They're in the state of New York, and if you look under master code number four, you'll find the answer. That's master code number four. The name of the mountains in which Rip Van Winkle took his sleep is 23, 21, 14, 13, 5, 3, 6, 6 again, and 13. Now, what's the name of the bread with the super delicious flavor? There's just one answer. Langendorf bread, the official bread of the Victory Patrol. Ask Mother to get fresh and tasty Langendorf bread. Judge America's finest. And now, as we return to our story, we find it is a short time later, and Buckskin and the Summers are making their way along a narrow trail through the timber. The fire's getting mighty close, Buckskin. You can't go too much further. Oh, why, why don't you take Alice and go on and, and just leave me behind? Leave you? Oh, you're talking crazy, Lynn. We started out together... That's the way we're going to end. Look there! Cry, oh! my nimble. Pieces up there, fallen tree, landing clear over here to our feet. Say, we better find that helmet, and we better find it quick. Now, look out for them that burning chunks in the trail. Oh, there. There goes another tree, Buckskin. Land to live in it. Getting kind of warm around these here parts. No use. We can't make it. The fire has us him yet. Oh, man. Man, that is the end of everything. Oh, not that job, Jose. Look yonder. The river. Yes, sir, the river. Sir. Come on, let's put on a bus of speed. Once in the river, we've got a chance. Can you make it, Alice? 
broadcasting system. From out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy. and watch up, Ella. I'll see you a little later on. Sure. I heard you coming up the stairs, so I waited. Oh, yes? Yeah? In case time hangs heavy on your hand, we got a nice, friendly little poker game going on in my room. If you're interested, drop in. The room's 207.
the biggest of the season at Tarantula Springs, and cowboys for miles around are planning to attend. Our story begins in the Traeger Ranch, where the kid from Hasayampa is signed on to help with the fall roundup. Although the kid is a pretty fair cowhand, like a lot of youngsters, he thinks he's better than he really is and is inclined to brag about his abilities. He's now talking with Big Bill Sykes, the foreman. A bunch of the hands are lolling nearby. Hey, look, Bill, the roundup's over and the cattle are in the shipping pen, so I'm going to take a few days off. Yeah? What's your big idea? Well, there's a rodeo up at Tarantula Springs this weekend. Top money in a bronc riding contest is 150 bucks. I figure I can win it. <laughs> Did you hear that, boys? That? Little Willie Whistle Britchy is going to win the bronc riding contest at Tarantula Springs. <laughs> Jasper, think I can. Well, I know you can't because you ain't going. I need you here. Fences along the northeast section are falling to pieces. They got to be fixed. Well, then somebody else is going to have to fix them. I'm going to that Bronx show and I'm shoving off right now. What's more, I'm coming back with that hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> you don't think much of yourself, do you, son? Yeah, some of the best riders in this section will be competing in that contest. You wouldn't have a chance. You think so? You just wait and see. You know, if I wasn't so busy on the ranch, I'd ride up there just to see some of the conceit knocked out of you. I ain't conceited. Yeah. But a fella knows whether he's good or not, and I'm plenty good when it comes to riding Bronx. <laughs> Say, what do you know, boys? We had the champion Bronco bust of the world right here on the Traeger Ranch. We didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Windjammer. If I wasn't short of hands, I'd fire you on the spot. Seeing I am, I'll let you off. On one condition. That you take first money and that's their contest. And if you don't, you needn't come back, savvy? And you're sick and tired of all your big talk, too. <laughs> I'm afraid old Bill ain't got much confidence in him. Yeah, don't pay no attention to him. He's just getting old and soured in the world. You go on up there and win. Us hands will be rooting for you all the way. Thanks, Baldy. Hey, steady, Kino. Steady, boy. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I see you ran a hands the first of the week. When I do, the Hussy Yumpy Kid's gonna be $150.60. What event you figuring on entering, Wed? Uh, Buck and Bronx, and maybe the calf roping, Buckskin. Oh, you're a sense to win the Buck and Bronx contest. Why, they hate a car folks from these here parts as one of many of them as you have. Oh, I've just been lucky, that's all. You know him better than that, Red Rider. Ah, he knows it, too. But he just ain't the one to toot his own horn. Hey, look at that bad car potter tearing down off that hill yonder. Why, he's after to break his dog gone to Nick. He's going to rodeo, too, me, bet him. Well, that may be where he's headed, but he won't get there if he keeps up a pace like that. That's rough ground he's traveling over. Good gravy, Red. He's down right now. He take him off and spill. Come on, compadres. Get him up, Come on, there, boy. Ah. Yeah, if we don't find that what he did, it's going to be a miracle. Come on, travel boy. Come on, thunder. Hey, the fellows are struggling to his feet, Red. Why, he looks like he's just a kid. Horse, no, get him up. Well, that horse has been hurt. Oh, Are you all in one piece, son? I guess so. Gotta knock me silly for a minute. Hey, what in thunder happened? Kino stepped in a gopher hole. Don't you know any better than to let a horse cut over ground like this? Oh, I've done it lots of times. And just one time too many, if you think anything like that horse of yours. Did, did Kino get hurt? Broke both front legs is all. Then, then we'll, we'll have to. Sure. There ain't nothing else you can do, young fella. But, gee, he's such a sweat little horse, the best one I ever had. You should have thought of that a little sooner, son. Oh, come on, Sonny. Let's just sort of look to the way. Oh, gee, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I've done this to you. Can you not cry? you get another horse someday. I can never get another horse like Kino. I'm sorry, son, but it had to be done. Yeah, I know. Where were you headed for? Tarantula Springs? Yeah, I'm going to ride in a rodeo up there. Well, that's where we're going, too. Little Beaver here doesn't mind. We'll take the rigging off your horse and throw it on his paint, and you can ride him to the springs. Sure. That'd be all right with me. You can ride on Thunder with me, Little Beaver. Uh, did you ever ride in a rodeo before? Uh, nope. Uh, shows around where I've been where they never put up enough prize money to make it worthwhile. Oh. And, and this one, top money in the buck and bronc contest is $150. Uh, 
I intend to win it. Hey, Trancler Springs looks nice, all decorated up with flags and button and stuff. Being big crowd in town, too. Where is it you want to go, young fella? Well, some of the hands on the Trigger Ranch where I've been working told me the Central House is a good place to stop. Well, that's it, right across the street. Yeah, hold it, hold it, hold it. Well, I'm sure obliged to you fellas for the lift. Ah, you're quite welcome, son. Chances are we'll see you around. Well, where are you fellas going to stop? Oh, we're putting up at the Central House, too. But I reckon we'll stable the horses first. Oh, we'll leave your rig in there. Oh, thanks. Well, lots of luck at the rodeo, Red. Thanks. Which is better stay off that buck and bronx. I got that contest all sold up. <laughs> so long, kid. Bye. Come on, Ed. Get that boy. Get him up. Come on. You know, it's a wonder to me that that kid can ever buy a hat and fit him. His head sure swelled up. He got a pretty good opinion of himself, all right. Oh, well, he's just a kid. A few hard knocks will take a lot of that out of him. That is, I think it will. <laughs> I'm a kid. I'd like to get a room. Have you got a reservation? Oh, no, I haven't. Well, I don't know whether I can fix up or not. There's an awful big crowd in town, you know. Just let me look a second. Well, gee, I hope you have. I had enough bad luck already. Coming to hear my horse stepped in a gopher hole. Yeah, I have one room on the second floor. Now, it's in the back and it's pretty small, but, well, it's the only thing that's left. Well, I'll take it. I'm riding in the Bronx show tomorrow, and i got to have a place to sleep. I Sign here, please. Room 213 at the end of the hall. Oh, thanks. Your home's in Hacienda, huh? Well, I, I was born there. Lately, I've been working on a Traeger Ranch. That's a couple of counties west of there. I always say my home's where I hang my hat. Haven't you any folks? Well, no. They, they was killed in a runaway accident when I was about five years old. I don't even remember them much. Hmm. That's kind of a coincidence. My folks was killed, too. They was killed by the Apaches, and well, I guess we're kind of in the same boat, ain't we? Yeah. Yeah, we are at that. Hey, what does a fella do to kill time around this town? Well, there's a pool hall up the street. A lot of the local fellas hang out there. No, I, I don't care much for pool. Well, tomorrow night after the rodeo, there's going to be a big dance. Are you going? <laughs> I don't know. On account of I ain't so very pretty, why, well, nobody ever asks me if they can find somebody else. Well, I'll take you if you'd like to go. You will? Why, sure. I'd be proud to take you. Hiya, you, cowboy. Having a good time? Well, I just got here a few minutes ago. Well, if you don't have fun in Tarantula Springs, it'll be your own fault, son. Hey, who's that fella? Oh, that's Rocky Hill. He's a gambler. Runs a poker game upstairs. Poker? Yeah. But take a tip from me and stay out of it. Rocky makes gambling his business. And what's more, he also makes it pay. I couldn't play if I wanted to. I just got money enough to pay my room rent, get my breakfast, and take care of my entry fee tomorrow. Well, you're sure traveling light. How did you figure on going to dance? Well, with the money, I'm going to win the Bronc riding contest. That's $150, you know. Oh. Well, I'm going upstairs and wash up. I'll see you a little later on. Yeah, sure. So I waited. Oh, yeah? In case time hangs heavy on your hands, we got a nice, friendly little poker game going on in my room. If you're interested, drop me in. The room's 207.
we return to our story of the West that lives forever, we find the girl Ella at the desk in the lobby of the Central House. It's early the following morning. Good morning. How'd you sleep last night? I didn't. Oh? Can I send a telegram to the Traeger Ranch from here? Sure. We've got a telephone. I'll just phone it to the station agent, and, and he'll send it out from there. Who's it to go to? To the cow hands on the Traeger Ranch. And, and please, could you, could you just put it on my bill? I, I'll pay you after the show this afternoon. Well, the, the proprietor don't allow us to do that ordinarily, but... Well, seeing it's you, I will. Well... Here's a message. I got it all writ out already. Hey, how long will it take to get an answer, do you think? Mm, that depends. Two or three hours, anyway. What happened to you, kid? Oh, like a chump, I never listened to what you told me. I bumped into Rocky Hill in the hall upstairs, and, well, I was feeling kind of lucky. Oh, I see. Yeah, they sure cleaned me out. I ain't got a dime. But don't you worry about the bill. I'll take care of everything just as soon as the show's over. Well... You'd better go up to your room and try to get some rest. You look pretty awful now. As soon as the answer comes, I'll let you know. Gee. Yes, well. Gee. Suppose they don't send it. Yeah, and she's a pretty gal, too. And she liked me a heap. <laughs> See, where it? Can you get that the hussy up a kid just to go up in their stairs? Yeah. You fellas know him? The champion bunk bust of the world? Oh, sure, we know him well. Yeah, he had a little tough luck with his horse on the trail yesterday. We gave him a lift into town. And he had some more tough luck last night. He got into a poker game with Rocky Hill, and, well, Rocky took him for all he had. Well, he ought to have more sense than to get in the game. Rocky with... Hill? What's that card sharper doing in Tarantula Springs? You know him, you Red Rider? Yeah, he and I have tangled a time or two. He's the most unprincipled scoundrel that ever dealt a card. Knowing that cowpokes are easy marks, he makes it a business to follow the rodeos. Yeah, and the doggone profitable business, too. You mean he'd trim them the cowboys, Red Ryder? Trim them, Little Beaver. He shears them. He's not satisfied if he just gets their money. He takes their horses, their rigging, and even the clothes off their backs. And I guess there's no way to stop him, either. He comes here every year. Well, can you and the little button stay here in the lobby. I think I'll go up and have a talk with Rocky. What room's he in, miss? 207. But he won't be up this early. He always sleeps till noon. Well, if he isn't awake, he will be in a minute. I got a few things I want to say to Mr. Hill. All right. All right. Don't break it down. I'm coming. What in blazes are you making all this row at this time of the... Oh, it's you. What do you want? I want to talk to you, Rocky. You'll have to come back later. Right now, I... You're going to listen to me right now. You've got an internal nerve pushing your way into my room. You're still up to your old tricks, aren't you, Rocky? I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Why do you pick on these cowpokes and make 50 or $60 a month? Why don't you go after the hombres that have got some money and can afford to lose it? If cowhands are suckers and want to gamble away their dough, that's their business. If I win it, that's mine. If you gave him an even break, I'd say you're right. But you don't. A man hasn't a chance in the same game with you. Are you trying to insinuate... I don't insinuate. I'm just telling you, Rocky Hill. You're a thieving crook and you know it. Last you, Ryder. I've taken all I'm going to take from you. You, you, you get out of my room and don't you... You should have put more steam behind that, Rocky. I happen to know that you made a small fortune betting on rodeo events. And there isn't a dirty trick you won't pull to see that your man comes out on top. Well, I'm competing today, so you'd better watch your step. All right, get up. Now, you pull any funny business out at the fairgrounds this afternoon, you're going to be sorry, Rocky. You'll be mighty sorry. Shiners, pal. Red Rider's in town. Oh, yeah? He's riding in the rodeo, too. Gee, uh, that ain't so good, is it? You gotta win that bronc riding contest, understand? 
I've got a lot of money up on you. Before it's over, I'll have a lot more. You mean I gotta beat Red Rider? Why, that ran a hand can ride a Texas twister. He could get a bad fall, couldn't he? Mm. Watch where he leaves the saddle. When he isn't looking, doctor up the cinch. You mean, uh, like we always do? Yeah, but carefully, Dodge. Do it very carefully so it won't be detected before he makes his ride. Unless we stop that redhead, he's a cinch to take first money. Uh, say, Miss Ella, uh, how'd you like me to do you a big favor and take you to the dance with me tonight? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Blodgett, but I've already got a date. <laughs> Central House. The Hassie Amber Kid? Oh, yeah. I'll take the message, Mr. Hutchins. Hands are all out. Fix and fence. Stop. I don't have the dough and wouldn't send it to you if I did. Stop. Signed, Big Bill. Yeah. Yeah, I got it, Mr. Hutchins. Thanks. Hello, Fellas. Hello, Hello, Ellie. Any answer come to my message yet? Yeah. Yeah, it just came this very minute. Well, did they send the money? No, they didn't. They... They didn't? Well, then I guess I can't ride today. I haven't got any entry fee. But they're going to send it this afternoon. Well, this afternoon will be too late. i got to get my entry fee in now. How much is it, kid? Fifteen dollars, Ellen. Well, I'll lend you the money, and, and you can pay me back when the other comes. Oh, gee, I... You sure you got it to spare? Oh, sure. I just got paid a little while ago. Here. That's mighty swell of you. I'll get down to the fairgrounds now and sign the entry list. And don't you worry about that loan. I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back with interest. That was one of the nicest white lies I ever heard told, Ella. Why'd you do it? No, I don't know. I just felt sorry for him, I guess. Oh, that uh, kid, he's got more chance of winning that uh, contest than... uh, why are you kicking me for a rib? Well, for his sake, I hope he does. I'll be rooting for him anyway. Maybe we see you down at fairgrounds, huh? I'll sure be there, little beaver. That was a pretty nice thing that little gal just did, compadres. Yeah, but she should have saved her money. With you in that, that contest, he ain't got a chance. I've changed my mind, Buckskin. I'm not going to ride. <laughs> I just found that rider ain't entered in the bronc riding contest at all. He ain't? Oh. Well, then it ought to be duck soup for you. Well, if there's one dark horse nobody seems to know much about. A youngster called a Hesse Ampa Kid. To hear him talk, he's got it in the bag. Oh, yeah? He sat in our game last night, and we heard about how good he was. Well, if he's as half as good as he thinks he is, he's liable to gum up our deal. Well, lay off Ryder's saddle and fix up the kids instead. I've got too much at stake to take any chances now.
as we get back to our adventure with America's famous fighting cowboy, we find the rodeo in full swing. Watching from the fence a short distance from the chutes are Ella and the hossy out of here. I drew a great horse, Ella. Dark Fury. That horse is loco, kid. Last year he killed a man. But he's show, Ella, and I'm not afraid of him. I'm not afraid of any horse on earth. Hey, kid. Better get over to the chutes. Your number's coming up. Oh, thanks, Red. I'll see you all later. Bad young fella. I, I don't know. Mm. How is he, Red? How is he? Oh, oh well, something happened. Something went wrong. Oh, I know. But why doesn't someone get a doctor? Somebody go get him one now, Miss Ella. Will you do me just one more favor, Ella? Yes, anything. Well, the hands back at the trigger edge. Why? Tell him it was mighty nice of him to send me that money. And I tell him I'm sorry I let him down this way. I, oh. I could have rode that horse, but something happened. Oh. Something went wrong. Oh, no. Hey, Red. 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 I was just looking at the kid's saddle. The belly band was pounded between two rocks till the fibers is almost cut in two. And I'll bet my shirt that Rocky Hill had something to do with it, too. Where are you going, Red? To hunt that varmint up. Hey, Red, wait for me. Ain't that that hill just piling on that the horse over yonder? Yeah, it is. Come on. All right. Steady, Thunder. Steady, boy. Uh, That murdering coyote is going to pay for this. All right, up, boy. Come on, sit down. All right, after him, Thunder, old boy. After him. We're gaining on him, Red. Yeah, he knows it, too. Say, hey, what are you getting that there hook ready for? You'll see. You better pull up, Rocky, or I'll drag you from that horse. Keep away from me, Ryder. All right, you ask for it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Red, that there is what I call dabbing a twine. And I'll get out your pig and string, and that that calf will be all ready for your brand. I want to give you back that $15, Ella. I can afford to lose it. You can't. If you don't mind, Red, I'd rather leave it just the way it is. We were both a couple of lonely people, and, well, it'll be kind of nice to remember that I tried to help him out. Well, if that's the way you want it, that's the way it's going to be. If you're still here, we'll see you again next year. Bye. Goodbye, Bye. Ella. Bye. 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 Well, I've been trying to put Rocky Hill behind the bars for years, and I finally did it. He's in the two Red Riders. I'll say he does. All right, come on, travel boy. Pound that dirt. Come on, thunder. Adventures of Red Rider. From out of the West comes America's famous fighting cowboy. Daddy, what chance would you have alone against five fox? Who said anything about being alone? 
Just before I drove home, I stopped at Western Union and sent a telegram to the best doggone two-fisted cowboy tornado that ever rolled the range. Asked him to come over and help. Two-fisted cowboy tornado? You bet. Once he gets here, let me see Cy Fawcett try to push around Mr. Red Rider. Well, where there's trouble, if Red has missed it the first time, someone's bound to send for him and drag him into it. You'll see what I mean is tonight's great story of the West that lives forever, the brand buster, unquote. lacerating wire which kept cattle from drifting, ranch boundaries secure, fortunes were made and fortunes were lost when cattle strayed from home and were mavericks with some strange brand. Tonight's story is laid against this background. It takes place about 90 miles northwest of Red Rider's home ranch, close to the little cow town of Rainsville. In the parlor of the Two Bar S Ranch, one of the greatest in the county, we find owner Oliver Biglow bitterly talking to his daughter, Donna. By glory, Dinah, there's no sense in arguing with me. I know what I'm doing. And I tell you, I'm going down to Foster's place and tell him off proper. But, Daddy, maybe you made a mistake when you gave him that deed. For what you thought was only 300 acres. Oh, mistake? Ah, the only mistake I ever made was in dealing with that crooked, dumb principal, no good buzzard in the first place. I know what I wrote on that deed. And it was for just 300 acres, not 3,000. Then if you're so sure he changed the deed and forged the number of acres, you ought to go to the law, not try to take the law into your own hands. Who said anything about taking the law in my own hands? I'm just going over to Foster's place and give him 24 hours to change that deed back again to 300 acres or suffer the consequences. Daddy, what chance would you have alone? The thing about me being alone. Just before I drove home, I stopped at Western Union and sent a telegram to the best dog gone, two-fisted cowboy tornado that ever rode a range, asking him to come over and help. Two-fisted cowboy tornado? You bet. Once he gets here, let me see Cy Fawcett try to push around Mr. Red Rider. Look, Mr. Fawcett, I work for you and all that. But honest, you ain't been in Rainsville long enough to know these things. The catamounts when he gets wild. You don't say, Clyde. And he looks so gentle and so mild. Okay, but if Biglow rears back at... Oh, no, talk of the devil. Here comes Biglow now. Morning, Oliver. Don't you, Oliver, me, Cyrus Fawcett. Now, don't tell me that just because you made a perfectly understandable mistake in filling out that deed that you're still going to hold it against me. Fawcett, maybe you ain't been out west long enough to understand those folks, but I'm telling you here and now, them slick city ways of yours don't go. Now, I'm telling you this much, too. Unless you turn that deed back to me and take a new one for 300 acres, the only ground you're going to need is a six-foot piece up on Boot Hill. Flag. Show the gentleman to the door. And don't be too polite about it. Well, Mr. Fawcett, I think... Flag, do as you're told. Okay. Come on, Mr. Biglow. You lay a hand on me and I'll... Why, you old goat, let that gun alone. You blithering coyote. Let go of that gun or I... Mr. Biglow, you pulled your gun, acted like a fool, and ruined a $500 mirror. Now get out before I lose my temper completely. If that gun hand of yours didn't have my six guns, I'd show you who'd lose a temper. But you wait till tomorrow. Just you wait till Red Rider gets here. That's all I have to say to you this morning. So, he sent for some help, did he? Well, the only kind of help Oliver Biglow is going to need from now on isn't one man. He's going to need six men as pallbearers for his funeral. Come on, Flag, and bring my rifle. That old coyote is never even going to get home. All right, Flag, here comes Big Low. And remember, we're not going to miss. Big 
here for farming to Southern Comforts Red. He fishes Oliver Big Lowe's ranch. He's got the biggest one I've seen since the load up from Texas. Yeah, folks, again, it's a beautiful spread. And like all beautiful spreads, undoubtedly, it's brought Oliver a lot of trouble. Yes, if no having trouble, you know, send him you that telegram. Right, son. Easy, Sunday. Rain up, compadres. This seems to be the house. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, oh. Right. Certainly hope Oliver's home. Yes, yeah, I certainly hope that that daughter is at home. She's about the best looking filly I ever clapped eyes on. Oh, sure, Mother. Mm-hmm. Come on. Won't y'all sit down? Oh, thanks. Dinah, it's not hard to see something's gone wrong. Your dad? Dry goats this morning. On his way back from town. Who? Was Oliver? Dry goats? So who got it to? Who is the culprit? Uh, who? I don't know if there's any need asking them questions. You just tell us what you know, Dinah. That is, if you feel like talking. But it's all right, Red. If you want to know who I think it is. You mean I'm you suspecting someone? I certainly do. The double-crossing, sneaky, sheep-stealing storekeeper, Cyrus Fawcett. Oh, Red, I can't prove it, but I know Fawcett did it. Why do you say that? Had he threatened your father? I don't think so, but Daddy had threatened him plenty. Well, for goodness sake, was there some hard feeling between them? There certainly was, at least on my father's part. You see, Red, Fawcett just moved to Rangeville five or six months ago. He's an Easterner come out from Kansas City. And after he opened the store, he started to look around for some ranch land he could buy. Mm-hmm. Look better, huh? But if he wanted to buy the land, he certainly found square shooting there. He usually have trouble with the fellas who don't want to trade for land. Trade about six bullets for 600 acres. Yeah, Buckskin's right, Dinah. This horse of sounds legitimate. Oh, sure. Very legitimate. All except for one thing. Daddy sold him 300 acres. And when the deed showed up for filing, Mr. Fawcett had raised it to 3,000 acres. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, knowing your dad as I did, I just picture him losing his temper, blowing up and doing something rash. But he wasn't gunned down in Fawcett's store, was he? He was ambushed on his way home. I uh, know. That's the part that makes it tough to prove, isn't it? What do that can be? Fred, Fred, it's Fawcett. I recognize his buckboard outside. Now you're going to get a chance to see what kind of a character he is. Oh, wait a minute, Dinah. Don't open that door. Don't open the door. No, wait till Buck's again. Little Beaver and I go in the other room. You mean you don't want to meet him? No, I don't. Not yet. Well, you're going to be a fine lot of help, aren't you? The great red rider backing down right off the bat. Well, now, now, see here, miss. The red hater backing down. If you don't want to meet him, he's got a good and sufficient reason. Oh, I'm sure. Playing off street really gets things done. Oh, doggone it, Dinah. I only want to... Explain it to you later. You'd better let Fawcett in now. Come on, Buckskin, little beaver. Good afternoon, Miss Piglow. May I come in? I suppose so. I heard about your father. Of course. A week ago, I would have felt sorry for your father. And for you. Well, you don't have to. Certainly, your sympathy is something I don't expect. What's more, I don't want. Now, if that's all you come out here for. It was. But since your attitude is very apparent, I think I'll make this a business call. Save myself the trouble of coming to see you again. Well, that's fine. Because you'll be saving me the trouble of seeing you again. Your father told you he sold me only 300 acres, didn't he? That's all he did tell you. Well, that point is past argument. When he came into town this morning, he tried to get me to promise I wouldn't tell you about this. Here. It's still a sale. For 600 head of cattle. A bill of sale for 600 head of cattle. You didn't think I was going to buy 3,000 acres just to have jack rabbits on it, did you? I bought a ranch from your father. A ranch with cattle on it. You. Mr. Fawcett, I want to tell you something you already know. This bill of sale is nothing but a forgery. You copied my father's signature from the original deed. How clever of me. And of course, it's a good that. I'm giving you three to get out of here. There's no sense reaching for that rifle. I'm going, now that I've told you the facts. But I'll be back Monday and take over my 3,000 acres and the cattle that go with it. Good day, Mr. Snow. Don't expect to see me at your farm. You. Fred! Buckskin! Come in here! Fred, did you happen to hear what he said? Yes, we heard everything. Do you believe that your father did sell him the cattle? How can you even ask that? $1,100 for 3,000 acres and 600 head of cattle? 
Hey, it's Amos, Miss Dinah, Red Rider. Yeah, so do I, son, but that doesn't mean that a judge and 12 men on the jury would. You mean you're actually going to stand by and let Fawcett get away with this, this highway robbery? If you think I would, this has been a wasted trip. But jailbirds the grand jury's way. What are you going to do? Well, if Dinah feels up to it, we four are going to ride into town and pay a call on the sheriff. <laughs> You can't really mean that. Well, I'll do, Miss Dinah. Guessing is one thing, proof's another. And how are you going to prove a thing like a forgery when even you admit you couldn't tell if it was your father's signature or not? Well, there's no sense glaring at the sheriff, Dinah. What he says is right. Well, if you think I'm going to be robbed in the ranch and stock, either one of you, you've got another thing coming. Miss Dinah, law is the law. Isn't that nice? If that's the law... Maybe I can make up a few laws of my own. Dinah, you're not going to get any place acting this way. And as far as you're concerned, Mr. Ryder, remember didn't ask you to come down here. And if my father had known as much about you as I do now, I don't think he would have either. There are ways of getting things done. And having you around certainly isn't going to help put Fawcett where he belongs, in a fresh dug grave up on Boot Hill. <laughs> Buster for a lot more of the promised excitement Western style in tonight's story. As we return to the action, Red with Dinah and his two compadres have returned to the Big Low Ranch from the sheriff's office. While Dinah, still bitterly angry at Red, has flounced off to her room, Red is trying to explain to Buckskin and Little Beaver what he plans to do about Cyrus Fox. Let's go off for angry with you, Red Angry? Angry? She's a plum riled up, she'd have split her side. And that is, if she hadn't been aware... Uh, 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 Buckskin, never mind the intimate details. Although I will admit she certainly seemed put out. Well, but I guess with a dad getting dragged off, she's not herself. What are you going to do about Mr. Fawcett? What's the use of telling you and then having to repeat it again to Dinah? I wonder where that young lady is. Why are you not calling me? Now, that's what I call a capable idea. Oh, you do. I don't know where you two were brought up, but you're certainly shy on manners where young ladies are concerned. Well, yeah, there's nothing in my book of etiquette that says I can't knock on her door. Dinah, Dinah, would you mind coming out a minute, if it's convenient? No, I'm not coming out. So what's more, Mr. Ryder? Your invitation's at an end. So why don't you just pack up and clear out of here? Why, 
out of that doggone TV academy house. Wait a minute, Dinah. There's no sense flying off the handle. I want to talk to you about Fawcett. Fred, I told you politely. I want you to pack up and get out of my house. And that's been here 12 hours too long, as far as I'm concerned. Don't go on you. You talk like a spoiled brat. I came over here because your dad wanted some help, and I'm going to... Help? Gonna... I'm not a help you are. To work as far as you mean, you ought to help Fawcett. Why, you ungrateful little vixen. Now, you listen to me. Open this door and come on out here so I can talk to you. The only door that's going to be open is the front door when you go out. Oh, is that so? Oh, is that so? Yes, that certainly is so. That certainly is so. Buckskin. Buckskin. <laughs> hey, that's you. Look, I'm asking you nicely for the last time. Are you coming out? No, you are getting out. All right, then. I'm coming in and drag you out. And the door's locked. That door's locked. Thanks, Buckskin. I didn't know it. You didn't? Why, you... You was one what told me. Dinah, if you don't open this door, someone's going to have to buy you a new one. I'm not talking, huh? All right, Buckskin, that extra piece of yours is good for something. Come on, put me bust this door down. You stay away. This is going to be fun. One, two, and two. A big, strong one. Well, do you think you're strong enough to swallow lead? We're going to sit on you. Ah, uh, like a camper, all on the surface. All on the surface. Just the same, I want to tell you one thing, Dinah. I'm not leaving Rainfield quite yet. And for your information, I don't care what you do or when you do it. Good enough. That's a bargain. Come on, compadres. we got a bit of riding to do right straight now. <laughs> Okay, boys. Here's Fawcett's store. Rain up. Uh, Rose oh, to the bill. Oh, Hold on. Well, Beaver, since we're going to need our horses, you'd better stay out here and watch them. What are you doing, Red Raider? Morning, gentlemen. Something I can show you. We just got in a new line of guaranteed paid proof. I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Fawcett, but we came in to sell you something, not to buy. He said we come in here to sell something. Well, if you two are salesmen... They're the funniest looking drummers I've ever seen. Well, I don't know. We're dressed for the kind of business we're trying to drum up. My partner's name's Blodgett, Mr. Fawcett. I generally answer to the handle of Red Rider. Oh, Red Rider, eh? I've heard of you. Well, thanks. And I've heard of you, too, Mr. Fawcett. Yeah, I don't believe all you hear. I don't. Sorry, but what I heard about you, I've got to believe. You've got to believe. I don't think I would, Red you know, you talk as if you think I came here to make trouble for you. I know better than that. Oh? Yeah. Here it is, quick. All cards on the table. Oliver Biglow sent for me. When I got here, he was dead. His daughter, in my humble opinion, is a double-dyed, self-willed little fool. Mm-hmm. I think so. Particularly after talking to the sheriff. Biglow offered me $500 to come down here, and it looks as if I'm not going to get it. So, uh... Well, I thought maybe I could make a deal with you. Deal? Well, now, keep talking. The sheriff says there's no question that you bought and paid for 600 head of two bar S cattle. And since you're a merchant and not a stockman, I'm offering you my services and rounded up and branding those cattle you bought. I wish I could believe you, Ryder. Well, why shouldn't you believe me? For $200, Blodgett and I will round up 600 head of cattle for you, rebrand them with any brand you choose. That way, at least, I don't go back a total loser. Well, I don't know. Well, what have you got to lose? If you haven't any cow hands of your own, Brandon's tough work. Besides, you can ride right along with us and make sure you're getting what you're paying for. That's right, at that. Yeah, he says it's right at that, Red. But he hasn't said whether it's a deal. I'm saying it now. You can start round up in Brandon tomorrow morning. And I'll be right on hand to watch it. <laughs> Dinah, won't you give me a chance to explain? Don't you think you've explained enough? You're going to do exactly what Father asked you to come down for. Help Mr. Fawcett take possession of 3,000 acres and 600 head of cattle he never paid for. But I've got a reason for doing it. If you'd only stop and figure the time of the year this is, you'd get some if idea. If you'd only stop but... trying to alibi yourself, we'd all be a lot happier. Let me tell you this, Mr. I'm going to pay you back someday and show the world what a double-dealing, low-down, mealy mouthed buzzer you really are. You can take your bedroll down to the bunkhouse. Good night. Hey.
Down in the valley, the mockingbird wings, telling his story, hear what he sings. Roses of sunshine, violets love you. Back to Red Rider and the surprising and exciting finish of the Brand Buster. It is now the following day, and Red, Buckskin, and Little Beaver are cutting out the 600 head of cattle Cyrus Fawcett claims to have bought, and they're preparing to brand them. Not too far away, Dinah Biglow, her eyes two icy blue pools, her hands clasped tentatively around the stock and trigger of her windshield. All right, Buckskin, nail that heifer. Haul him over here to the fire. We're ready to brand. Are you sure this brand design is going to be all right for you, Mr. Fawcett? If you say so, and it's easy to put on. Oh, it's not too much trouble. Triangle cross, I think it's kind of unusual. You're not going to find it twice in a thousand miles a year. Teddy, oh, the hangover brand. Put your critter in a hanker and not to be branded again. Now, who's going to hold and who's going to brand? I'd better do the holding, Buckskin. You look plumb wore out. Well, the only reason I look wore out, I am wore out. <laughs> You ever see a Brandon before, Mr. Fawcett? No, this is my first. Uh-huh. I'm looking forward to it. Don't like to see those dumb animals pass. Hurt. Why, you won't hear any more out of these cattle than a contented moo. Makes all the difference when the Brandon's done by expert. Red, will you stop that there gabber and toss that there cow, Peter? This your iron's weighed hard. Okay, Buckskin. Don't forget the instructions he gave you. Yes, sir. What's over like it? Okay, then. Here we go. Come on, do it. Uh, all right, Buckskin. Wrap that iron on. We've got 599 more head of cattle who've got to wear this triangle cross brand. Fred, I have no intention of riding out to the pens while you gloat over delivering 600 head of Russell cattle to that high binder. Foster. Look, young lady, you're coming out to witness the transfer of those cattle, whether you want to or not. Now make up your mind to it. Yeah, make up your mind to it. Say, who do you think you are talking to me that way? Miss Dinah Biglow, and she's going out to make sure that Fawcett collects only the cattle wearing his brand. Quick like Fawcett might steal more cattle. Oh, of course, with your help. You branded the cattle for him, and there's no reason to believe he won't help yourself to some more. Oh, I'm through. Buckskin, grab her legs. I'm taking her shoulders. We're carrying her out. Here goes. <laughs> there, Dinah. Well, all right, Mr. Fawcett, go ahead. Pick out the cattle wearing your triangle cross brand and drive them out of here. What are you talking about? None of these cattle have the triangle cross brand. Brand and I are the bulldogs. They're the same cattle you saw at the bear in East Kitty. And you left two of your men here overnight to guard them. We're not magicians, you know. But there must be some mistake. Can't possibly be. And what's more, you gave Miss Biglow here a receipt for the cattle after the branding. So if your cattle aren't here, I guess you'd better be on your way. Right here, you prick me. By glory, you're not going to get away with it. No, I'm not. I'll tell you not. Right. You and the boys drive this 600 head out of here. You mean you're going to rustle Miss Biglow's cattle? I mean, you're a thief. And I'm getting what's right in mind. Ah, that was a mistake, Fawcett, calling me a thief. And you are going to get what's rightly yours. Come on, Red. to steal cattle, will you? Well, see what you can steal after you wake up from this. All right, Sheriff. You can come out of the bushes now. You heard Fawcett say he was going to take 600 head of cattle that weren't wearing his brand. And I know that you know exactly what to do with cattle. Right? I was so sure that an Easterner wouldn't recognize a cold brand. Even I don't know what a cold brand is exactly. Well, Dan, it's nothing more than a brand which only burns the hair off, doesn't touch the hide. 
And at this time of the year, with the hair falling out, I was certain that by this morning, the burned hair would have fallen out, leaving nothing but your double bar last brand to show through. Well, double bars is what Foss is going to see from now on. <laughs> Red, I, I certainly owe you an apology. Oh, nonsense, Dinah. All you owe me is a gentle goodbye, because we're heading for home. Wait a minute, Dinah. Get up, that's Let's me. go. On your way, Thunder. Head for the homeland trail. Come on. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Tune in to nostalgia. Tune in to now. Golden Radio Hour.